It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... No! Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, May 16th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. It is a very nice day, or at least it was a nice morning. I hear it's going to be uh, raining later on, and that's why it's good that we're inside here in New York City, in our New York City studio. Uh, the weekend was great. A lot happening in our world, a lot happening in our lives, a lot happening in the world of MMA. Bellator had a big event in London. UFC had a big event at the exotic and palatial and historic and iconic Apex I have a bone to pick with everyone who keeps calling these events UFC Vegas 58, 57, 56. First of all, there's been way more than 58, 57, 56 events in Las Vegas for the UFC. Why don't we just call it UFC Apex 57, 58? It doesn't make any sense. Why are we calling this UFC Vegas 58? It's actually factually incorrect. There have been more than 58 events in Las Vegas for the UFC over the past 30 years. It drives me nuts. I hate the fact that we keep numbering these events UFC on ESPN 12, UFC, like the pay-per-view should be numbered. Everything else should be UFC colon Bohovic versus Rakic. That's it. What's wrong with that? Why does everything have to be a nice little neat little hashtag? I don't get it. One of these things that always kind of bothers me. UFC on Fuel TV 14 and then UFC on whatever. Anyway, we got a lot to discuss on today's program. We've got a fantastic show. An inc- dare I, I mean, if I could just, you know, Barry, Barry H. Um, everyone, oh, fantastic. I mean, what a lineup today. I'm very excited about today. Four fantastic guests, four very newsworthy guests, four of the biggest names in the sport, uh, four people that have been in the news as of late for different reasons. I can't wait to get into today's show. Can't wait to talk to today's guests. I feel like this is going to be a fun ride, my friends, and I'm not really quite sure where it's going to go, where it's going to take us, but I feel like... In about three or so hours from now, we're going to be like, whoo, that was fun. Remember this moment right here. Whoo, that was fun. Uh, shout out to all the uh, fans of the teams that won their game sevens this past week. And I think seven total in the NBA and NHL. So that was fun. And uh, I'm kind of happy none of my teams were involved because it's a lot of heartache, especially if your team loses. And it's fun to sometimes just sit back and watch it all unfold. As always, we are brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. I like saying it with a bit of a French accent for some reason. They are the official sports betting partner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code the MMA Hour. That's code the MMA Hour for a special offer when you sign up. One more time, that's the MMA Hour. Use that code so that they know we sent you only at DraftKings Sportsbook. More on that world in a moment. Let me run down today's lineup and then we'll get into things. Uh, back into the show, El Kukui will join us. It's been a while since Tony Ferguson has been on this particular show, the MMA Hour. Uh, been a while since I've had him live on any kind of program. In fact, the last time I interviewed Tony Ferguson live was April 1st, 2020. Uh, we were on Sports Center, and it was in the midst of the whole early days of the pandemic. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? UFC 249, is it going to happen? Are they going to go to Brooklyn? Are they going to you know, some uh, remote island in God knows where they're going to uh, Tachi Pal. Who the hell knows? It was a crazy time. And we did the interview live on SportsCenter. I was at home. He was, I think, at his gym. It was a crazy time. I'm looking forward to talking to Tony Ferguson, who has popped up a lot over the last few days, who has uh, been active on Twitter. It's not one of those cases where, you know, he loses a big fight and he disappears. Uh, But people love him. People are intrigued by him. And everyone's wondering where he goes from here after that devastating knockout loss to Michael Chandler a little over a week ago in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, uh, it seems as though he's not taking it too hard. It seems as though it's actually brought him some clarity as to where he wants to go from here, how he wants to make some changes in his career. And so I can't wait to, as they say in the business, chop it up with El Kukui. That will be at around 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Stay tuned for that. It's always very interesting. It's always very fun. It's always very entertaining when Tony Ferguson stops by. This, I suspect, will be no different. Three o'clock, I've probably been bothering this guest 
for the past five or so months, um, you know, to come on the show, to talk, to do this, to do that. And finally, he said yes. His name, Dustin Poirier, El Diamante. I say sometimes Diamante, but I think it's Diamante. I hope I'm getting that right. Maybe I'll ask Frank. Frank, is it Diamante or is it Diamante? Diamante. I nailed it. Yes. Give me the... Uh, meow, meow, meow. Felt like it was... There, I felt like it was appropriate. <laughs> For some reason, I love that sound so much. Uh, Diamante is going to stop by. Been in the news as of late. Is he going to fight Nathan Diaz? Is he not going to fight Nathan Diaz? What's going on with those comments from Michael Chandler? Remember last week on the program, Michael Chandler came out with some spicy comments uh, regarding him being a draw, not wanting to fight him, kind of giving him the old Heisman, if you will. So that's coming up at 3 o'clock. He wants to fight Colby Covington, 170. Connor, what's going on? It's uh, It's been a lot of tweets, but not a lot of interviews. Dustin Poirier, kind enough to join us at 3 o'clock. At 2.30, the man who delivered the best moment of the weekend by far. It wasn't even a question, if you ask me. We had to have him on the show today. An amazing story. One of my favorite characters in the history of the sport. One of my favorite characters uh, that I've ever had a chance to interview, chronicle, watch, Paul Semtex Daily improved to 44-18-2. He knocked out Wendell Giacomo in an unbelievable sequence. He's fighting in London. It's presumably his last fight. He has said it's his last fight, last MMA fight, and it ain't looking good. It ain't looking good early on. He's getting wrestled. You're kind of watching and you're like, golly, Beltor, could you not have booked him against someone a little more fun or at least a guy who's going to stand and trade with him? Give us what we want here. And then with seconds remaining in the second round, what does Paul Daly do? He goes back to vintage Paul Daly. And honestly, there was only one way for this career to end. If in fact it truly has ended MMA wise, right? Because he kind of left the door open when we first talked to him about it a couple months ago. But if in fact it truly has ended, for Paul Daly to end his career like that with the freaking liver shot and then the freaking big blast with just seconds left in the second round, it was, I mean, it was poetic. It was absolutely poetic. It was the only way for him to end his career. Great moment. His mom is in the, the cage. Everyone's around him celebrating. He's in London of all places. This is a guy who, when he was banished, and I still maintain unfairly. Yeah, of course he did something bad. Yeah, of course he hit Josh Koscheck after the bell. We've seen a lot of people do a lot of crappy things um, over time. And I'm not trying to say like one is worse than the other one, but it was not fair. The guy shouldn't have lost his UFC career, his UFC contract, in my opinion. And that could have killed him. That could have made him crumble. That could have ended his career. That could have ended his confidence. That could have crushed him. And that was 12 years ago. And look at him. Had a very successful run in Bellator, had a very su successful run um, in Strike Force, uh, produced maybe the greatest first round that we've ever seen against Nick Diaz back in the day. Uh, that somewhat surreal event in San Diego, Dana White and Zufa just bought Strike Force. All of a sudden, Dana White's sitting there cage side with a Strike Force t-shirt. Like the whole thing was crazy, but it was an incredible fight. And, and uh, Friday was incredible as well. Now, we'll talk to Paul Daly about the moment, about the finish, uh, about the win, about the career and about the future as well. Is he in fact done? Is this, how do you leave like this? How do you say goodbye like this? 39, I get it. Been there, done that. I get it. But man, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is how everyone should leave, but we all know fighters. You get a moment like that and you say, eh, I'll do one more. So we'll see. And then the big story, the other big story on that card was of course the main event, Michael Venom Page, London zone up against uh, Logan Storley, in the main event, interim Bellator welterweight title fight. Obviously, the champ, Yaroslav Amosov, is in Ukraine fighting a much important and bigger battle. And it looked like a bad matchup on paper, and the fight kind of went how most suspected it would go. However, Storley wins. I actually thought MVP won, and it was a very controversial take, I guess, on my part, because I got killed for it. I mean, the the slurs, the 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 heat the negative comments, the insults that I had to absorb as a result of this scorecard were kind of mind-blowing, if I'm being honest. Anyway, we're going to talk to Michael Venipage about this and how he felt about the fight, about the scoring, about where he goes from here, all that stuff and more in a moment as well. But I did want to start off, of course, in the UFC. 
Saturday night, they had an important uh, event headlined by Jan Bachovic versus Alexander Rakic. A fight between a guy who represents Austria and a guy who represents Poland fighting at the apex, which is, again, it's just like... And then you go watch the Showtime card and they're fighting in front of, I don't know, I think it was like 8,000 people, but, you know, outdoors, they're in Carson. And then you're watching, like, why why are these two European fighters fighting at the apex in front of no one? I mean, it's completely empty in there. Like, I don't get it. What is going on over there? Um, anyway, unfortunate ending for Alexander Rakic. He injures his knee in the third round and Jan Bochovic wins. And now this throws a massive wrench in the plans, I would think, of the UFC, because what if Glover wins? Are you going to run it back right away? Perhaps you might run it back. Uh, were they hoping that Rackage, the new blood, would come in and uh, and fight for the belt? Perhaps as well. So I want to talk about that. But the biggest story, in my opinion, of the whole weekend, and, and really, if you ask me, bigger than daily and and his finish and ending his career in that fashion, bigger than MVP, in my opinion, losing. Like I don't say it's a robbery, very close fight. I guess it depends on how you score fights. But bigger than that, bigger than Bohovic and, and Rakic and, uh, you know, the Rakic knee injury, bigger than Michael Johnson coming back and looking very good and scoring that big knockout. The biggest story of the weekend, and I actually, I think some of you... We'll probably be sitting wherever you may be watching, listening on a walk, on a run, on a drive and be like, you know what? You need to own up to this. You know what? I'm not going to own up to this. I'm not. I'll be the first to say I'm not owning up to this. In fact, I, I want to place blame, if I can, on, you know, our partners in crime here, GC, New York Rick. I'm even going to place some blame on Frank's shoulders, if I'm being honest. Can we say hello to the guys here? Because I'm actually a little bit upset. Guys... How could you let me, as my colleagues, as my coworkers, but more importantly, I would think as my friends, how could you let me pick against Virna Janjiroba? Like at some point in this whole thing, you had to have said to me, hey man, like immortalized, walked out to Island Boy, she gave you the handmaid. Like why, like maybe we should think this one through. Friends, you know, need to tell friends when to say when. And I feel like this one's on you guys. You guys needed to jump in there and have my back, and no one had my back. Let me go first, because I'll get out of the way here. This is going to be very quick and easy. Wasn't consulted. Bad move on your part. Washing my hands of this. Come on. Even with the tweet, I could have reneged. Yo, man, are you really yeah, going to go against Too late Fiona? in the process. Yeah, next, I mean, time, this, next time, come this way. This is something completely unprovoked. I mean, no, no, we one, no one was asking for it. You just tweeted it out. <laughs> I was taken aback when you tweeted it out. I can't believe it. I actually can't yeah, I believe it. I can't, I can't believe be I did I can't it. believe the way you walked it back, too. You texted me before the fight. You, you had major concerns going. I had major concerns. Well, I'm, first of all, everyone questioned my loyalty. Now, the thing is, there was a part of me that wanted to say to everyone, maybe she needed this. Like, we were backing her in October. Now we go against her. Maybe she needed the, the you know, the, 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 the anti-mojo. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it worked. So maybe so you did her a favor. It was the motivational factor. I, I wanted people to look at it that way, but they aren't looking at it that way. Yeah, let me honest. just say this. And I tweeted this with no acknowledgement, but I think Yeah, well, I saw true. it. I saw it. That's why I wanted uh, you involved. You've, you've been picking with your heart all along. You've been, you've been giving out the picks with your heart. Yeah. You know, let's just call it what it is. The, 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 the H Dows. Yeah. The, the yeah. Helwani dogs of the week. And in the last two weeks, you went against your heart. You you picked with your head, and it has You're proven right. unsuccessful. It's time. It's time to get back to that. You, Verna, Verna is on the wall. Yeah. You blew it. I you blew it, and and you're the one who has to take accountability for this. Now the pressure's really on. Now we've officially started to lose. Fo follow your heart, Helwani. That's that's the advice. Follow I know. Your heart. I was. It's like one of those things. You tweet it, and then you 100. percent right away regret it. Like I regretted it. The Can I tell That's you what? Sign. I was on a very long drive. I was driving from uh, my home to Cape May, New Jersey. And I'll explain in the future why I was in Cape May. I wasn't doing the driving. And I would say that I think I was a victim of boredom. And I was sitting wow. there and I was wow. like, you know what? I haven't wow. thrown out the H. Now, I, I have to admit, I feel a lot of pressure. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to give you one shouldn't. out every week. You shouldn't. Despite what you have said, and I can't believe I went against her. I should I mean, have done. People, people want winners. See, this is where this is what happens when we force it and we and we get a loser out of it. I should have went with my original pick. That was Andre Petrosky. That was the one I wanted oh, to man. pick, but I had it oh, in the back pocket. So beautiful, you know. Well, you picked him. 
No, I didn't. I didn't lay my money down, but I uh, I definitely was not betting Maximov. That was a big. I mean, he was the biggest favorite on the card, right? Yeah. Crazy and the curtain jerker. So I feel bad about it. I want to take this time to publicly acknowledge their transgression for not having my back. And I want to say sorry on behalf of the team to Virna. She is remaining on the wall. I had a lot of people, by the way, saying I should give back the hat. I mean, let's not yeah, get I this saw, twisted. I saw that too. You, I mean, you we're... CC'd me on it, so I got like all oh, the notifications. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, you get notifications? Uh, no, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed <laughs> it. Uh, like, uh, yeah, everyone, everyone. Was Wait, you get notifications every time someone tweets you? Nah, not not like to my phone, like oh, on the actual Twitter. Got it, got it. Got it. Uh, that would be crazy. I mean. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were dogging you hard. Um, rightfully so, you know. I mean, she's on the wall. She's on the wall. But let's be clear here. Like, I've bestowed the honor upon her. Like, why would I give this back? Why would I take I that down? I don't think you have to give it back. Yeah. I don't think you have to what give it back. What do you mean? What? She's giving you her hat. She's saying thank you for honoring me. Thank you for immortalizing me. This I is know. thank you gift. Yeah, she's what? saying thank you for being along for the ride. I thought you had my back. Thanks for the support. And you're spitting in her face by picking Angela, uh, Look, Angela Hill. The last time I picked her, she lost. So maybe yeah. there's something to this. She's really good, by the way. You know, I'm not buying this I mean, whole yeah, Bill Simmons good. anti-jinx stuff. It's not real. It doesn't work. You messed up. Anik does it all the time. He always picks against you the team. You messed up. And listen, listen, you you put the pick where you thought the pick was supposed to go, and it was wrong. And it was wrong. And you should, and you know what? Everybody, you're just lucky she hasn't called know, you out on I it. I know. I'm hoping Wait that for that moment. Not, Wait till that one happens. Thank God her team, you know, Tiago, not, not the... Um, they're not the vindictive type, you know, so I haven't gotten a text. I, I, I'm kind of hoping it flies into the radar. Maybe she just saw push it. She saw it for sure. You think she saw no, it? No doubt. I haven't heard anything. No text, push, no tweet. Push it under the rug. I, silence speaks volumes. Put, ah. put, push it under the rug. Pretend it never happened. Pick her next time. But don't make this mistake again. By the way, don't she's staring mistake. at me right here on the wall. Yeah, I know. Oh, I yeah. feel like in disappointment. Yeah, it's like a disappointment. I love that she's facing she's towards She's literally me. looking at me yeah. right now like how her eyes are kind of like this. She's like, Really? Really I mean, you might as well have too. put Angela Hill up on the yeah. wall. Angela Hill, man, yeah, that'd be that'd be a rough one. Just, I mean, you you need to you need to hold the L on this and bounce back stronger. Seven and two now. Seven and two. But the losing streak has started. Yeah. So <laughs> are we not going with Randy Brown? That was an official one, right? No. Okay. No, you you can't give it to me as the scorecards are coming out. <laughs> After you see the Randy Brown officially defeats uh, Chaos Williams by a split decision. Well, Taking we're... a look at these lines uh, this week? Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't looked at anything yet. Have you? Uh, I anything? mean, yeah, I've looked at it, but well, I'm not, I'm we... not going to sway you in any way. No, no, please. I mean, you've done enough damage. Uh, while we're here talking about lines and whatnot, we might as well just uh, recap the weekend. Yeah, yeah before we get the MVP. Well, I mean, I feel like the wound is open, so we might as well just rip yeah, it open. Real yeah. quick. I, I mean, got... I don't have any wounds this weekend. No, uh, you did yeah, well? I mean, I did well enough, you know. Let's, uh, let's go through it here. Let's uh, right. start with the singles. Uh, yeah, I said I was going light. It ended up with more than I expected. It ended up with like eight. Go four and four, but the way we played the units out, we, we come away with a little profit there. Parlay, uh, we go two and two. Uh, incredibly un unfortunate. Uh, Air Fryer comes one leg short. Blockowicz, Rockage over three and a half. Uh, so that hurt. What? That hurt bad. Oh, my God. What did it, yeah. How many seconds away were you? Uh, well, it needed to get one more round, uh, but still like, it didn't oh, right. look like a finish was that's right, that's right. coming. Uh, you know, obviously his knee got blown out. Horrible. I mean, yeah, really, just really unfortunate to see that happen like that. Plus, no nine oh five was what it would have been had it had it made Oof. it all the way. But you know, I catch a parlay with the over one and a half, so at least uh, at least it made it that far. Uh, so final recap: small profit on the singles, decent profit on the parlays. Uh, Says two and four, but I went two and two. That's that's my mistake. Finish up uh, a little bit over a unit on the week, up twenty one in twenty twenty two now, and we're now at our highest ever. Wow, uh, thirty three point oh nine. So slowly chipping away. Uh, kind of been a a little bit of a roller coaster for the last uh, like month and a half, but uh, yeah. So good chipping away. Thirty three point oh nine. Good enough. Winning um, week is always a good week. Feel bad for Rakic. I spoke to him very briefly last night. Uh, he's going to get his his knee checked out. Not yeah. sure how long he's going to be out for. Not sure if he's going to need surgery. Uh, but this really throws a, a wrench in the light heavyweight plans because I thought Rakic wins and he's going to fight the winner of Yuri Prochaska versus Glover Teixeira, which works out perfectly because they're fighting on June uh, 11th in Singapore, June 11th here, June 12th over there. Now what do you do? Like if Glover wins again, you want to see that again? 
I don't know. I mean, Jan got dominated by him, and then did he really even win that fight? Like, it was 1-1 going into the third, and it was like a freak accident. Like, I know that it's going to be a win on Jan's record, but it's just like, did did he really earn a title shot off of that? Uh, Eric seems to disagree. Yeah, I mean, is there somebody you want to see more? Kind of. Who? Well, there's a big fight July 30th, Magomed Ankalaev, Anthony Smith. If Anthony Smith goes in there and knocks out Ankalaev... Or vice versa. Well, let's just let's go one at a time. Anthony okay. Smith knocks out on Kalaev. And let's say Glover wins, right? Because this is if it's Yeri who beats Glover, then Yeri versus Jan is a is a fun, fresh matchup. I think they go with that. But if Yeri loses, Glover wins, Glover versus Anthony, there's a freaking good story to tell there. Remember May uh 2020, middle of that week. Remember they're in Jacksonville. This is the one where Glover's beating him up, the whole thing with Anthony's corner. Remember that fight? So, so your argument was I don't want to see Glover and Jan again because he was beat up too bad. So instead, you want to see Anthony Smith, who had his teeth knocked out of his face, there's a, there's fight a, there's for there's it a again. There's a big gap there. There's a big gap. Yeah, nah, that, that doesn't do it for me. Well, there's a big gap, and also Anthony Smith would have like fought his way back to get oh, a yeah. title shot, whereas it's Jan, like three, this, four wins or this something. is like... This is this is outrageous. Jan By the way, I don't have a take champion. right now. I'm kind of I'm kind of talking yeah. it out. I'm talking it out. I don't have a take. Like You tell me right now, yeah, I love Jan. I'm, I'm not, thrilled for the guy. This 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 title fight is getting resolved in early June. I'm not waiting until early Ju- uh, late July. Why not? W- w- for what? What do you have to rebook? Yeah, they're not going to rebook. I mean, Glover, Glover versus, fought in October. Glover versus if Glover wins, Glover versus uh, Jan is right there. That's fine. So you're just Perfect. saying I you're disagree. just saying keep it moving. This division doesn't need any more holding up. This is this is fine. I mean, it's only a month and change. It's not like four for months. For what? Away. Waiting for the possibility. Who's that- the biggest draw of those guys? Anthony Jan. Smith. Wait, no? Seriously? Come on, man. I feel like people love Anthony Smith. Jan is... Anthony uh, Smith's on a podcast with Michael Bisping. People love that guy. <laughs> Jan is the biggest draw. It's... it's come on. Draw or not, still, like, winning like that holds me back from just, like, automatically throwing him back in the title conversation. I'd even make an argument for Manga Man Uncle Live. Okay, yeah, okay. So UFC, that's... say he knocks out Anthony Smith. That's right. nine straight UFC wins, like... It was a bit of a clunker in his last fight, but he gets the win. If he beats up Anthony Smith... I can see there being momentum for Uncle Live. It's fine. It's a good fight. It can wait until after Glover and and Jan Part Two. That fight makes all the sense in the world. There's no. Re- they both want it too. Why? Why not? So you're saying because of the way that he won. That's why. You know, I, I actually nah, don't. I actually nonsense. don't. I actually don't agree with the way that he won. Like a win is a win is a win. I just don't know if they're going to want to run it back after one win is the thing. And then it maybe happens. you could say one win and it kind of had a questionable ending. It was very indecisive. It and happens immediately. It happens after one. No problem with it. Makes a lot of sense. Both of them want it. This is this is like the easiest. So if Yeri wins, the you, easiest title fight to book out of everything. <laughs> this, is, this feels again <laughs> like the, the no path to victory for Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Combat. Uh, who, who'd you pick in that fight? No, no. I mean, but oh, okay. you were very. Well, who'd you pick? Yeah, no. I mean, listen. All right, just uh, making sure. Wait, there just was another sure. one. There was another one too. What was the other one? Will Smith would get an impossible. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Don't worry. One it, that that one will happen. <laughs> but I wait. know. I know it will happen. Probably. By the way, they may have already we'll recorded it. One week. They may have already recorded it and just not released it. Yeah, we finally get it and it's like recorded. Yeah, on imagine one, within one week, <laughs> March thirtieth. You just have to eat a plate full of crow. From if Ray. if Ankala, sorry, if Yuri wins, Yuri versus Jan is fresh. So would you guys agree, or GC? Would you not even go in that direction? Would you go? Yuri wins. Let's wait to oh, see what man, happens. Yeah. With, wow, Yuri, you're Yuri, Yan, Yuri Yan makes it tougher for me because it is a fresh matchup. Makes it tougher? Like, yeah, the, the decision. I really? I guess not tougher. I don't know. Meaning you're, you're more open to it? You're more I'm open, more open to Yuri Yan, yes. Got it. Just because the way that Yan got beat by Glover. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony Smith got beat worse. But don't you think there's a great story there with Anthony way Smith? Way worse. No, but a great no, story. I How don't. can you uh, was it way worse? Like Yan, Whoa, dude, Yan was, got dominated. <laughs> I, I, this, I, I know we just started watching MMA, but uh, like, you gotta go back and wow. see that one, man. No, he I mean, Yan like, got dominated, bro. I bet on Yan and within 30 seconds, yeah, I was like, see, this dude I, is I, I it was one sided. He hasn't watched, he hasn't watched the No, it, it was one sided. It was one sided. I think the damage inflicted was more in the Anthony I mean his teeth came out. Yeah, was I mean, like yeah, his... like I damage infliction, but I'm still saying like <laughs> Yan got dominated. Yeah. 
I mean, he did. Like, he I, never I, showed I'm up. Tro- he didn't show up. I he didn't show Rick up. Like thinks like speaking louder, more adamantly. Wow, his, I like this. It makes his takes more correct. This I understand gonna, that. I'm gonna drop this one. By the way, Connor was watching back then. I remember getting a text from him to come on game, game night. night. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, was, would you mind reacting? To yes, the, yes. Teeth there was out. nothing else going on May 16, 2020. <laughs> for the record, there was well, there was Tony Ferguson, Tony Ferguson, six PM Sports Center. There was that, but I think there was Bundesliga and uh, and UFC at that point. Trust I got me. a I got a Snapchat memory this weekend. Bundesliga being back, and I was drinking mimosas out of a. German you were loving boot. it. Did you oh, bet yeah, on I it? Loved it. Uh, yeah, that was all there was to bet on. That's yeah. how I got. That's how I got through the pandemic. Did you ever like go and bet on darts and things like that? Madden simulations. That was my lowest point. I mean, that is crazy. <laughs> how do you know that's not rigged? I mean, it probably was. Madden simulations. Yeah, it was real short lived stuff here. What, but was this when they had those ESPN Madden games? Yeah, and you could also bet on horse on ESPN. Oh, that was great. That yeah. was great. I remember that. Um, all right, so this really throws a wrench. Eh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm maybe I'm yeah, making maybe it out to be a bit doesn't. Jan Glover or Jan Year. Maybe Jan is just sitting and waiting. By the way, who do you guys have in that fight? As who? of now, Jan and uh, oh Glover Yuri. Glover Yuri. Sorry, I, I have Yuri right now. Who's your favorite? I just have Yuri. Yuri's the favorite. He's minus 190 right now. What's what's Glover? Plus 180. Interesting. Who do you Yuri's have in minus that? 220 now in DraftKings, actually. I, I also have Yuri. Yeah. No respect for Glover, huh? I mean, I mean there, there's just a win. <laughs> like, I there's, a, there's something to be said about that. It's it's very Charles Oliveira-esque. Yeah. Like, he I'm kind of leaning Glover, it. if I'm being honest. Oh, the hell warning dog of the week yeah. a month in advance. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> go get, get back on the train. <laughs> Lock it in. in. That and Tom Aspinall. We've already got uh, ready to go. Aspinall, I, I'm blown away by that one. Blo- you know yes. that Tom Aspinall's the underdog? You knew this, Rick? Oh boy. You don't like this pick? That's, that's I've a locked rough that one. I've locked that one in, by the way. Kurt, yeah, well, God bless. Is that a fi- it's official, right? I've locked that yeah, in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've locked it in too, but I've actually placed real money on it. What are we trying to say? I mean, you you would know if you'd place the bet or not. <laughs> no, I just want to, you're the official gatekeeper of whether okay. or not it's yeah, locked yeah, in. Yeah, it's locked in. It's locked in. I want a dog of the week. Uh, can I tell you one thing about the dog of the week that I'm not really enjoying? I'm just doing this for fun. I mean, honestly, I don't, I, I hate to burst you everyone's. Give, you give out the picks for free. You owe people nothing. Yeah, yeah. No one has to take these. I get, I'm getting a lot of like, nah, you I bu- no sympathy. I got Danny Rubenstein. <laughs> manager to the stars texting me Saturday night you busted my parlay I'm no, like his own get fault. the f out of here I busted night. your parlay nah. don't listen to me what are you talking about if you charge people for these picks it'd be different you give them out for free no one has to take these picks yeah and by the way none of you sent me uh, thanks texts when I was giving you Cheeto Vera and Katie Taylor that's right. right that's right exactly you win seven in a row no one says anything yeah Oh, you busted my parlay. The only one, the only one who has reason to be mad is Verna. And yeah, you're yes, right. Verna has has a legit right. She should come in studio and take the picture back and the hat. <laughs> what? The hat was a gift. Again, it was a it was a friendship gift. Yeah. Clearly, you're not friends. Never again. The way, the way you did that. Never yeah. again. Don't don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Um, Ryan Spann with a huge win Big. over Ewan. Uh, shocking! He was a pretty big underdog as he well. He should he should go ahead of Jan too. Let's just jump everybody <laughs> jump in front of Jan. <laughs> David Grant P- is a lot name of fun. Out of light heavyweight crop. Crazy KO. I don't know what they do with Caitlin Trukagian. I'm actually a little bit shocked that they. You know what? But before we move off this, let me yeah. just say one thing. Yeah, there is somebody who I do want to see fight for the belt. Oh, oh. at two hundred five. Uh. At two hundred five. <laughs> Paul Craig. No, Jamal Hill. Yeah, he's not bad. But that's he's a, the one. He's a little I far see. away. No. Yeah, I mean, he, look. Mm, one or one or two Ten. more. I think he's yeah. He's one or two there. more. Uncle Live has a better case but, than Jamal Hill in my opinion. No, it's not about the. I don't care. Like, do you want to see Uncle Live fight after that last one? Is that I like Uncle Live. I Listen, also have a if he if he go okay. Well, here's the thing. Jamal Jamal Hill is fighting in an important fight on August 6th yeah. against Tiago Santos, but that's further away than the Uncle Live. Oh no, I'm not saying next. You, I mean, my position's yeah. pretty clear. I think uh, you put Jan in there. So you're saying all the sense basically, if I'm going to read the tea leaves here, you're saying put Jan in there. And then probably do Smith, Uncle winner. Live winner fights Hill Correct. Santos. Yeah. Now, what do you do with Paul Craig? Or you, he's on a bit of well, a roll. Yeah, but he's fighting Uzdemir. Yeah, he's fighting July twenty third. So, so you could do one. You know, out of those three matchups, you do two of them square off. It, it, there's no reason to to wait to see how that plays out. None of none of those guys have made a definitive case. The the one with the best argument is Uncle Live. Um, but it's nobody's clamoring for that, yeah. especially after the performance. Who's Demir Santos? Uncle, I've already beat them both. Yeah. What about Dustin Jacoby? 
your boy. Whose boy? Eric. I, I do love Dustin <laughs> Jacoby, but what are you asking me? If he's in the title picture? <laughs> no, he's not, but uh, he's an exciting fighter. I, yeah. I'll damn sure rather watch him fight than Uncle Ive. The biggest, like, what if in this whole bunch is Dominic Reyes, who just disappeared. Just disappeared. Yeah, well, I, I mean, mean he got knocked out badly, yeah. but I mean, that we're approaching two years since that knockout. No, yeah. I mean, I think he he's not even in this conference. Like, he's got to reestablish still, himself. Way, how is he still ranked seventh and Gregor Gillespie gets taken out of the I rankings? Don't know. I None don't of know. this makes sense. We got the email uh, and it's like, hey, uh, what is it? Like, fighter removed? Fighter removed, yeah. And then nowhere to be found. I mean, I gotta. I, I like the message from Gregor. I like. I liked what he did there. You did like it? Oh yeah. What did you like about it? I like that he's call. He's saying names. It's not just like, oh, I'm out of the ranking. See you later. But I'll be back. He he's naming names. He's telling you exactly who who he wanted and exactly who didn't take a fight with him. I like that. But there's no there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. Like Joanna gets taken out because they're going. Oh, oh no, I'm not talking about the the permutations yeah. and like the the technicality of it. I'm talking about I liked Gregor's response to why it's happened uh, yeah. and what he expects to happen next. Yeah. Yeah. But Jamal Hill. That dude's, uh, Jamal a, that Hill. dude's a fun fighter. And uh, didn't something happen recently with Jamal Hill? Yeah, there was some kind of prank gone wrong, I believe. Oh right, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. But uh, that, that's a dude I'm keeping my eye on to see. Not for nothing. Uh, let's give some props to McMaynard. I mean, there's no real big star there. And maybe Yuri becomes that star. But two years ago, I would say 205. Once John left was maybe the most shallow men's division. Right? Yeah. In the UFC. Now it's kind of interesting. It's interesting because of parody. Like there's no star, but they're all like, I, you know what I mean? I, I could see them all beating each other. Um, I can only speak to like, you know, t uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? For like social media, bu like buzz and attention and things like that. Um, there's a word I'm looking for that that is not coming to mind right now. But I think you're underestimating Jan's drawing star power. power and okay. Like, yeah, I mean, you would know. Power. You would know. Why? Does he, does he generate a lot? Anecdotally, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. Anecdotally, people care about Jan. People really care about Jan. And I think, look... You win, you beat Israel Adesanya. That does something for you. Sure, sure, and sure. I think I think there is something there, um, and I don't I don't think there's any reason to hold him back from the title shot. I think he has that what what people are looking for. He's also incredibly likable. Great storyteller. I love the guy. Yeah, freaking love the guy. By the way, Sean Strickland in his place. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, he's great. He's like he, he's like draining threes left and right. Uh, sweet jersey, by the way. I didn't really comment on it. Oh yeah, Rangers last you. night. Big game Overtime seven. Time win. Uh, poor Mul Downey. Yeah, Penguin oh Sons. Patty. Tough. Yeah. Um, that is a sweet. That is old school, right? I mean, hey, that's Gretzky. But like, where, when did you get it? Oh man, years ago. Why did okay. you get it? Uh, it was like when I moved to the Northeast because you know I lost my beloved Thrashers back in 2011. Right. Rest in peace. Yeah. So I had to find a new team. So I figured, you know, I'm close enough to the Rangers. I might as well cheer for them. Oh, Rangers, Rangers are your team? Ah, lightly. I, I really only get into hockey during the playoffs. Okay. Um, but it's been fun. When when I was near MSG, I wasn't in it uh, yesterday. Are you going to uh, go to a uh, game, second round, Hurricanes? Sure. I feel like I'm you're sure. more of a Hurricane guy than, I mean, the South, nah, no? No. Nah. No. Nah. That's too expensive to get in uh, also, so it's a no-go. Uh, no, it's great when the Rangers are winning. Uh, I love the Battle of Alberta over there with yeah. the Oilers and the Flames. That's tremendous drama. I love that. Um, and I love the jersey. It's a great jersey. I mean, oh, I Gretzky that. had pretty much like a cup of coffee with the Rangers, ended his career with the Rangers. Always the greatest of all time, so. Who know. did he play for before the Rangers? Oilers, Kings. And then there's one. You don't know the one? Oilers, then Kings, traded to the Kings. Rangers. There's one before that. <laughs> St. Louis Blues. There it is. There it is. We have MVP waiting. All right, here we go. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. We'll talk to them in a minute uh, as well after this uh, chat because I want to get their thoughts on what happened uh, Friday in uh, London. Main event. Watched it. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed the card. I thought it was a great card. Some big moments. Fabian Edwards with the big knockout. And then I watched the main event. I'm like, you know what? I feel like uh, a layman will say Storley won this, but I actually scored it for MVP. 48-47, and then I get freaking blasted for it. Golly. I don't know if people hated me more than in that moment 
And so I wanted to talk to MVP about this. Feel for him, tough spot, big opportunity for him. He's kind enough to join us. Without further ado, let's talk to Michael Venom Page. There he is, MVP, my man. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, here we are, you know, two, three days after the fight. How do you feel about what happened on Friday? Uh, firstly, I apologize. I got, got a little bit of a sore throat. Okay. Um, you were yelling? You were but, yelling at the world? Is that why you lost your, th- yeah. your voice? <laughs> my, I got my family here, so we've all been like laughing and joking and all stuff. Right. So, um, Thank you for doing this under those well, conditions. No, no problem, no problem. So in the moment, it felt very frustrating, um, more because of how he won. Uh, I'm not debating whether he won or not. I haven't actually watched it back yet. A lot of people have told me since uh, watching the fight again, they feel that I won the fight. But um, for me, I was more, I like to put more blame on myself. I didn't do enough. I didn't work hard enough to, you know, prevent him from holding me down in those kind of, in those kind of positions. Um, But he was, holding me in survival mode versus like he's like I'm just trying to make it to the end of the fight versus I'm trying to beat you which is what I think I I genuinely do feel like the rules need to be looked at because there's a bit of a loophole it happened the week before in France with Bader Um, he definitely won but I feel like you should be encouraged to do a lot more when you're on the floor. Wrestling shouldn't be a tool to stall. It should be a tool to advance, to create submissions or to create damage and ground and pound. So, okay, did you think you won? Like, am I crazy? Because I actually thought you were, despite the fact that he was holding on to you, he was wrestling, he had you all tied up. Despite the fact that you were in those spots, I actually felt like you were making the most of those spots by trying to inflict damage First and foremost, that's the most important scoring criteria is to inflict damage. So even if, you know, someone changing the channels looks and is like, oh, this guy's getting held down. He's losing. Someone who doesn't know anything about MMA would be like, you're getting beat. He wasn't doing anything to you. All he was doing was holding on to you. So I'm just curious when the fight was over before they read the scorecards, was there any part of you that's like, hey, maybe I actually did win this? I'm going to be completely honest. Based on the current rule set that's in play, I assume that I would have lost. Oh, okay. Um, and going into the uh, after round four, I was literally having conversation, like just casual conversation in, in, in between rounds with my coach, like what, 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 what angle should I go? He's like, I think you're down. You need to go for the Hail Mary, try to knock him out, um, which is why I didn't play it as tactical. I reckon if I was a bit more tactical and I played it like round four and just stayed away, and just, but that's just not my style. I want to try and go in and win. I want to try and go in and win big. Um, so we were just like, let's just go for broke. Um, but it's only in retrospect afterwards, I was like, yeah, he actually didn't do anything. And I'm, te- I, I'm being dead serious when I say I have not one bruise, not one sore, not one injury, not, not, not nothing that is niggling from that fight. I generally feel like I haven't had a five round championship fight. It doesn't feel like that because he... Like I said, he didn't come to inflict damage. He came to survive. Now, tactically, great for him. He won the fight. But it is quite frustrating still to have lost that way. But in the moment, I I would have said I... um In that moment, I would have said I would have lost the fight based on the rules. Right. In the moment when the fight is going on and you're just being tied down, you're in London, you want to put on a show, this is a title fight for you, it's a big opportunity. What is going on in your head? Because you have a lot of time to think, I would imagine. It, it, it must have been one of the most frustrating moments of your career, that fight. Definitely very frustrating because um, I feel like he, he even even though he was wrestling and he's an exceptional wrestler, but he still couldn't do that much, which was, uh, um, yeah, very frustrating that I still wasn't able to get any further. He wasn't able to hold me down properly, um, but I still couldn't get up to where I wanted to get to. To, to you know, continue landing strikes. So it was fr- I even spoke to him during the fight. I was like, "Come on, man, you can do better than this." <laughs> I was even saying that during the fight. Um, but again, he came here to tactically win, uh, and I. And to be fair to him, he was very honest in his uh, his uh, speech afterwards in terms of how dangerous I am and how fast I am in that moment. But for me, there is a loophole that we need to look at, I and mean, then there's there's been multiple sports that they upgrade themselves. They upgrade the rule set to adjust to the times because I feel like wrestling is becoming a bit of a, 
uh, is in a sense being used in a, in, a, in a negative way. Back in the day, people came to fight, right. not to survive. Oh, it was it was frustrating to watch. And actually, you know, uh, I've known Scott Coker for a long time. And, you know, he's pretty mild mannered. And I think that's why people yeah. like him to a degree. I don't recall him ever being so sort of outspoken about something that goes against the grain. In this regard, he came out and was quite critical, at least for Coker, of the performance and even said himself that he thought you won. Yeah. What did you think when yeah. you saw those comments? Yeah, I was, uh, to be fair, I was, I, was, I was very shocked. He said it to me afterwards. But, you know, I, I, don't, I wasn't sure if he was just kind of like make me feel good in the moment. And then when I heard that he said it in the interview, I was, I was to be fair, even when I heard your comments and I heard quite a few other people's comments saying the same thing, I was, that's when I was had to kind of second guess myself. Like maybe, maybe I need to look at this again properly. And then everybody that's rewatched it uh, have all said to me, yeah, nah, you, you won that fight. Um, I don't blame anybody. I always like to put it on myself. I need to do better. I need to be better. But one thing that's exciting for me is um, I know when I, if I correct that one aspect of my fight, I become the most lethal MMA fighter in the world, 100%. Because if that's how you have to win, then yeah, there's nothing else you can do. What's the one aspect that you're referring to? Uh, if just somebody holding me, being, like, being able to just keep me in a specific position, but like I said, I think it is very different when you're holding on for survival to when you're holding on to actually progress. If he was, if he was pushing the action, I definitely reckon I would have got up a few times. Uh, if he was trying to go for submissions, I definitely reckon I would have got up a few times. But he literally was just holding me to just be, just to not be, you know, hit in any other way. And even then, like you say, I, I do believe I inflicted a lot more damage. I was punching him. Even when he had me up against a fence, I was punching him in the stomach. His, his side was sore. Yeah. His face is busted up. Like, he, I, <laughs> he's, if, if we had to stand together and somebody asked, uh, you know, we told someone that we had a fight, everyone would just assume naturally that I, I had won because I have not won Mark or anything. We need to get away. And, and uh, we hear this in the, the commentary a lot, which is frustrating. It's like, takedowns don't win fights. You know what I mean? They don't. I mean, according to the, the the criteria, once upon a time it might have been the case, but according to the criteria, it's damage. It's actually beating someone up. So I don't care if you're off your back. I don't care if you're like up against the cage and you're trying to escape. Yeah. If you're landing shots and the other dude is just literally holding on to you, one guy's inflicting damage and the other one isn't. A hundred percent. And I feel like people, we need to get better at um, judging uh, fights like that because... Uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's becoming a bit of a loophole and, and it, that is the way of old. I feel like if you have, you know, I, you should get points for a takedown and then it should continue. But the takedown shouldn't be, be on an end all of the round. If I've landed, let's say you, I don't know, you give a wrestler three points for a takedown, but I've hit you and kicked you uh, 10 times then that take, and you haven't done anything else bar that takedown, then you've lost that round. Um, and as yeah, as you said, I think you're, you know, you're thinking the same as a lot of people that it should be based on damage. And you can see definitely he was the one that was definitely more damaged. There's uh, there's two other problems. One, and, and this has been a problem forever. The ten point must system is a is a scoring system that was created for boxing. So even the da like if it's a firefight, right? If it's a slugfest, it's hard. It's very subjective. Damage is a very subjective. In this case, I actually felt it was pretty clear cut because one guy was inflicting damage, the other one wasn't. But if it's like Joanna and Zhang Wei Li back in the day, it's like, oh, how do you know who inflicted more damage? So that's one of the problems. Uh, the other, th and that's going to be years before they change that. But I have to be honest, and maybe this wouldn't have changed things on Friday for you. Open scoring. Can we get some open scoring? How do you feel about the open scoring, Michael? So I, I'm a fan, but for different reasons, not even uh, for myself. You know, I've always been an advocate of helping, uh, bringing in more supporters and more fans and more eyes. Now, uh, I, was, I was explaining this the other day. Ours is probably the only sport that you, if you was flicking through a channel and you came to an MMA fight halfway through, you wouldn't know what was going on until the end of the fight. And that's the, probably the only sport where that's the case. Um, I think it will also help educate people on what people are scoring because as you know, you know, the casual fans tend to not like the grappling and the, and the, you know, the jujitsu and the wrestling as much as they do the striking. But if they knew what was being scored for what they might, you know, it, it would educate them as yeah. well. So they'll quickly get more excited by the grappling when they know what's actually happening. So I think it's definitely something that 
we <laughs> we need to be looking at more. And then it, for the fighters, it, it will help make some really exciting fights because people will know exactly where they're at. And going into that last round or the couple, of, you know, the last few rounds, they're going to push themselves more than they would normally. When uh, the rounds would start, and I can't remember if it was the fourth or fifth, I was like, all right, you're back on your feet. Let's see what can happen here. You know, your style is one that could be tough for a wrestler because there's so much movement and your stance and whatnot. But then you would go for the flying knee. And I know you're trying to get the home run, but then that would put you in a precarious position. Do you regret doing that? Yeah, definitely. But again, it's more because I didn't know how the referees would score. And like I said, I always prefer to count myself down and then go big. Mm-hmm. because I, I, if I played it safe and then still lost, I would have felt stupid as well. Do you know what I mean? If I went out there and I, I had the, you know, a similar round to the fourth round and then they, were gave me, they gave him the first three rounds anyway, you know, I would have felt very, very stupid that I didn't just you know, go for it. So the only thing I maybe regret is maybe I should have played it, say, for a couple of minutes first right? Uh, or st- uh, for a couple of minutes before going for the kill shot because I got what he was doing. He was taking the, waiting for a big shot to happen and then just trying to go for the takedown. And like I said, he's an exceptional wrestler. So it was difficult to kind of prevent. Um, but then I could have been equally as boring, but that's just not that's just not me. I want to, I really want to go big. I want to go for a win. Um, and in that sense, I don't regret it. Um, so you were originally supposed to fight Amasov. You get Storley. When they made the switch, of course, Amasov has a very valid excuse. Um, he's back home in Ukraine fighting that that fight. What did you think when they gave you Storley? Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a equally tough fight. Um, and obviously because of the wrestling, I did expect a bit more from him on the ground. Uh, in terms of trying to progress and doing stuff and submissions and his ground and pound I've seen from other videos. But again, I feel like that's a compliment to me at how dangerous I am that they don't even want to open up and even give me a chance to get back to my feet. So, um, but yeah, I did I did feel like um, it was still going to be a tough fight just because of the wrestling aspect. But at the same time, he was more of a conventional wrestler, but he, d- he did show me some things that I didn't expect from him uh, technically. And I, I, that's like, all props to him because he's a he's exceptional. Like what? Just some of his the way he his head positioning, uh, some of his controls, his takedowns, his cross body takedowns. It was all tight, and then even the fact that he uh, you know waiting for the big shot to then go for the so they go for it. It was all very well um, uh, like game plan set. Like he and he didn't he didn't come out of, he didn't break out of that 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 box. Um, for anything and obviously he won the belt because of it so uh, like seriously like I, I think he is just a, a great talented uh, wrestler but I think if the rule set was slightly different he would have to work a bit more uh, to become a great mixed martial artist uh, did you guys exchange words afterwards? no not really um, I spoke to him uh, briefly in the morning but he looked I, like I literally shook you know his coach's hands and stuff shook his hands like, well done. And I spoke to him after I was like, you know, keep going, keep going, go all the way. And I wish you all wish you all the luck. Um, that was after the fight, but I saw him the next morning. But he just looked traumatized, man. Like really? I, again, he doesn't he didn't look like a person that had won a fight. Um, so I actually had to ask him, I was like, Are you okay? And he's kind of like, Yeah, like he was just not almost not there. What? Um Yeah. It Why was do you weird. think so? I, I I I don't know. I think I think he was just busted up. And that's what I mean. It's, I find it crazy that I have not one bruise on me. Um, and he's just marked up, bruised up. I, I know he's sore everywhere. So uh, I think he's just a bit beat up from the five rounds. Was there any shot that he landed that hurt you at all? No, he landed like a, a one elbow on the floor. But it, it, for some reason, he it, he kind of did it tentatively. He wasn't kind of, almost like he wasn't sure. It was quite a well-timed one, but he kind of did it worrying about getting his hand back into a good position and then didn't really throw anything else again. Mm. He threw a jab that grazed me uh, and that was it. Like, seriously, not I, I can't tell you anything else. What's interesting about your demeanor and I even saw what you posted online, it's like, I thought you would actually be more upset about this and maybe you're just not like, but like, it doesn't seem like you're that upset. Am I right or wrong? You know, yeah, you know what? It's, I can't, I can't always tell people I've, I've come from a sport or I got my ass kicked week in, week out for many, 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 many years. Losing is not a big deal to me. 
I think it's in this sport, it's a big, it's a big deal to everybody else. It's not a big deal to me. I know I go back, I do a couple more, ch- I make a couple more changes. I come back, I kill that person. I come back, I beat that person. And that's my attitude all the time. I, I know for a fact I can go out and beat you. Again, This in this particular fashion, in this particular fight, I feel like I can beat you sooner than uh, later. Like I don't think I need as much time to get back to, to it because I don't think he has anything else to off- offer. And the second I cancel that out, he has nothing. Um, so yeah, for losing to me is just part of growth. It's part of it. I don't, it, it's, it's not a big deal. It's, a, it's, a, it's frustrating in terms of how I lost. You know, I don't like losing. I'm a person that just, I want to win. Um, I give myself a certain amount of time to be annoyed at myself, be annoyed at everything, shout, scream, be upset, be sad. Once that is over, I'm back to action. And seriously, I had my moment in my room, like, yeah, annoyed, da 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 And then we went out and we celebrated the same way I would have celebrated if I won. Wow. I was, I was, out, I was DJing that night. Uh, everyone had a great time. Uh, like I said, I've been with my family and we will be laughing, joking. It is part of life. And the only time I lose is, 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 is if I quit and I'm not quitting. Wow. That is, that is very commendable. Uh, I give you a lot of respect for that. Now, because Coker thought you won and because it was so close and a lot of people thought you won, is there any chance they run this back right away? Uh, obviously, it's not my choice. If, if they was to offer that, I'm, I'm definitely not going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> I would... Uh, I would 100% take that fight. Uh, and like I said, I, I'm fresh enough to go. I just also know he'd probably say he's a bit more sore and he's got, you know, he's got to take time to him. And I don't know if I want, I, with the, the the camp that I did was hard. I don't know if I want to waste it waiting for him. So I'd prefer to just get back out and just fight again. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, because you say that you don't feel like you were in a 25-minute fight, uh, is there any chance we see you relatively soon again? hundred. Oh, I'm gonna push for it the same way I did when I lost the last time. I had five fights in one year. I'm gonna push for it. I'm gonna push to try and fight. If I'm not able to, uh, you know, maybe if, if they are pushing to get a rematch and it, it is a bit later, maybe I go and do a boxing fight. But I can't keep still. I need to do something in between uh, just to stay in action because I'm fresh. Uh, and then maybe take that fight. If not, I just take somebody else get a fight in and then try and go back for Storley straight after. Uh, if they do Storley versus Amasov to unify the belts, is there anyone else at 170 that interests you? I don't really care about anybody else. Whoever's in, like I said, whoever's there, if, uh, if they offer me somebody, um, you know, the, I know the Lima free is always going to be exciting. Uh, Jason Jackson is just, you know, I think he's a great athlete um, and he's doing so well. I'd, you know, I'd love to do a fight like that. Uh, and then what, Whoever else, I don't really care, but I don't really, can't really think of anybody else on top of my head. So uh, it's more just for the belt, I guess. And, and to be clear, if you wanted to do boxing, did you have to, do you have to get there okay or can you just go do it? Yeah, no, I, I have to get there okay. Okay. Um, but to be fair, they're happy, they're happy for me to do it. It's not something that, you know, we've already had this discussion before. Yeah. Uh, as long as it doesn't uh, conflict with another fight. And like I said, if they're, they're not going to offer me a fight soon, it shouldn't. So um, I, they, they should be okay for me to do it. I feel like they should put you, like it'd be cool to put you on one of these Showtime boxing cards, you know? They, it's like all in the family, makes all the sense in the world. They do events all over the place. Let's go. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm, I am so ready. I, I actually did a lot of boxing rounds as well uh, in this camp. Um, uh, seriously, I've, I've been feeling so sharp. My hands have been feeling uh, unbelievable. And I think that's what uh, Storley felt as well. <laughs> Um, by the way, you'll, you'll always be somewhat tied to Paul Daly. You guys had that, you know, that big fight. Um, he was on the card, had a great moment. Did you share any words with Paul? And, and what is the state of your relationship after all these years? I still can't stand him as a person. Um, not at all. Like, really? uh, yeah, not at all, not at all. It's hard to, when somebody's disrespected you so many times, to turn around and be like, yeah, but you know what? He's still done. No, nah, I, I, I don't. I don't care that he's retired I don't care to see him again in the sport um, I don't respect anything he's done in, in his past the only thing I can accept that he's a he's a big knockout artist um, and obviously we saw it in his last fight um, but outside of that I'm just not a fan fair enough uh, so did you see him at all in the hotel in the build up did you guys cry yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you exchange words when you see each other Nothing. I don't say I don't say no wow does he try to talk to you no, no, no. I wouldn't be rude. Like if, if 
you know, that's just not my way. I'm a martial artist uh, first. If he came up and said something and, you know, said hello, I'd say hello. That was it. But, um, yeah, no, he doesn't He doesn't say anything to me. I don't say anything to him. And I, 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 I'm, I'm happy that's the case. Is, is this one that you would love to do again? Um, I don't really care. Mm. I've kind of, I've kind of just it's gone past. Yeah, he's it's just gone to the point where um, just like just hearing his name just irritates me. Oh, <laughs> even, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 not even, not even like that. I just mean like I don't, I don't care to even relive anything. It's not, it's not something that I'm passionate to. Oh yeah, I need to do this and get it back. There's nothing about that uh, excites me in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'm yeah, just very well and truly over him as a person and a fighter. Um, it, it feels to me like Bellator almost has like two lives as a promotion. They've got their stuff that they do here, but then when they go to Europe, I know the the France crowd was great. Of course, we've seen them in Ireland. Those crowds are amazing. The London cards are great too. How do you feel about what they're doing in Europe in particular? Because I feel like they're somewhat on fire in Europe with these events. The the atmosphere, the buzz, the bill, like everything just feels different when they're in Europe as opposed to here in America. How do you feel about what they're doing in Europe? I think yeah, it's it's good. They I think they they obviously hit a really big slow patch because they were kind of taken over. They hit a, a, a massively slow patch when obviously COVID hit. Yeah. And they wasn't able to kind of continue that hype that they because they signed a load of fighters. Um and then I think it kind of had to let a lot of them go because, you know, how slow everything um, was for them. And they wasn't able to kind of get back up on, uh, get back up on their shows going as quickly as, you know, other shows. Um, but they're slowly building that back. And yeah, as you say, the, the crowds there are great. France looked amazing. Um, Ireland's always a big hit, man. They, they, such a, such a great crowd. And London, you know, if, if MVP's on the show, you know, it's going to be good. Uh, will it bother you? Like, w- will this be something that will eat you inside uh, if you never win the Bellator welterweight title now that you've you've been so close to it a couple of times? Will this annoy you uh, in, in like 50, you know, like you're 50 years old, you're 60 years old. Will it bother you or do you not really care? Nah, like I said, I've never been, a, I've never really been about uh, the belts. Um, but, you know, it's nice to say that I, you know, I achieved. Um, but at the same time, I... Uh, there's guys that have had belts that nobody knows about right. and people still know about me. People still know what I bring to a show. Uh, people are always excited, more, probably more excited uh, for us to see my fights and a lot of champions. So that's never been my goal. It'd be great to say, you know, I, I had it, but um, if, that's not my, if that's not part of my journey, then it's not. Would the interim title have meant the same to you? Yeah, I, you know, I, I said it um, uh, I would I would have classed myself as a champion. Okay. Uh, the only difference is if when Amosov if and when Amosov came came back, he would just be first in line to go at the champion, and that was it. You know, uh, but I would have seen myself as a champion, and Storley should see himself as a champion. And and just curious before I let you go, uh, and I'm not I'm not trying to like stir the pot or anything here, but I'm genuinely curious. Like when you see what's become of Michael Chandler, and he was in Bellator. Like I feel like you two guys were like the faces of Bellator for all those years, homegrown guys mm-hmm. to a degree. How do you how do you feel about what has become to Chandler and like the popularity that and obviously he has had to deliver, but is there any part of you that's like, man, he look at him getting all this love over there. Uh, I wonder what it would be like for me. No, you know he's I, I I'm just a fan of Chandler, man. I think he's uh he just yeah, he said he was a face of Bellator. He's gone over and he's done exceptionally well. Um that last that last fight is was insane. Um, I feel like he's become a bit uh, less, a lot, a lot less tactical, and he's just more f- just a fighter now. He's just fighting, which is good for the audience, but not always going to be good for his, his results. Mm. Um, but I, I just applaud it. I never, I never look at anybody else's uh, pot or anybody else's career and try to try to relate to what you know would or could be of mine. So I'm just happy for him because I think he's a great guy. Um, and, and a, an amazing athlete um, and I do, I'm just happy for him for, for me like I said my journey will go where my journey is supposed to go okay fair enough you're a mensch you know what a mensch means Michael do you understand you know no. it's, 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 it's the ultimate compliment that a Jewish person can give someone uh, you're, you're a class oh, act wow. you're a gentleman you're salt of the earth you're, you're a true mensch thank you so much M E N S H E if you want to M E N S H S okay sorry 
M E N S C H, Mensch. It's a Yiddish okay, term. Okay, okay. Yiddish. It means uh, you're, okay, you're okay. a salt of the earth individual. You're a true class act. You're a gent, my friend. Uh, the way you handle all this, it's, it's very uh, admirable and um, I have the utmost respect for you, truly. And I, and by Thank the way, you, so much. you won that fight. If you, if, if my opinion matters, oh, you won that fight. Forty eight, forty seven. I don't Thank care you. what the internet. I don't go look at the quote, <laughs> go look at the quote retweets on me writing forty. People are like, I, I mean, so, so offended, saying very mean things about me, Michael. But I stand by it. And then when I saw Coker say what he had to say, because again, he doesn't usually come out like that. I was like, all right, yeah. if the boss says uh, I'm right, then I'm going to take that to the bank. Uh, well done, to you, Michael. I hope you get another crack at Thank the belt so soon. Much. And appreciate the time Definitely. as always. I appreciate you always. Thank All you, right. man. Take care. There he is. True Mensch, Michael Venom Page. And by the way, after the show on Wednesday, uh, I just want to let you all know, Frank, we get a... Uh... Uh, Alex Volkanovsky told me that he for, said, for now on, guys, he said, I'm allowed to refer to him as Alexander the Mensch Volkanovsky. That's what he said. You know what we should do? We should have like, a, I used to do a thing called, um, what was it called? Uh, honorable Mention. Do you remember that, New York Rick? Honorable Mention? We should have like the Mensch wall. MVP, Volkanovsky. Who else should go up on the Mensch wall? You guys had any uh, suggestions? I mean, Verna. It's a, it's a, it's a wow. good idea as long as you don't stab everybody in the back. But <laughs> I'm trying to move idea. on from all of this, and you guys keep. Uh, I was going. gonna say this is just gonna become a wall of people that you fade for your dog of the week. Wow. Well, so, I mean, George, Nate. Not really meant to move to pee on someone's property, but you know, I get the frustration. Casey O'Neill parks in questionable parking spot. Um, Connor, DC Mensch. I don't know. I would like to have a Mensch wall. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, here's Danny Rubenstein texting me M E N S C E. Well, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. It's M E N S C H. It's very hard to spell things out when you're like speaking out loud, you know? M E N S C H. No mention of him writing to me, you busted my parlay, but this one he's going to write to me about. Uh, by the way, uh, let's go back to the guys here. We're going to be joined by the aforementioned Paul Daly in uh, a few minutes, but I wanted to actually, yeah, I'll get to the ad read in a sec. Um, all right, fine. I'll do it now. I, I, I do have the, uh, oh yeah, the numbers here. Okay. I'll give you the numbers in a second. First, speaking of numbers, a quick word from our good friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. Oh, what? I thought we were going to go with the Aspinall. Yeah, I was kind of really excited. Ah, Tommy Aspinall, Aspinall, Tommy Aspinall. Yeah, da, 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 da. The NBA playoff action. Wow, is it on fire? I mean, can we talk about the Phoenix Suns? There's a part of me that wants to talk about the Phoenix Suns. Obviously, this is an MMA show. Uh, but my good friend Shaheen is very sad today, so I don't want to talk about them. But I, I'll just say, and I, and I hope he doesn't mind that I say this, maybe the worst performance ever in a deciding game, I mean, to not even show up is just mind-blowing to me. Like, I, I, is it worse to lose at the buzzer than to not show up? I kind of feel like it is worse to not show up. Crazy. Never seen anything like that. Just, they didn't show up didn't show up. They're like, oh, yeah, you know what? We're going to roll over. NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook. There's a final four right now. You got the Celtics, you got the Heat, you got the Mavs, you got the Warriors, and it's all up for grabs. You got to love it. And over at the official sports betting partner of the NBA DraftKings Sportsbook this week, new customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do. And you know what's so fun about this whole situation? It's up in the air. You can make a very strong case right now for Warriors against Celtics, Warriors, Heat, Heat, Suns, not Suns, excuse me, Mavericks, Mavericks, Celtics. I mean, you could go in every single different permutation, and I would say, yeah, I can see that happening. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the NBA playoffs with DraftKings, same game parlays, uh, parlays, you could do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and more, and boom, you have a shot at an even bigger payout. Right now, all customers can place a same game parlay with three or more legs and get a free bet back to up to two and five. What am I reading here? Right now, all customers can place a same game parlay with three or more legs and get a free bet back up 
to $25 if one leg doesn't hit. What about the music? What are we going to do now? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DMAR. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code DMAR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, listen up. If you're in Michigan, if you are someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Gambling Disorder Helpline over at 800 270 7117. 21 and older, Michigan only, minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash for full terms and conditions. Yeah. So I was going to talk. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I got through that one. Stats, by the way, MVP Logan Storley. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw the quote retweets, but they were very mean. Total strikes, and I know you can't only go by the stats. I get it, I get it. But just, it's a, it's a little window. 104, this is landed and thrown, okay? So thrown, this is Michael Page. 138 thrown, landed 104. Storley, thrown 115, landed 72. All right, punches. Thrown MVP 115, landed 84. Punches, Storley, thrown 78, landed 40. All right, I mean double. Uh, Elbows, thrown 16 for Page, landed 15. Thrown two, landed two for Storley. Kicks, three for three, one for two for Storley. Knees, two for four for Page. This is the big one for Storley, 29 of 33. But a lot of that was, you know, on there. And then this takedowns, eight of 16. What do you what do you guys think? Am I crazy about this? I don't know if you guys saw the quote retweets, but I just got, I mean, I keep repeating this. Do you guys agree with me? 48, 47 page. Did you watch it, Connor? Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree with you. You don't that. agree? I mean, I don't know. I, every time I every time I looked at the TV, uh, he wasn't doing anything. I mean, yeah, I know he was getting held down. I don't know. It's he such a tough fight down. to score. I'm going to the quote retweets right now. I, I need to read some of this. Please go, go ahead. How'd you score it? I How'd had you it, score, it, Eric. I had it forty-eight, forty-seven for a page. Okay, so you agree? I agree. Listen, I'm not going to call it the robbery of the century. Uh, it's a. I mean. The guy didn't do anything. What do you see over there, GC? What do you see? Do you see anything? It's really mean stuff. It's like, this guy's looking for clout. This guy will literally say anything. I'm like, this is not even a hot people take. People agreeing with you? I would, I would argue Page was that. robbed. Ariel based Wani. That's a good one. That's a compliment. Ariel based Wani? What does that even mean? Yeah, it means you're based, bro. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Based is good. Yeah, based, based is, is good. good. All right. What else we got? Lol. I mean, a laughing emoji. I feel like you. This is where where were these the, so bad? There's a lot of mean ones. A lot of mean ones. The media I'm scores were were in your favor. The the, the rest of the media. That's what I couldn't believe. That's what I couldn't believe. Now I understand. Untrained eye, casual. You see mm-hmm. someone. I'm not even trying to be like, oh, you're a casual. Like you're just a casual fan. You're like, oh yeah, of course. He took him down. He held him. Yeah, all right. You know, he. But actually, if you look at what was going on, the activity, the damage, all that stuff. Almost dare I say. No brainer. No brainer. Wow. Yeah, dare I say 48, 47. Yes. No brainer. Yeah. Uh, someone said this man has been covering MMA since 2006. That's just a fact. Yeah. Nothing too bad. Here it is. Well, this, that, this motherfucker will, ooh, yeah. me, this, this MF will say anything for clout. Yeah. I mean, that, that hurt. That, that made it feel I, like uh, I was being disingenuous. Yeah, and then the responses to that get pretty ugly. They get ugly? Yeah. We'll, we'll keep them off. There. All right. 48, 47. And no one knows how to score in this, in this sport. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I I actually feel like scoring at forty eight forty seven for MVP proves that we do know how to score in the sport. You know what I mean? But the judges didn't score it that way. Yeah, there was or one judge. One one judge did. Yeah, there was one judge. I actually have it right now here. Now I have to ask you. Yeah, please. Are you actually seeing a lot more people disagreeing, or are those the ones you're keying in on? Because all the sentiment that I saw online was people saying MVP won. You know, idiot. I have to Someone say, hit you with an idiot. That's yeah. tough. I have to say, a lot of the media, I think, scored in favor of MVP. Right? And seemed to as well. No, no. Did you see the quote retweets? I mean, just I, I didn't. I'm looking but at again, the QRTs right now. They're not. They're not. I mean, there's a few bad. <laughs> it was ones, really but. bad. It was really bad. He, I are again. Was it half and was it half and half? And you're only looking at the bad ones. I, just, I don't. No, I don't even think it was half and half. I think it was like seventy thirty good. 
oh, 30 bag. All right. So then. No, this, this is what happened. I posted 48, 47. I went to my son's football game. I turned my phone back on. I was like, whoa. It, it felt like a lot. You know, it's a Bellator Friday afternoon. It felt like a lot of heat. Yeah, right. It, it, it just felt a little excessive. But ev- according to Connor, 70% agreed with you and. So did all the rest of the media. No, it wasn't so. Did it wasn't that I'm seeing. Someone wrote the classic: the best time to delete this tweet was the second you wrote it. The next best time to delete this yeah, tweet you is don't, right now. <laughs> I mean, you don't usually get that. Uh, one judge, his name is uh, David Lethaby. He had it right, in my opinion. He had ten nine page, um, ten nine Storley, ten nine page, ten nine page, ten nine Storley. And then the other two judges had it. For, one dude had it forty nine forty six for Storley. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a great fight in terms of entertainment. No, it wasn't a great fight. So would you run it back? Probably not, right? <laughs> I, I think you need to get the the real champ back whenever. Yeah, but whenever what if he's, he's out available. for yeah, a considerable no, amount of time? That's true. You know? Yeah, he's fighting. You know, after seeing how that one played out, why would you run? Just that forget back? it. Yeah, I, I'm, it's I'm the same as Carla and Rose. Like, do you yeah. do you want to see that again? Not no, really. I, I do not. Can I be honest with you? I kind of want to see Carla and Rose again. Stop. You're the only I, one. I do. Congratulations. Why? By the way, I, I guess like if on she May... got that one punch off, everything would have been different. <laughs> oh, you I would. I would only the, want to see it again based on horses. the hope that like they're so pressured into making it a crazy fight. One if point. I saw it gets announced, I would be. I would not be excited at all. I get intrigued by these things. All right, so can he figure it out? A couple times, to his credit, he admitted it. He's going for the flying knee. I'm like, why are you doing the flying knee? He's just going to, you know, you're, you're going to land it sort of, and then he's going to catch you, and then he's going to take you down. You're going to be off balance. He'll, Had he just stayed on his feet and did his thing where he picks his shots, I actually feel like he would have been way more successful mm-hmm. if he would have done it for like four out of the five minutes and then last minute go for the flying knee. Yeah, but how does, how does, how does he stay on his feet for four minutes? I actually think he was having a hard time. Storley? Yeah. No. He if he was a little more evasive, I think he would have had an even harder time. I think Storley got him down every round, correct? Yes, yes, yes. But I feel like MVP a couple times gave him the opening. Like he's starting the round. It's like, all right, all right, here we go. I can't remember which round it was now. And then he goes for a flying knee and then he takes him down right away. He's trying to, excuse me. You're right there. Get some water. He's trying to end the fight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he was trying to, he was trying to, yeah, he was trying to say goodnight. Um, I don't know. It was just frustrating to watch. Like I like Logan Storley. I have nothing against him. He's one of these young wrestler guys that Bellator has been building up, but uh, it's just like, you can't just hold on to a guy. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how you can score that in someone's favor. He's literally holding on to him. He's not doing anything. He's not trying to advance. He's not trying to submit. He's not trying to beat him up. He's not trying to knock him out. Where's the, uh, the actual attempt to finish a fight? Show me that. And then I'll say that you won the fight. I don't know. I, I feel like we see a lot of guys win based off of control time. I don't think it's right. You know, I have sure. a problem with that. Fabian Edwards knocked out Leon Machida. Might be the last time we see Leon Machida. A um, bit hard to watch. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty brutal. Paul, and then you had Paul the Paul Daly knockout was amazing. Paul Daly knockout was amazing. Like I was like uh, I was I was pretty hyped when that happened. Can I? And we're going to be joined by Paul Daly, by the way, in 15 minutes, unless you know people get in the way. No, nope. so far so good. Uh, can I just say? <laughs> I actually got a little bit emotional watching that. Wow. Well, again, I felt like he was being kind of held down. It's like, oh, come on, guys. You're going to book Paul Daly in this spot. It didn't look good for him. No, it was it definitely like a nice comeback. And just the way that the knockout happened, just like, I mean, he put him down. Oh, my gosh. We lost old NYR yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, I feel like yeah, we should go full screen in that regard. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, where did he go? Is Did he quit? Uh, no, nah, he... Is that enough? Throw, yeah, yeah. Water no, he's being held down, and then all of a sudden he gets up. He has a moment of clarity, a moment of freedom, and then it's like <laughs> swinging out of his shoes, oh, and then lands amazing. like multiple. And just like the way, like it was one of those ones where he turns around. He knew it happened. Everyone's going crazy. I mean, it was it was beautiful, a thing of beauty. Was he the underdog going into that? No, nah, pretty big favorite. Like he was a big like, favorite. Yeah, like minus like three twenty five. I should have, out of principle, just bet Paul Daly by KO. In hindsight. You know, last fight. Oh, yeah. One more run. Why not? What was Paul Daly by KO? He was, was like that... minus 130. Oh, was, was still it? minus money. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Man. I mean, he has like 35 KO wins. No, I mean, legend. Semtex. They don't call him Semtex for nothing. Favorite Semtex moment in New York, Rick? It's a, it's a very random one. Oh, wow. Well, okay. I'm putting you on the spot here. I didn't even ask you about no, this no. beforehand. There's, there's two. The number one is the obvious. Everybody goes with it. Paul Daly versus Nick Diaz round, right? Yeah, like yeah. that 
everybody has that one. But the uppercut, KO, Paul Daly, Homario, Manuel Da Silva, it's a Bama fight. Wow. What I mean, this is it, a it's, real hipster pick. It's I mean, you want you want No, I like it. I love it. I love it. But tell me no, why. Number why? Number one, number one, Diaz and, and Daly. That but that's both of them, right? That's that's and also of, he loses that one. So it's not like, I mean, what because he loses, that means that wasn't no, an incredible it's moment. Nice Th- those those two made that moment though together. Fair, fair. This knockout from Bama, it, and I'm not saying this as like, oh, at the time I had watched it live on Bama. I'm not trying to do the hipster thing. This has been one that I've seen since. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like now I've seen it. This uppercut is one of the he he lifts the dude off his feet. It's one of the cleanest uppercuts you'll ever see. It's an if you have not seen this knockout, I implore you. Paul Daly, Homario, Manuel da Silva in Bama, straight lifts the dude off his feet. It's it's monstrous. But I mean, he his his entire career, he's got 30 of those. You know what I mean? Like Paul da- that was what Paul Daly does and that's what we saw in this fight and what we expected from Paul Daly. Um the dude the dude is next level. As far as knockout artist goes. He is yeah. he's truly one of the 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 true knockout artists of this sport. December of 2013 if you're looking at it uh yeah. or looking for it. Find that one. Scott Smith one is my favorite probably. I mean it's a great one. Who wants a KO for Christmas? <laughs> uh Morrow. I mean like that it, it looked like Scott Smith died. You know you know what <laughs> It was just like he was stiff as a board. It was crazy. I mean, he's done that to a lot of people. Oh my he's done God. that to a lot of people. You know what's kind of underrated and I feel like has gone by the wayside? He's one of the OG kind of like trash talker, S-H-I-T talkers. Oh, yeah. And like has kind of grown, you know, like over time, that's that's faded a little bit. Now it's just like I come in and knock people out. But like he's he's one of the OGs of that. He, he could run his mouth along with uh, the punches. 100%. Legit which is bad what, boy. Which back is what in the day. Kosh, got Koscheck so upset and that performance, and um, and then you know he lost his temper. But like, he had a way of pushing people's buttons uh, that that was uh, ahead of its time as well. I still maintain till this day he got the raw end of that deal. They shouldn't have of the the cutting after. Yeah. Man, you can't. Nah, come you on. Can't, you can't do that. Come on. But you could throw a dolly at someone. Like you could we could play this game all day long. I, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll say this. I feel like there was more principle back then, right? Like if it happened now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he gets cut. Uh also we can't as as great as Paul Daly is, we cannot compare Paul Daly to Conor McGregor. No, but uh, I'm just saying we've seen some pretty, you know, unscrupulous things. Yeah. I mean, Iwan Kutilaba and who was it? Uh Oh yeah, that was crazy. Um was it Magomed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, right before the fight, they're they're yeah they're fighting, scrapping. Yeah. So like we've seen some. What's crazy the difference? Stuff. Also, we forget. Well, I don't know if we forget, but the start of his UFC career, two straight blistering knockouts in the first round when he was brought in. Oh yeah. Um, you know, kind of like he was this guy. He was in uh, the, um, Elite XC back in the day and all this stuff. Comes in, blasts Martin Kampman. Remember that UFC 103? And then he blasts Dustin Hazlett. And then he gets the Koscheck fight. They hated each other. And all right, he lose one. And then they just get rid of him. I get... Two I fights later, like beats Jorge more, Masvidal. There was more principle back then. I, I feel like they were trying to send the right message at that time. No, he was... He, you know, they thought, all right, he's not going to beat a Koscheck type. Yeah. He's expendable at this more point. More expendable. Sure. Uh, I don't think it would happen now. I'll say that. I, th- I think he'd be no way. fine now. I don't think uh, anything... Re- I mean, nothing but, even remotely close to it happening, did, unless he's expendable, that person. Did it end up maybe working out, you know, ultimately in the long run? Like, he kind of... No. Kind of carved out a different career. and Sure, but came, if you're at top of the food chain in the UFC, who knows, you know, yeah. who he's fighting. He's fresh blood. He gets a GSP fight. I'll say, I don't know. I'll say this. At that time, that division was going to be tough for Paul Daly. Let's just call it what it is. Like the wrestlers in the in that weight class at that time. Yeah. It would have been tough for for Daly probably to to make it to the top of that division. I mean, they were all like Koscheck, right? It was like Fitch, GSP, Koscheck, like that would have been a tough yeah, go. Would tough. That would have been a tough run. Um but no, nah, I mean ultimately, I think Paul Daly like probably got some clout for that to be completely honest. I think it it added to like that bad boy kind of persona that Oh, I love that era. The cage rage era era from back in the day. Yeah. Um, He's an outlaw, not to steal Dan Hardy. Yeah, yeah. But he became, oh, they were buds. Yeah, that's right. And uh, didn't, uh, I think I think there was some news this week where Daly said that he was offered the the fight with Dan, but didn't do it out of like respect because they were really? together. Yeah. 
I didn't see that. I believe that's right. I mean, when you talk about the pioneers of UK MMA, you talk about... Forget UK MMA. MMA but I'm just talking period. about... Yeah, 100%. But you talk about the pioneers of UK MMA. Obviously, Bisping gets yeah. the first nod. Uh, Ian Freeman will get a nod. Dan Hardy will get a nod. And I feel like Paul Daly is in that conversation. Top 100%. three, top four. 100%. I mean, surpassed Ian Freeman at this point. I, th- I feel like it's... Is, is it Bisping... Hardy Daily, maybe even Bisping Daily Hardy. Who am I missing? You can't go wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that's it. But you can't, you can't go wrong with those guys. I'm not talking about like the guys right now. I'm talking about like the pioneers, yeah, yeah. the OGs, the for sure. You know, the trailblazers. Paved the way. Yeah, yeah. Paved the way for the guys right now. Yeah, and girls right now. And by the way, don't you agree about those European Bellator cards? I don't like the Friday afternoon because I feel like everyone's got things going on on Friday afternoon. Like you're this, you're that. Yeah. Saturday, if they could go on Saturday afternoon. For these cards, I think that they would get a lot more play, but I do feel like it's a different promotion when they're in Europe for whatever reason. Agree, agree with all those points. Yes, it would be good to have on Saturday, but it does feel like I don't know what it is. This is happening over here, and this is happening over here. Hundred percent. Why do you? Whereas think that the is? UFC, is there's just better talent. Well, better European talent, so they're showcasing them on these cards. There's also uniformity of times and and dates, right? Like to your point, you're talking about. Go on Saturday, go on Saturday. USC always goes on Saturday, right? right. And they always go at a roughly the same time, or at least try to. There's that consistency. When you're like, hey, we're doing a Friday fight in Europe and it's starting really early, that's different than when Bellator is on here in prime time in, in the US. I will say though, UFC cannot start a fight night at 10 p.m. Eastern. I mean, unless it's a pay per view, no card should start at 10 p.m. Eastern. It felt late. It felt late. No card should ever start at 10 p.m. Eastern main card unless it's a pay-per-view. I, I'm in 100% agreement with that. I mean, it's just Earned too much. It. Like, seeing that it started at 7.30 was... It's not the fair. The worst news I got all week. It was the worst news I got all week. <laughs> <laughs> and, everybody's, and everybody's just like, oh, over over here in the UK, we stay up till... Uh, oh, I hate, oh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite when they I'm say like, that. Well, I'm we not used to that. We stay up till 5. That. Yeah. By the way, I don't think I would be an MMA fan if I had to stay up till 5 I don't 5 think I would either. You know, I don't think that's why they're the best. The hack yeah, is in true. Hawaii. The hack, oh yeah, my God. that's what I'm saying. We need to get out to Hawaii. That would that's be perfect. The hack. Yeah, because that's five hours back from us. Six, yeah, dep- depending Six. on daylight savings. Damn. So the 10 p.m. main the war- card starting at happy four. hour, 5 four. p.m., 4 p.m. And that's and that's like the latest one possible. And it's worse. Yeah, yeah. It's worse. The 7 p.m. starting at one. Yeah, main breakfast c- football. Do you remember uh, that period? On FS1, where every freaking card, every card was starting at 10 yeah. and ending at 1.30. Like, even the crappiest of crappy fight nights. I was no, no the, bueno. There was a period where I was questioning whether or not I could still do this. <laughs> and again, I know there's some guy in Ireland right now or Scotland or like, I have to stay up till 6. Yeah. I get it. Bravo. I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. It's too hard. Yeah, I couldn't either. There's no shot. By the way, I took a little gander at uh, this weekend's card. Oh, wow. Here we go. It's a little light. You're diving right back in? Well, I was just looking in corner of my eye. Light. It's very light. But Santiago Ponzinibbio plus 100? That's where he's sitting right now? Yeah. We locking that in? Plus 100 against minus 120 Michel Pajeda. I mean, a little surprised. I know Ponzinibbio is not exactly lighting the world on fire right now, but I'm a bit surprised. What do you guys think? I, I, I have to say my confidence level is very low. It's tough to get back on the horse, huh? Yeah. yeah. You, you should wait for one that you feel good about before coming back on this. No, I have to say, I kind of feel good about this one. Yeah. You don't it's like jumping it? off the page at you? It's, it, it feels a little Cheeto-esque. All right. You disagree in here, Crick? I feel like you're not saying, I mean, you're biting your tongue here, and then you're going to say on Monday, I tried to warn you. No. This doesn't feel like a, this feels like a pass, this fight altogether. For me. Really? I'm, I'm not confident one way or the other. The fight card or the fight in particular? No, that, that specific Both. fight. Chase Hooper plus one fifty. Michelle's a Michelle is a is a hard person to bet on in yeah. those fights. I tend to stay away from. Parker and Porter Ponson. plus four seventy five. Pride of New Britain, Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Pride of New Britain, baby. Yo, he comes back on a plus five hundred dog. That'd be yo. That magical. I mean, he is a massive underdog in this fight. Yeah. Almeida's minus six thirty. Yeah. Chase Hooper plus 150 against uh, Felipe Colares. Yeah, it's a bit of a light schedule here, for being honest. Main event is Holly Holm minus 240, Caitlin Vieira plus 195. Um, I'm not ready to go against Holly Holm, the Hall of Famer. Sorry. 
Holly Holm, people forget, had one of her best performances outside of championship fights in her last fight. It's just been almost two years since we saw her fight. Yeah. But she fought Aldana, right? Yeah. Um, I, don't I mean, know. she's 40, but like she is Holly Holm. What are you trying to say about 40 year olds? Probably not as good as 30 year olds. You know what's weird? When I was younger, I, uh, I never really looked at people's ages, and now I'm looking at people's ages a lot. And so I'm like, wow, Paul Daly's the same age as me. Holly Holmes the same age as me. I always kind of viewed them as older than me. You know what I mean? Sure. It's a weird thing. Yeah, it's like when the, you know, the sports fan says, "Oh, everybody in the NBA draft is now younger than me." That's kind of like the the threshold. That's where you start to realize your age. Yeah. Well, no, it's the, weird the because people talk about like you you're referring to her as being old GC, and I'm like, well, I'm 40, and I feel like I'm just hitting my prime for the game, though. Yeah, I know, like I for know, the I game, know, it's I know, old. I know. I'm not calling like 40 year olds in general old. Also, we're talking about. Holly Holm has a lot of mileage as well, right? She's been fighting for such a long time. It's it's different, right? Like Daniel, I think Daniel Cormier's forty in MMA is less than other, you know, heavyweights forties in MMA, depending right. on on how many goes you have. Now, don't get me wrong, Daniel Cormier has competed in athletics for such a such a long time at that point, but in MMA, he was he was still relatively young at forty yeah. in his career, you know. Like ba- Brian Barberena is only like thirty three. I, for yeah. some reason, thought he was way older than that. Charles Oliveira, like 32. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's a perfect example. MVP Charles, 35, thought he was way younger than that. Mm. Charles Oliveira is an old 32, though, right? Like, the, he has a lot of tread uh, aware yeah. on those tires for MMA. Like, he's, he's in his prime right now, but how long is that prime going to be? Because he's had so many fights. How old's Rory Mack? Rory Mack, 32. Yeah, it's crazy. When, when you look at some of these guys who have been in it, young and doing it for so long you'd be surprised how old's anthony pettis uh 87 35 35 34 yeah we're getting old guys <laughs> trying to say not connor just not me connor, yeah canelo only being 31 that's that feels weird to me. like that feels really weird i actually would have predicted uh a little bit older than that 33 34 yeah canelo is like essentially my age which is just nuts to think has about. anyone ever told you you look a bit like canelo no, the uh, a lot of a lot of Christian Eriksons, yeah, Jake Layman's, no know. Canellos ever. Who's Jake Layman? Uh, NBA player. Jake Layman. What team? Who's? My, am I getting his? <laughs> am I getting his his first name right? Yeah, Jake Layman. I I don't know him either. Jake Layman. Yeah, Jake Layman. How do you spell Layman? L a y m a n. You have me questioning everything. No. This this one I find a little bit more insulting. Oh, Christian okay. Erickson, I see more of as as a compliment. Yeah, I was going to say, who did Frank tell me I look like that? I've never. Oh heard yeah, of before. Frank. Who does he look Mike like? Patton. Who's that? Say it again. Mike Patton. Mike, Mike Patton. Patton. Never heard of him. Third Eye Blind. What was it? Great guy. Never mind. Faith No More. Faith No More. What's their most famous song? I got to get the next guest on. Oh. <laughs> but no, what is their most oh, famous song? Epic is the name of the song. As epic. soon as you heard it, you would know what I'm talking about. My sacrifice. I said epic. <laughs> <laughs> Who said my sacrifice? Up, did you look up? No. My sacrifice is like in the early 2000s, every WWE pay-per-view had one of these, you know, Creed, um, Nickelback. Oh, so that's not actually no, Faith just No More I'm just oh, Okay, okay. See, I don't know. You're. <laughs> I'm just making this up. By the way, I had a crazy scene. Should I, should I mention this or is this TMI? We're about to be joined, by the way, by uh, Paul Daly. And then after that, we're going to be joined by Dustin Poirier. And then after that, Tony Ferguson. So the real meat and potatoes of this program is still to come. Yes? My thought is to pocket that one. All right, fine. Yeah. Oh, wow. That one in the whole (laughs) What is it? The subject of TMI? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? You don't even know what it is. I don't think I do. No, but Eric, why do you say pocket it? Keep it it in the holster. You think it's better? You don't even know what I'm talking about. But you just think. I know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I know. No, 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 no. It's not the other one. It's not the oh, other okay, one. Oh, okay, okay, no, okay. No. Something. But but I, the fact that you, I guess the fact that I'm questioning whether, no, it's it's not a big deal. Here, here's okay. the bottom line. Hit it. Here's the bottom line. Now. I'm at my son's soccer game, right? Yesterday, right? I don't say a word, but I go to every game. I don't say a word. Honestly, I never say anything. Yeah. I'm like, the I'm the one who goes up to the coaches afterwards and says, thank you. You know, like I'm yeah. not soccer dad, but. And my son's pretty good. He's eight years old. His team is very good. And he's playing this team. And there was this one kid who kept sly tackling from the back. Yeah. Now that's very dangerous from right. the back, sly yeah. tackling, right? 
does it repeatedly. There's even a father next to me who keeps going like, God, oh, keep slide tackling. Can we get them to stop slide tackling? And I'm just like, all right, yeah, I know it's kind of annoying, but you don't say anything, right? You don't say wow. anything. I got to admit, I'm, I'm impressed that you you held it back. for, yeah, for Wait, that. wait, wait. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Then at one point, son's on a breakaway, same kid, slide tackles him from the back. So then I finally get up and I go is, to the... Yes. Is he going at all for the ball or is it just no, straight like... it's just from the back. And so I go and to they the... didn't call it. They didn't call nothing. it. Nothing. There's no ref. It's just the two coaches <laughs> referee. So I go to the other coach and I'm like, hey, can you please just ask your kid to stop slide tackling from the back? That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Then our coach, who is a sub coach, who I've never met, he's like, hey, you can't speak to the team. I was like, yo... All I want is for this guy to tell his this kid, my kid could get hurt and everyone could yeah. get hurt. So he's like, yeah, I'll do it. Doesn't do it. So I was like, hey, man, can you do it, please? Can you tell the kid to stop yeah. slide tackling? So doesn't do it. So now I feel like I'm on an island. So I say to wow. the other dad on the side, I was like, hey, you've seen this too, right? Doesn't yeah. say anything. Doesn't have my wow. back. Wow. So now everyone's looking wow. at me. Then You're the enraged parent. Then after. someone on the end goes, what's the problem, Ariel? So I was like, oh, someone has my oh, back. No. So I look over, I'm like, this guy keeps slide tackling, but then I realize he's on the other team, and it's I guess he kid. recognized me. And so I'm like, yo, they keep slide tackling and hurting the kids. He's like, you guys are up 10 nothing. I was like, yo, man, I don't care if we're losing 100 to nothing. I just don't want to get hurt. He's like, maybe you should calm down. I'm like, calm oh down. Gosh, wow, he hit you Yeah, with yeah, he got the other call. Maybe you should calm down. I'm like, yo, could we, in, in a real soccer match, you get banned. You get a red card for a slide tackle from the back, all right? You could tear someone's ACL, all right? Enough of this. So then afterwards, you know, I, I feel like a bit of a schmuck. But I, you know what? I no, felt- yeah. This guy is at his office today, and he's just like, you guys know Ariel I want him? Yeah. This guy I got lost it. it. Yeah, lost. I didn't lose lost it. it. I didn't lose anything. No, I've seen Ariel lose it. This does not. No, and I said to my son afterwards. No, you, I mean, you definitely. And did, this kid this kept. Disgusting. The kid started talking trash to me. He goes, "Maybe you should come out and play." <laughs> little kid, eight years the old. Little kid. Said, and then did I started. You say anything back? No, I didn't say anything back. Oh, I did, I, you know, that's he says, beautiful. Oh, my Maybe God, you should come beautiful. out and play. I didn't say anything, but I told my son afterwards. I was like, "Listen, no one's gonna have your back except for me. All right, I will go, you know, through hell for you." And that kid was being dirty. And every time he would look at me, every time he did it, he would look at me like to be like, okay. "Do you see what he's doing?" We have a few things to talk about here, real quickly, because I know. We're yeah, gonna, I know. I know, Paulie. Uh. Great job by you. Thank protect, you. Protect the kids. Come on. Yeah. Let, let's 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 be humans here. I'm guessing that was pro- maybe the dad, the the other guy. No, it wasn't. Maybe he it was wasn't. the dad of the side. Oh, he was just on the same team. Yeah. Rough though. Uh, sub coach. Gotta Ow. go. Yeah. You get. You got my go. back. Didn't have my back. Did, you lastly, say you're gonna talk lastly, about it. Was anyone filming this? Can no, we get the no, altercation no, no. of we maybe you should come out here and no, play no, yourself? Yeah, you and you like, also, not saying anything back. Little kid, little kid talking smack. <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> maybe next time he gets a slide it. tackle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know I what? agree. Hey, you know who knows a thing or two about slide tackling? I bet Paul Daly. I mean, he's from the UK. What a transition. Paul Semtex Daily. Did he really close out his career on Saturday or Friday? I should say, I keep mess- messing that up. Incredible. It was poetic. It was beautiful. It was, uh, if you could script out the perfect ending to Paul Daly's career, that was it on Friday. Let's go to Paul Daly right now and uh, and talk to him about the whole situation. What's up, Paul? How are you? I'm good, mate. I was I was interested in hearing the story yeah. about your your soccer playing son. It you, sounded like it was pretty. Interesting. Did you hear this? This kid from the back, Paul, kept yeah. sly tackling from the back. So the, my yeah. son is on a breakaway and he's taking out his legs. So finally, I say, Yeah, that's not li- that's not cool, right? Yeah, that's not cool. That's re- red card offense at, at least, bro. And the thing is, you know I mean? speak up and everyone <laughs> comes after me like I'm the bad dad speaking up. I'm like, Yo, man, I just want a clean game here. There we go. That's all we want. Fair play. So you would have had my back? <laughs> I got your back. I Thanks, always Paul. got your back, bro. I, yeah, I know. I know. And I know it, especially <laughs> after this weekend. I appreciate you, my man. Thank you, Paul. Uh, congratulations. No problem. no problem. Holy crap, man. Thank you. Can I tell you something, Paul? I'm watching this fight on yes. Friday. Uh, I was actually yeah. at soccer practice. I had to watch Friday afternoon here in America, but I you know, stopped everything I'm doing. I'm watching. And I was getting depressed watching it. I was like, it can't yeah. end like this. It cannot end like this in London. It cannot end. And then all of a sudden, I started to get emotional. <laughs> Liver. <laughs> what are you thinking as the, the clock is ticking and you're like, there's a, there's essentially a round and change left and it's going to end like this with someone holding me down? No, it, it, it was never going to end like that. You know, we pre- prepared for every eventuality and I was, I was pretty relaxed. I was biding my time. You know, I could... I said post fight, I could hear the crowd in the moments of silence. I, I knew there was genuine concern amongst the audience, but I'm like, guys, just be patient. I could hear he was getting tired. 
he was fatiguing. And I only need, I knew I only needed one shot. I knew it. He was pretty slow. And like I say, he, he, he gave his best in the first round. And, you know, it was fortunate that I flew the fly, flying knee in closer distance. He was able to get on, get in on me again in the second. But I knew all I needed was a moment, a little bit of space, and that it, that it would have been game over. So you were never losing hope? You were never losing confidence? You were never starting to think like, man, no, time is running bro. out? No. No, bro. No, I was calm. Wow. I was calm. Uh, the, probably the, the most, the most, not even worrying because I knew what I was doing in the position, but I just didn't expect him go, to go for the hill hook. Yeah. Um, but I was calm in defending that. Um, I wasn't worried about this guy, you know. Um, fair play to him. I spoke to him afterwards and I said, look, you did what you had to do. We knew what you was going to do, but you wasn't coming out there, you know, without getting knocked out. I, mean, I apologized. It was always going to happen. Man, it was... And it was a shame because he was a big, he was a big fan of mine. Oh, was he? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said I used to watch you when I was a kid. I was playing soccer, and you inspired me to to play MMA. So it was a uh, to change to MMA. It was a, a massive honor for me to fight you. And it ended bad, you know, face down, ass up. It couldn't have ended any worse for him. So yeah. And, and by the way, I appreciate. I mean, I, I hope your your fans in England don't give you crap for calling it soccer. But I appreciate you making that transition for me here, because of course, football over there. Yeah, no problem. Mark. Very nice of you. No problem. Um, <laughs> when you got that separation at the end of the second round, and yeah. you started blasting him, you hit him with the liver shot, which was beautiful. You you get the guard down, and then yeah. you freaking came up top. Did you know? Okay, this is yeah. it. This is this is the opening that I needed. Definitely, and and you know, it, it was definitely the body shot that brought about the the the. The, the finish because it slowed him down completely I, it happened well, you know when you watch it back it, it's fast but I hit him with a body shot he throws like a really slow counter left hook that, that catches me but I, I thought he would have got the reason why he even catches me with that, that left hook because I thought he was going down with the, with the body shot so I've looked at him and then I get caught and then I, I see that it was like a delayed reaction because after he threw through the left hook counter which catches me He's like there for like a half a second, just looking at me, and I thought, Psh, it's, it was time to take him out of there. And then once that shot landed, and you, you can see it, it's complete confidence. I'm left or right hand, you know, my left hand took took all all the light uh, most of my career, but my right hand is is had a few heads as well. Yeah. So. yeah. I guess uh, that would be the only thing that didn't make it like vintage, Paul, that it wasn't the left, but it was still incredible. The knockout was amazing. Could you even... No, the left is broke. The left oh, is actually broke now. So, Jeez. yeah, it's messed up. Roots, tell them guys I'm doing an interview to go out the back door. You guys right. are just sat there. You can see what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm, I'm actually back working now. I'm in the gym, so... What are you doing? I just finished the class and people... Are I'm back in the dojo. I'm back in my gym, so people are trying to no get problem. out. And I've no got problem. a little buzzer here that lets people in and out, so... No worries. Um, but yeah, so cool. No, no, I, I told... So, wow, so the, the so the hand is broken, huh? When did you break it? Well, not, I said broken, but I meant dislocated. So what, okay. what's happened is, as it's backed up against the cage and I, I, I sprawl and I throw like a flurry of shots, as it's covering up, I've hit him, um, caught him with the outside of my thumb on his elbow. And they say it's an unusual, it was, it was dislocated at the lower joint so that the, the bone tucked under into my Oof. soft tissue and did damage some ligaments. So... It's in cast now. It's going to come out and it's going to get like a wire wrapped around some ligaments to get stitched up. So, yeah. If I pick something up the wrong way or just like yeah, yeah. now and then probably dislocate it, <laughs> I do that and it goes back in. Oh my gosh. But it is, it's, not, it's, not, it's not painful. And, and when did this happen in the fight? Just before the finish. Oh, really? Gone out. Yeah, yeah. Blasted him. It's no, it's no reason why I finished him with the right. I just finished him with the right because that's, that's what was there. But... Yeah, I felt it go, and I just kept punching until something put me away. Wow, and that didn't give you, you know, any sort of pause. That didn't lower your confidence, even though you knew that something was wrong. No, man, I had, I was not. Look, there was nothing that, there was nothing that was going to stop me from knocking this guy out. Mm. I was not going out in Wembley Arena for my last fight without knocking this guy out. He was not getting out of there, I, and and. Everybody's oh, I was worried about he was like <laughs> I wasn't worried about me. This guy, this guy wasn't coming out of there alive. Like I wasn't worried, not one point. I had complete confidence that I was gonna put this guy to sleep. 
Um, all right, so all week long, because there was so much attention on this being your last fight, did you, f- did you feel any more? I mean, you've done this so many times, but a little more pressure, a little more nerves. You know, there was a, there was a lot of attention on you. You want to go out with that storybook, and yeah. you, you didn't you didn't allow that to to seep in. No, it was just like another fight week. I, it's really? probably one of the best fight weeks that we had. It was it was uh, enjoyable. I tried to get as as many of the coaches there that have helped me over my career. So there was a few bodies there, um, and we just enjoyed it. You know, I think I and part part of me thinks just because I know that it's my last fight, mm-hmm. and people think that would have the opposite kind of I should, I should be acting differently but I'm happy I'm content you know so I like, was just enjoying enjoying it knowing that this was it I've, I've had a, a, a hell of a long time in the sport been through ups and downs and had to you know it's, it's been um, draining on me um, not just physically but emotionally you know I've had to keep pushing keep going and doing all kinds of shit just to, just to keep my, to keep relevant and stuff like that. So I'm just happy that I did it. I made it. I'm, I, I, and my sister says I made it out unscathed, you know. Bar the Nick Diaz fight, when have, you know, and, and Douglas Lima, I got dropped a couple of times, but you don't, you've never seen me come out bloody, face torn up, you know, on a stretcher, nothing. I've always made it out on my own two feet and, and looking as sexy as I am now. Yes, no, it's a hundred percent true. Um, and yet, you know, people always talk about the Diaz fight. It would, you, do you, do you hold it in yeah. the same regard as everyone else or, you know, cause we were just talking no, earlier. Man. You don't like it. I don't like it. I, I lost the fight and I, I know I could fight better than that. And the game plan went out the window, you know, we was prepared for Nick, but he does get a hold of you, man. When he starts talking shit in the, especially with me, I'm a, a reactive person and the guy's talking, whatever he's talking in, in the cage and just makes you want to swing, <laughs> you know, forget the leg kicks and start swinging. The, the kicking was the plan, but you know, when, when, as it went. Is that the one that you wish you could get back? If you, if you could pick one? No, I, I don't, I don't wish I could get back any fight in terms of change. What's already happened. But I think if I was to pick a fight to have a rematch, it would definitely be Nick Diaz or Masvidal because yeah. they're the ones that have turned into pay-per-view stars right, and right. I can get the most money from. So, yeah, you know, Nick Diaz was a great fight and I beat Masvidal and he holds the BMF belt, I think, even right. though he's lost his last fight. So those are the ones that if, if someone came to me and says, right, what's going to get you out of retirement? those two fights and mm-hmm. that that is it those are the only two fights that pull me out because I know that they're going to make me a ton of money so here's the thing I believe you 100% when you say this that you're done that that was your last fight all that stuff but you go out on top like that it's so great you're looking great As I mean like really yeah. has anything that happened since Friday changed your mind is the door now open again have you rethought this no, how do you feel no no, no I'm done I really I'm, I'm, I'm finished you know I feel that was, I would not want to ruin that ending. That was such a perfect ending. I mean, you know, it was, it was, it not for anybody, but just for me, that was like vintage Semtex. That's why I'm so popular. And that's what people came to see. They came to see me do that. And that's why for 20 years, people have always turned out for me, you know, and that's why I am, I feel or was before retirement was still a relevant name. You know, I, I've only was in the big the big show for three fights, but I've managed to keep myself relevant over the over the past twenty years, fighting on little bit shows and upstart promotions, and still be here and still relevant. Um, and I think that's special. And that that fight that finish is why. I remember when we spoke a few months ago when you first made the announcement that this was going to be the final fight. You you kind of yeah. you stress the word MMA right you stressed MMA and which made me think okay maybe there's going to be other stuff boxing this and that and you didn't really want to go into that can you elaborate yeah because be, be, yeah I can because at that time I was offered I knew something was coming up I was offered uh, a fight a boxing fight but then the opponent opponent was Dan Hardy and I didn't know that at the time so oh my gosh obviously yeah Dan being a former teammate and even though we even though we I say, again, I've said this already, even though we, we, we're not close and we don't speak a lot um, like we're used to it, you know, I'm a simple guy and I think I, li- I like to keep things honest and we sort of, 
we do, we came into the sport as babies and we sort of grew to a certain stage together. And I think it, it just wouldn't be right. You know, um, although we didn't remain close for long, the time that we did spend together is kind of, um, a key point in our development as mixed martial artists. And I, I wouldn't want to go back on that. So I turned the one, once I found out I was down, I turned the fight down. Wow. Um, and that was that. And that's for the July 2nd card, the one that's headlined by uh, Hatton and uh, Marco Antonio Berra? No, that, that, this was for a different, oh, different wow. show. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the promotion, okay. but it was going to be here here in England um, at the O2. I think the show's still coming here. Okay. So when they announce the show, um, yeah. Now, do you not go you back know, to them and say, that. hey, can you just give me someone else? Like, why don't we figure this out? I, I have asked for someone else, but then since, since the injury to my hand, yeah. I'm thinking that it's probably a sign of, of to just stop. And even thinking about it and, and saying what I just said about the end of the Wembley, I just feel like I, sh- I shouldn't do it. But the money is crazy. So, is it crazy? Uh, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's more than I've been paid wow. in, in any MMA fight. So it, it's definitely worth, worth, uh, worth it. But it depends on the opponent and... You know, I just don't want to ruin the, the, the fairy tale ending. So, I, you know, and I, it's not always about the money. I'm, I'm okay. Does that so. kind of blow your mind that someone would offer you more? Like, you're an MMA fighter. You've been doing MMA for almost 20 years now. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like some boxing show and they're going to pay you more than you've yeah. made in your entire. Like, that's kind of yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. I think it's, it's either we're, as MMA fighters, 90% of us are getting hustled or. The, the 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 promoters that are offering this money just you know they have they have a good cash flow right and I don't know what it is um, but yeah it seems ridiculous that I'm being offered to a lot more to compete in a, a sport that I haven't you know made my name in um and and forgive me for not knowing off the top of my head did you ever have any pro boxing bouts I don't think so right no no no, no. pro boxing bouts kickboxing yes yeah spotted bunch of pro boxers but never never had a pro boxing bout were you ever tempted to to go over because of the power that you possessed no because it's such a different game that's yeah. that's why when i when i see uh you know the mma fighters going across fight jake paul and uh, thinking that their their mma's boxing sparring is the same as boxing i'm like it's not it's so different and you know and i Maybe they're just in denial. I'm, I'm quite honest when I say that when I've gone in there with boxers, it's, you know, I've done okay, but I wouldn't want to fight them in a pro boxing match. It's, it's so different. Mm. Punch out, but, you know, position, angles, the rounds, it's, it's very different. So now uh, in, a, in a sort of uh, developing story or in an update since we last spoke, now you're saying definitively there's no more competition, regardless of combat. Like now you're really actually done. Yeah, I'm done. But I did say those two fights, Diaz Masvidal. Okay, if those yeah. materialize, if those ever materialize, I'd be I'd 100 be down. But those are the only fights, really the only fight fights. Yeah, that, yeah. And it's not because yeah, you have like some sort of personal issue with them. It's just because they become huge stars since. Yeah, they've become huge stars since, and. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like they would accept the fight because we've sort of come from the era of those type of fighters, and that they kind of see like, yeah, man, Paul's Paul was around when we were around. He's, he's a real he's a real fighter. You know, he's a real dog. He hasn't got the shine. Let me let me give him a little shine. You know, yeah. um, I feel that they're, they're, they're that type of character. Real, recognized, real is what we say. Yep, but yep. I don't know if they're t- they're tied into any promotions, and that would happen, but. You know, if the opportunity comes up, I'd take those fights. Did you see Nick uh, when he returned in September? And if so, what did you think of him? I seen, uh, I did see it. I thought he looked to, to you know, he, look, he didn't look great, but I don't know how serious he really took it. Right. I don't know if he just took it for the, for the check, but you could see he was still there yeah. somewhere. But I just don't think he prepared, prepared well enough for the fight. Um, it, was there always in your mind this idea like you don't want to be one of those guys who sticks around too long? Was this something, is that why you're sticking? 100%. Yeah? 100%. Okay. Yeah, 
I don't, I don't want to become like a gatekeeper. I've seen too many fighters hang around and, and get beat up and knocked out. And I'm like, why? Like, you know, I said about us not getting paid much, but we get paid more than, a, you know, nurses and doctors and, and I've even builders. I know builders that have retired early. You know, I, we get paid well. If we're smart, it's only greed that can keep you hanging around for longer. It's, it's only greed because I feel like if you've, you've done the right things with the, the money that you've been given, you shouldn't f- feel the need to hang around. And then someone said to me, oh, it's because of competition that they, they don't have nothing to do. I'm like, well, find yourself something to do, you know, mm-hmm. but occupy yourself in another positive way. But what I've come to realize in this sport, as, as I've grown as a fighter, is that my mental state coming to this sport is just different than a lot of people. And I kind of feel hard done by because that is a, is is part of me that people don't know about because I've always been portrayed as Semtex, the knockout artist, the brutal killer. You know, I've had, had trouble in bar fights and this and that. And But I'm very different and uh, I'm very different from public perception and I just think that's a shame as well that people did not come to understand that more. So, so how are you different? Like, who is the real Paul Daly? I'm a deep thinker, and I, I I'm just different, bro. He, he, this is one thing. When I, when I was 17, and I was uh, in college, college, I was studying studying a course of public services, and my my lecturer said to me, um, he didn't understand why I was studying public services and thought I would better be suited to go into politics. Huh. That is how, how I'm different. And he, he was a former politician himself. So, and you know, it, it, it's just, I don't know, people haven't picked up on it, but I, he says that he said I had a, a natural ability to put dots together and read between the lines. And maybe that's why I'm, I've stuck around for as long as I have, because these, I always speak the truth and, and these promotions, they, they can't really fuck with me because I'm one step ahead, you know, I'm one step ahead of them. So you're still a very young man. Uh, you're 39, yes, right? Sir. So is there a chance you go into politics now? I would like to do public speaking. I, I've said that, uh-huh. um, you know, go around to schools and, speak to people or even go around to, to martial arts gyms because that's probably a bit more bit more suited but I, it depends I'm not looking to do anything but kick back on the beach and, and okay. sit my my ties and you know let this passive income keep my life nice but um, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens but I, I can get I, I see when I because I've done talking in schools and stuff I I get a good connection with the kids, you know. They, they seem very engaged when I'm talking and I have, I have that relationship with them. And uh, I, I'm always asked to come back in and do more stuff like that. Do you, you want to be a coach though, right? You'll you'll still be at the gym. I coach already. Yeah. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in the gym now. I've just right. finished my kids' class and then I've just done the adults' kickboxing class. So I've, I've always been doing this. I've done this since... The UFC, I've always had a gym teaching and, and done things side by side. So um, I have experience in coaches and stuff like that. But e- even that, I'm looking to step a step away from. I think that, you know, I'm, I, I'm better focusing my energy elsewhere. Uh, and just a couple more things and then I'll let you go, I promise. Uh, I saw you, yes, sir. Your, your, your mom was there. How many times has she been to your yeah. fights? That was amazing. <laughs> Say it again. How many times yeah, has she, she been there? Too, she, she's been, she, when they're in London, she, she's there. Okay. And some of the smaller shows, she'll be there. But, you know, I thought she deserved to get some some of the limelight. Oh, beautiful. And, um, you know, um, although she doubted me when I started out in the sport, and again, the same in an interview, she said, you know, I said, mom, I want to be a professional ninja. She said, you never will be. She's seen me grow in this sport and she's, you know, she's always offered advice. And she's a she's a hell of a mom. Three kids at three kids at 20 years old, yeah. moving from a big city in London to a small place like Nottingham, you know, her and my dad's splitting up, raising, raising three kids by herself. You know, she's she's been through it all and she's managed, managed to produce three um brilliant, brilliant you know, uh, offspring. So 
it, she deserves to get a limelight. <laughs> she, she made the full use of it yeah, because great. I keep getting messages and if, whether they've been like from family members saying, please tell auntie never to jump up and down in a cage ever again or from from other fighters saying, oh, your mum's so cute. She brought tears to my heart. You know, it was good for her. And she's getting that getting that feedback in the local community as well that she, she deserved to get a little shine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, by the way, did you remind her of what she said on Friday all those years ago about you not being a professional on your way I, out? I, I always remind her. I always remind her. But she's proud. She's proud that I've, I've managed to to stick at the, the sport and, you know, keep going and, and make of it what I have. So she, she's proud. And last thing, you know, we were talking right before you came on. I was trying to go through, like, who are the true pioneers of UK MMA? And honestly, you're in the conversation for just pioneer, period. But, you know, obviously you've always rep- represented UK and uh, the scene yeah. over there. And I mean, like to me, I, I think you make the case. I mean, Bisping won the UFC title. Obviously, he deserves that shine. And then it's you and Dan, right? Ian Freeman's in the mix as well. Yeah. But I think you can make yeah. a very strong case for you, number two. What do you think? Uh, you know, I'm just me. I don't, I don't care about about labels and and the guys that you've you've named already. Um, will will even tell you I was there before them. So yes. um, for me, my pioneers in in UK MMA are guys like Lee Remedios, uh, Ian Freeman for sure, and Mark Weir. Those are the three that I'd put up there. And then and then came me, then Dan, then Michael Bisping, um, who all three of us happened to train together um in Nottingham for, for a short period of time. But you know, uh yeah, the three pioneers for me are Ian Freeman, Lee Ramirez, and Mark Weir. And then if I was to take any place, it would come after that. You're a very humble man. Shout out to Lee Murray as well, wherever he may be. And Lee Murray. And yeah. Lee Murray. You, you hear from him? You ever hear from him? <laughs> not not really, but we 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 have some friends that are, that are mutual, so I, I know he's doing okay. And uh, yeah, this, things are cool. Uh, Paul, honestly, it made me very emotional. It's, it's always been a pleasure yeah. to cover you. You're such a you're such a legend and you're such a great guy and you yeah. are, you are somewhat misunderstood. And so I just want to thank you for all yeah. the memories, all the interviews, yes, all sir. the time. This is not goodbye forever, but truly one of my, <laughs> you're one of my favorites dating back to those elite no. XC days back in the day. You always had time exactly, for me. So bro. much love to you, my friend and congrats on the big win and the great career. No, like I said last time, thank you. Um, you don't have to have me on the show. I appreciate when you get me on here. It's, it's great to see what you've done from where you've come. Um, where you started out, should I say, and uh, yeah, you do. You deserve everything, and, and and I really do thank you for not not forgetting me, bro. Yeah, you're the man. Never. Thank you, Paul. All the best to you. Take care. There he okay, is. Okay, brother. Paul Semtex Daily. God, love that guy. Love Paul. I'll, I'll I'll say this again. I've said it before. You know, there's those guys from 2009, 2010 that I'll always hold in a very, very, very special place in my heart. That they'll. they'll you know, the new guys will be great, and I have a lot of love for the newer guys, but the guys like Paul from the Elite XC era, the Strike Force era, you know, the 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 original sort of boom of the UFC 09 and whatnot, those guys will always really hold a special place in my heart. And and Paul really has always gone out of his way. And, you know, as he alluded to, there were some tough times, no doubt about it. UFC 124, Montreal, Josh Koscheck, but he was able to rebound from all of that. And what a career. When you actually look at the body of work, and I appreciate him saying what he said, and yes, there were, of course, people before him, like the names that he mentioned, Mark Weir, Ian Freeman, but in terms of the longevity and the impact and starting out in 03, June 29th, 2003, Extreme Brawl 3, Bracknell, England, John Connolly, he won via KO, lost his second and third fight, uh, then went on a bit of a run. But these were the promotions that he has fought for. Extreme Brawl, uh, Cage Warriors, UK MMA, UK MMA C, excuse me, uh, FX3, SF11, Rumble at the Rose Garden, Cage Rage, Genesis Fights, Pancrase, Strike Force, King of the Cage, Elite XC, MFC in Canada, Ultimate Gladiators, WFC, UFC, Impact FC, Shark Fights, Bama, Ringside MMA, 
over Montreal. I remember that one. He went back to Montreal in 2011 against Luigi Fioravante. Cage contender, Dubai Fighting Championship. Only person who was watching that was our good friend Caposa. Legend Fight Show. And then Bellator since 2015. And there were some rocky times in Bellator as well. But uh, he ends the career. And now, now I believe him. I believe him. I wasn't sure if I believed him on Friday. Wasn't even sure if I believed him when he first made the announcement. But I feel like I believe him now. Um, just an incredible run. Incredible run. And uh, really enjoyed watching him. And, and I did get a little sad. I, got, I was very emotional. And I got a little sad. I was like, wow, Paul Daly. If you can write the perfect ending for Paul Daly, for any MMA fighter. It was that. At home, knockout, beautiful stuff. Now, let's move on to our next guest. Very excited to talk to him. In fact, I've been bothering this guest. I mean, if you look at the text messages, there's replies. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like stalking him and just writing incessantly. I'm not standing him, if you will. But, you know, I've been asking for the last few months for him to come on. And for whatever reason, thank you, MMA gods, he uh, agreed to grace us with his presence here on today's program. So without further ado, let's talk to El Diamante, Dustin Poirier. Hello, Dustin. How are you? What's up, brother? It's... There are a lot of text messages on my phone, Ariel. Yes. But tell the truth. A lot, a lot of red messages that I haven't responded. You just keep bugging me, man. Wow. Okay. That's the way we're going to go with it. All that's, right. Yeah, no, no, that, that's, that's, that's not true. Uh, uh, by the way, what happened to the microphone setup? Last time you were on, you had a whole fancy setup. Where did it go? So last time when I got on your show, um, I was in Florida. So I had all my stuff set up. Uh, I'm back in Louisiana right now. It will. I, I will bless the show again with a hot mic. It's just not ready right now. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're at the new, uh, the, the new palace, right? The Diamante Palace. Casa del Diamante. Yeah, Casa that's, del that's Diamante. the one. Golly, it looks incredible. You got the fat diamond on the gate on the front. I mean, you've come a long way from the Fightville house that I saw you watching the Food Network in way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, we still got that. Me and my wife still got that house too. But uh, you still have that house? Yeah, a long way, man. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Is it who's living there? My mother lives there. Wow, that's amazing. So, how many years have you guys owned that? We bought it in two thousand nine, or two thousand. We bought it right before we got married. Okay. And she still lives and, there, uh, bro. Cra crazy! I can't believe a bank. What a what? I guess it worked out for him. But what a bunch of maniacs! They they approved me of a loan. I didn't have credit. I was renting a house. Me and my wife had a rent house. I think I was eighteen years old. But me and my wife had a rent house. And the bank, I guess, at those times, they allowed my my uh, landlord at my rent house to say, "Hey, these guys been living here a year, and they never missed a note." And the bank took that as Damn. as credit for me to yeah. <laughs> At this Crazy point, man. at this point, I feel like you can uh, buy that thing off. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just saying, I mean, what do you want? Financial advisor? <laughs> By the way, I feel like I'm talking to 2009 Dustin Poirier. Right? What happened to the hair? Why would you shave it? So I, I, I feel like a fight's coming up, and I told my wife, I said, you know what? This summer, I'm going to shave my hair when I get close to a fight. And uh, I went in the bathroom, and I have these Con Air trimmers. Yeah. And they're they're dig they have an L, like a, a LED screen that shows you the millimeters how high you you're cutting how much hair you're leaving, and uh, I started and I had it the length I wanted because I had just got a fresh fade so I was just gonna sh shorten the top and keep the side faded to the skin. I w I wasn't gonna go this low so it was good at first and then the um, hair got caught in them and I had to take the hair out to continue cutting oh. and I didn't put it back on the same oh no oh uh, yeah yeah and so then you had a huge patch. Yeah, when I just shit, it was to the skin. I mean, it was oh, I was bald there. No. Yeah, but yeah. It's, we're growing back. We're growing back. First of all, fantastic head of hair. I mean, there are no like crown situations. It's not like a DC thing where you got no. the island. No, uh, that happens when you move to California. And Louisiana is pretty good, <laughs> but here I have, uh, I have a, you know, the corners I wouldn't say are as prime as they used to be. Yeah, just like some air vents, you know, to keep to keep me cool when I'm getting overheated. But yeah. it's good. Um, and, and a few days ago, solid, you looked like, you know, legit 2000, I don't know, 2010, 2009, Dustin Poirier, just a few days ago. when I saw on your Instagram, like when it was super, super short. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be that short. You know, I, I would say about probably about a week and a half, two weeks from right now. That's how short I had it before I gapped it and had to go to the skin. All right. So this is exciting. Um, I'm very frustrated and I can't imagine how you're feeling. I still, till this moment that we're sitting here right now, 
I don't understand why you versus Nathan Diaz hasn't been made. He's healthy. You're healthy. I mean, I feel like you've been talking about it since January. What's the problem? Yeah. And and then, dude, this uh, reality show of an MMA community that we have, everybody's throwing shit at me anytime I say, what's up, Nate? Bro, this fight has been offered to me twice already this year, and I've accepted both times. It's not like I'm chasing this guy. Don't call my phone and ask me to fight the guy. I don't know. Maybe he can't get a deal done. On my side, I've accepted twice now this year. To 2022. So what's the problem? Why isn't it happening? I'm not sure. I'm not doing his deals. I'm not, or I don't know what's going on with him. You know? So I, I really wish I could tell you. Is it, is it like one of those things where it's contingent on him signing? Cause obviously you know what's going on with him, right? He's got one fight left. Well, I, I know, I know, I know as much as everyone else knows, right? Yeah. Everyone, I know yeah. he has one fight left. Uh, they offered him Chamayev, but then, uh, or that, that's what was on the board when that came out a couple weeks ago. I don't know. I know as much as, as the everybody else in the MMA world knows, but I know for sure that I was offered him twice. I said yes both times. And one was a couple weeks after I just lost a title fight to Charles Oliveira, you know, like maybe the week after. Wow. He called me. Yeah. Like, and was that for the January card in Anaheim? Because it was at that point like some talk of maybe he'll be put on that card. Was it for that one? That was um, whatever pay-per-view was. I think it was, I mean, it had to be the next pay-per-view yeah. after my fight with Charles. Yeah. And, and you were down. Yes. Were you banged up? No. So my, what the my, hell? my pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like health wise, physically, you were okay. Yeah, injury free. So, so is there any sort of follow up? Like, hey guys, I've accepted this fight twice, and I see him on Twitter, and I see like, what's going on? Why aren't we making this fight? I don't know, but apparently there was some some want there, or the UFC wouldn't have called me those those times they did, you know. I, I don't know. I feel like you guys aren't getting the full story. Nate's playing about the one in 2018. I've been offered this fight three times and it has been accepted three times. Wow. When was Twice it? this year. Yeah, and when was the, the other time? When was the third time? Are you talking about the 2018 or in addition to the 2018? Yeah, I'm talking about, okay. I'm talking about MSG. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, that was UFC 230, if I recall. And, and to clear the air about 170, like, I can make 55. No problem. If I have eight weeks to a camp, I can make 55. But these guys are... are offering me fights at the end of the year, you know, I want to fight now. So I say, if I fight 170, that doubles the, the chances of me getting a fight right now. I want to fight this summer. You know, I have a daughter who's out of school. I can do a training camp, fight July 30th. Dallas is close to Louisiana, close to, not too far from Florida. It just makes sense for me Yeah. on my timeline. You know, I don't want to wait till the end of the year and fight at 155. I'll fight July at 155, but if they can't find somebody, then I'll fight at 170. So that, that's, that's, Another reason, like Nate, makes sense. Let's fight. He's trying to get out of his contract. We'll get a damn deal done, and let's fight at one seventy. I'll go up, come right back down. Uh, by the way, like right now, how much do you weigh? Like how big of a jump is one? I, I didn't weigh myself this today, but if I yeah go get on the scale right now with you, I would probably think like eighty three, maybe eighty two, okay. hopefully eighty two. But yeah, and I mean, he's fought at fifty five. That's it's- about my average. My average morning day weight, you know? Right. Can I tell you my, my read on the situation? I feel like if he doesn't resign, they want to give him to Shemaev. And if he does resign, they'll make the fight with you. That's how I, I, I read the situation. Dude, I just, what I feel in my heart is the guy's not going to resign. Right. You know, that's what I feel like. He would have, they've been going at this for a while, it seems. And I know he wants to fight. So, well, then I guess he's going to, you know, why, he's going to fight Shemaev, I guess. Well, don't you feel like you're being jerked around a little bit? I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, well, they, they jerked me around with the original 2018 thing. I feel like UFC should have cleared the air because Nate backed out of that fight. You know, they were offering me other fights and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get my hip taken care of. If it's not Nate in three weeks or whatever it was from the fight date, I said, I'm not, I'm not fighting. And, uh, then he said, I, I'm the one who backed out and all this, but yeah, I, I don't know what's going on as of right now with this current contract with Chimea, but. I said yes to them twice this year, and I'm saying yes right now to you and the world. I'll fight you. Let's go. Yeah. You know, I can make weight next week. Honestly, I feel like you and him have been saying yes for the past six months. Like, I feel like every few days, it's like, dun, 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 dun. But then I saw a tweet from you. You said July 30th, 170, let's go, right? Like, you put out this open invitation. Now, can I be honest with you about something? You, I, I, Everything I could kind of sort of, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. You, you kind of threw me a curveball on one of these. You threw me a curveball. I wasn't expecting. It. I had to double check if it was the check mark Dustin Poirier that tweeted it. You 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 tweeted right, to right, Colby right. Covington. That surprised. That really surprised well, me. Why? I'm and look, 
I don't hate anyone, Ariel. But if there was a line right before hate, Kobe standing there. And uh, I really dislike the guy. And I, uh, I've been saying, and I don't want him to make a dollar for fighting me. But if they're offered, because they, they offered me him last week. That's why. Oh. Yeah. So whatever. I tweeted that out Saturday. Yeah. Um, or Friday. They offered me him uh, Tuesday or Wednesday that week. Okay. It was either wait to the end of the year and fight, you know, for a number one contender at lightweight or fight July against him. And that was the name that they gave me. So I'm like, fuck it. That, that's not a call out of him. I'm not going out of my way. I don't want to fight the guy. I don't want him profiting anything off of me. But if they're not going to give me a fight until the end of the year and this is what you're giving me, I got to fight. I got to do what I got to do. I don't want to sit in a holding pattern for, you know, I fought in December. I don't want to sit in a holding pattern for 10, 11 months. Mm -hmm. I'm healthy and I want to fight. So last week when they offered you him, did you accept? No, I, I, I didn't accept either fight. Oh, but the tweet. I didn't say no to either fight. I just right. said I'll get back to you. Yeah. Got it. And so the tweet, is that a indication that you are willing to take this fight? Yeah, yeah I'll fight him. If they, dude, I want to fight and I don't care. Um, I don't want the guy making money, but if they're not offering me other names, what do I do? Wait mm -hmm. to the end of the year, you know? You know, I remember one time a few years ago, I asked you one question about him and you kind of got mad at me. And I was like, I'm never going to ask you about him ever again, because obviously, and I wasn't planning on asking you about him when we agreed to do this, but then you tweeted that thing. So I was like, well, now I have to ask I know, you. And, and like, I'm kind of pissed off with myself for, for saying I would do it, you know? Not that I'm worried about the guy or his skill set or, or anything like that. It's just I don't want the fucking guy to prosper because I said yes to a fight with him. You know, I don't want that. I don't want him to make a dollar off of, off of anything that I've done or off of fighting me, period. But you get a glass of whiskey and you, they call you a couple of days before shit happens and then you fight. Right. So fuck it. It's the, at least it ain't a fight. If it does happen, it's not a fight I'm going to take any damage in, you know, this fucking guy. Why do you hate him so much? As a, he's a he's everything I dislike about mixed martial arts. You know, he's a he's a cartoon character. Everything he does is for an extra click view. None of it's authentic. Um, he can wrestle. He's tough. I've been around him for years. I know him um, from being around in the gym with him. You know, since 2012, 2013 ish. But he's just a fake, a phony. You know. When you guys were at ATT, were you cool? Before all the changes, we hung out. We hung out one time mm. outside of the gym. And I believe it was like a Robbie Lawler fight or something. He came over to my house. I bought the pay-per-view. We watched it. I had a couple people there. But that's the only time I've ever hung out with the guy outside of the gym walls. I have to say, uh, I got a lot of heat for this. And maybe, you know, eh, you know, you're a father. I'm a father. Daughter, daughter. I don't know. I really did not like when he brought your family into the post-fight interview. That really bothered me against he Masvidal. And so I just wanted to know how I you think, felt when you heard that. I mean, it's, it's messed up. You don't talk about people's family, but it, then again, I know it's all an act and a character, but there are lines that are being crossed. You know, I, I think these guys do that same thing with Connor, like talking about my wife, they know they, these guys know. And I'll tell you, I don't give a fuck about this stuff that much no more. I've said it after I knocked Connor's ass out in Dubai, I told Daniel through the cage, you know, I don't really care about this stuff no more. So they're trying to attach things that, that they know I do care about, which is my family, my daughter. Uh, more, more so. I care about them. Than, yeah. I will never put a pair of gloves on again if it has anything to do with them. You know, I, I, I love them uh, with all of my heart. Like I text you whenever I was on vacation and, and that stuff was happening with him. I told you, dude, I, I don't really play around with this stuff like that. I think they're trying to attach onto things that they know that I actually do love and would die for, and uh, trying to pull up those strings. That's what's happening. Is there any concern that if you did agree to this fight and it was made that this becomes now a thing, right? Like it will now become part of the storyline and it goes down yeah, this path. Yeah, and that's, that's what uh, Mike Brown called me the next day and said that, you know, DP, if you take that fight, you know, it's going to be two months of that, of, you know, them talking about your family and making this stuff up. I don't know if you want to put your family, wife and daughter through that, but I've already, you know, I already hit pool, you know, on the, on the, the tweet, you know, I can't, and Kobe knows. Kobe knows what's up. He knows what's happening in the gym. You know, I'm not a I'm not a, a scrap and tell kind of guy. I, I don't say what happened, but he knows what what's happened those years in the gym. And uh, at the same time, I do. I know he's taken me down and ridden me out rounds, but he's also know known a couple of times what happened to him. And uh, it is what it is, man. I, I don't want my family to go through that, but also I want to fight, man. Give me a fight then. Mm. 
And is there any part of you, or maybe Mike, who thinks that uh, it might be too personal? Like, you'll, you know, when you fight emotionally, when there's family involved, then you start to fight a different kind of fight. Is there a concern there? Uh, I don't know. We're not that far into, yeah. into it yet. You know, um, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully the UFC calls and says, we got Nate under control. Let's do it. That'd be that. Hopefully that happens. And then we can just have a real fighters fight. None of this showman shit, bullshit that that's lies and for clicks and views. And, you know, ah, it's, I, I don't have to hold my tongue anymore, Ariel, cause I really don't care. So I can speak to you. Like I would speak to you on the phone. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know people are watching. I don't care. You know? Uh, I, and I appreciate that. So it, just to be clear, number one choice would be Nate. Like if you, if they called you up right now and like, all right, Dustin, what do you want? We'll do any fight. Is it Nate? Number one. It, it would be the, to get to the closer to a title shot at 155. If it was an option, you could be a number one contender fight at 155. I would probably take that, you know, I would probably take that depending on the timeline. I don't want to do it at the end of the year. If they offer me Nate, I would, I would for sure take Nate. Can I ask about that one? What I mean, you told us about Colby. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you about that one. What, what are the details? I don't want to say one? that. I, okay. I don't want to release the information on that one, but I was, I was offered a number one contender fight at 155, but I don't want to wait that long. I get it. So I don't and, even know why I would I would have to wait that long. Right. Um, by the way, what did you think of the uh, the title fight with uh, Oliveira just a couple of weeks ago? I bet on Oliveira. <laughs> wow, really? Big, big, I thought he was, was going to win. Big money? I mean, nothing crazy, but I yeah. made some money on him. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's fair? That I bet he... on Chandler too. I don't have I don't have any hate on these guys. Like I said, bro, I bet on Chandler too. I parlayed them, bet them straight up each. Everything did it all. Uh, do you, Do you think he should be uh, stripped? Do you think he should be, you know, viewed as the non-champ at this point because of the point five? Man, I I don't know, bro. That's tough. That's a tough line to 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 call. But the thing for me is the uh, you know, like defending it that belt that doesn't count as a defense now, you know, that's part of his legacy. Yeah. He's beaten the best guys out, you know, every time. And, and now he can't say he beat Gaethje in his hometown in a title defense. Cause it's on papers. I, we all know, we all know, you know, uh, the real fans know, just like we all know that Eve Edwards was a lightweight champion right. back in the day when he knocked out Josh Thompson. I know that. Right. The casuals might not, but, uh, oh, that was a defense for Charles for sure. Um, you mentioned, uh, Michael Chandler. I don't know if you know this, but he was on my show last week. Um, and I asked him about you. Did you, did you see his comments? Yeah. Uh, can I play them for the audience just to remind them? I mean, you can, this is, Hey, this is your show. All right. I'm going to play the comments and then I'd love to get your response because, uh, I wasn't expecting him to go in this direction and, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. So this is Michael Chandler last week on the program. I have no interest in fighting Dustin, honestly. Um, How come? I got, I got asked the other day who, uh, you know, who, who, who do they see being a champion if it wasn't me or wasn't, I mean, and I completely forgot about him. I, I, I uh, you know, to be quite honest, man, I, I think he's a great dude. I think uh, I like him for the sport, but I also think I was completely disregarded and pushed aside whenever I came into the organization. He completely disregarded me, completely, you know, acted as though I, I didn't, uh, didn't deserve to be where I was. And so maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a little bit more of a personal issue, but I also don't think Dustin is Dustin a draw, you know, I mean, I guess he is the number two guy, the rank rank number two now. Um, but he's kind of just stayed at number two and he's, you know, I don't know how active he's going to be. Um, but I did see that he, he tweeted that I was saying everybody else's name, but his, as if I was, you know, maybe didn't want to fight him because of, you know, technical reasons or whatnot, but that was more just, I, I forgot about him, um, to be honest with you. What do you, what do you make of those comments? Said a lot there. Yeah. I mean, if you really, that's the, just like when he grabbed the mic after he won, if you really believe that these guys, the stuff they're saying is real, you're out of your mind. You think the guy forgot about me? The, the, the route to the title shot, you know, Charles isn't still number one. I mean, the champion, I'm number one, you know? Um, yeah, you think, and who's a draw, bro? I'm not here. I'm not that guy. I like to point out and pick on people and do this and stuff like that. But if we go to the numbers, which don't lie, you were supporting cast in the last pay-per-view that you fought on with two title fights and me and Charles were the one title. You know, wow. We had two title fights. Never mind. But look at the, look at the numbers. Hmm. What do we sell? Six something. What they sell over 400. 
I mean, who's a draw? I don't know. I don't play that shit because I don't really care. But don't say stuff that you can find out the, you know, the numbers and, and see who's watching more. He said that when he first came in, you disregarded him. Is that accurate? For sure, yeah. We fought on the. He came in, fought. A, he's never beat anybody coming off of a win in the UFC, Ariel. He's been dropped in in his last three fights. He's never beat somebody coming off of a win. You know what is Dan Hooker's last five fights, and what is T Tony Ferguson's last five fights? The two guys he beat in the UFC. What are, what are their records in in their last fights? Mm. You know, uh, and I'm not talking trash. I'm I'm stating facts. It's whatever, bro. I don't care. I'll fight him too. Well, whatever. I don't care anymore. Just book book me something. Uh, I'll say to you what I said to him afterwards. Like, I kind of now want to really see that fight. Like, but, but you, the, you know, his comments, you're, I really actually want to see that fight now. Is that, is that bad? No, it's fighting. Would you want to see that fight? Would you want to have that fight? Somebody's going to get sparked out for sure. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, were you impressed? He was upset. Yeah. He was upset because somebody asked me something about him on online. And I said, Michael Chindler. Mm. And then he got upset. And, and but boy, his uh, he did his due diligence on his on his return fire because, man, that was good. That was good. Well, he brought up Michael Johnson, right? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> you, I mean, what do you what do you think when you see that? He's, he's referring to the, the fight that you guys had many moons ago now. I can't even remember. 2017, I think it was. That's the only thing that's real is the, is right. the, is the damn results, Ariel. Or right. what, what can I say? I know I got clipped. The guy beat me. He's, he's not lying. What Michael uh, tweeted out wasn't a lie. Uh, I noticed that you're, you're very good. Hey, on... I, I can take it. I can take it because I dish it out, Ariel. Right. So, yeah. you know, I can take it because I dish it out. Why do you always retweet the haters, though? I don't know. I don't know. You're very. Why do you always read the retweets. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I mean, they're on my timeline. I mean, you're you're actually yeah, very, same shit. It's fun. You're, it's you're, on my timeline. You're a very underrated tweeter. You're you're self deprecating. Uh, you retweet the hate, so we get a, a window into that world. But I would imagine if I'm a hardcore Poirier fan and I'm like, yo, man, I love you, it'd be like, yo, retweet me instead. And I do sometimes, you know, I do, or I'll directly reply to those guys when I see it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so easy because my timeline's full of hate, you know. Me and my wife were just talking about that after Friday. She was like, you know, let's stay off of social media. Like I do for training camps, like the last four or five weeks, I kind of let my team post. I have a social media team. I approve the stuff they posted just so I'm not on it reading all the stuff because I get too in, into it, you know. Like if I'm on it a few days in a row, a lot reading it, then, I'll, then I'm really like, but if I leave it all on for a couple of days and I'm good. Okay. You know? Yeah. I'm good. I don't, I don't need to go in there and, and see the stuff. Um, so right now you'd be open to Chandler. You'd be open to uh, Dustin. You'd be even open. The Colby one really surprised me. I'm not going to lie about that. Do you think any of these actually happen? I am, I am Dustin. I am Dustin now, but yeah. Wait, I think did I say Dustin? Possibly. Wait, what did I say? What did I say? I said Dustin. It's all good, Schmo. I'm going to keep doing this interview with you. <laughs> no, I said, okay, well, sorry. Let me do it again. You open to Chandler, open to Colby, open to Nathan, excuse me. Uh, I get very flustered because I'm not sure if you're going to get mad at me or whatnot. Uh, Look, that list you just named? Yeah. Take a handful of other names and throw them. I'm open to all that. Let's go. I want to fight. Wonder Boy 2 jumped in there. I'll fight anybody, dude. I'll fight you right now. That would be, Let's by, go. By the way, I think that would do that would do bigger numbers right, than the four hundred. Okay. I'm just saying. Hey, who's the draw now? Who's yeah. the draw now? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. You, were, um, what's his name? Uh, Sean Brady got in the mix over there. I mean, everyone was jumping in there. Yeah, I just have fun with that stuff too. But I mean, everybody is potentially a target. Anybody who fights in the UFC is a, and can make the weights that I'm gonna fight at is a target. So, but I have fun with that stuff. Like with the Sean Brady stuff. Like I'll fight you too. Yeah, yeah it's all it's all whatever. We'll see what the UFC wants to do. Give me a list of names and let's fight, man. Uh, how confident are you, not about the opponent, but just the date? Nate, Nate, dude, get Nate's shit together. Let him fight it out or do whatever you got to do, Nate, on the business side. You know, let's go. I wish I that's could call That's a fun fight for me. I wish I, I could call I'll, Nate right you know, now. I, that's a fun fight for me. I'm, I, like I said, and I guess a lot of people say the same shit with that. It's like I've been watching the guy fight. I was living at my mom's house. He was fighting on spike tv and and stuff like that i've been a fan of him, him and his brother for a long time but if he leaves the ufc and i never get to touch that chin that's a that sucks man that would be a shame did you see what he did last week uh he was uh, urinating outside the pi 
I did. I did. I went up them. When I get out there, you'll see what happens. <laughs> right. well, are you mad? You're not mad though at them. I mean, I feel like they, they, other than all this, you know, mad at at the UFC. Yeah. No, they dude, I, they've been great to me, man. Right. Of course, I've, of course, I've had to blaze my own path to get to where I'm at right now. But but we've we've always worked it out and everything's been great, you know, besides them offering me a, a lightweight fight at the end of the year or a, or a welterweight fight in July, you know, against a guy I don't I don't really want to fight and give him any uh, platform. But so is it like if I'm sitting at home right now watching this and the UFC is one of those people watching this? Is it possible to be like, wow, Dustin Poirier is going to fight Colby Covington July 30th. If they offered you the fight and now you say that you want it, what is going to stop them from making this fight at this point? Who cares? Let's go. What, what, is, what is the question? No, I mean, the question is, I feel like we have a fight. They offered you something. You say now you'll take it. He already called you out. I feel like there's no roadblocks that you'll be fighting July 30th against Colby Covington. Why wouldn't it happen at this point? Let's find. I don't know. This is crazy. I don't know. I, I never in a million years would have predicted that you'd fight Colby Covington. That you would even agree. And to I fight don't, him. dude. I was the one telling. I was the one telling people they can offer me ten million dollars. Yes. fighting the guy. You know, but I want to fight. Man, and that's what. Like, did you see what happened with Masvidal? Obviously, you did. You saw the aftermath, right? Yeah. How did you feel about that, dude? Trust me, I don't want to give the guy. Yeah. If there's another name that they offer me in that time zone, the time frame, I'll pick the other name. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fight this guy. I don't want to give him any platform. It's horrible, you know? Mm. You know, Masvidal really does what what he's acting like he is, you know, tough guy. And then now now all this other stuff happens, which I can't speak about because I, you know, don't know intelligently enough about the situation, exactly what happened and what they're going through. So it is what it is, but uh uh, is there any, just curious? Is there any name at fifty five that we haven't mentioned that you'd be interested in? I mean, it seems like Charles will fight Islam. You're there. Um, I'll fight Chandler. I'll fight Gaethje. I'll f- if Tony wins a fight and comes back down to fifty five, I'll fight t- Tony. Whoever's in the line, dude, I'll fight anybody, anyone. Yeah, I'll fight. And and uh, anyone be- that makes sense. Anyone sure. that makes anyone that makes sense, right? Uh, it, not coming back anytime soon, but does Connor still make sense? Like there was some talk of the fourth fight back in July of last year, like, oh, they'll do it one more time. Or do you think that ship has sailed? I have to say, you know, you never know. I know. I don't know. I'll fight him at 55 or 70 though. If he does come back and want to fight. Yeah. He's a, he's in it too. H- have they ever said to you or your team that that's one that they'd like to do in the, in the future? Never, never, never. Mm. Well, do you think we covered it all here? I mean, I feel like this was a little bit of a state of the union address, you know, an update, if you will. Ah, it's just, a, it's just, it's just a went air it out, you know, yeah. tell the people how I'm really tell you how I'm really feeling, not not by my tongue, not play character, not be a fake phony like the rest of these frauds. So, if there's anything else you need to know, far away because I'm I'm not by my tongue. Uh, did you feel? Uh, would, would it be fair to say that you are uh, frustrated at the moment? Would that be a fair assessment of your mood when it comes to your career, the the fighting, not not not. Not so, I mean, uh, frustrated with myself, you know, like my last performance, I'm so much better than that. That's not, that's not, I have so much more to give. I know, oh, dude, that's, that's fighting. You know, I wish there's a lot of things, uh, in fights. I wish I could change and do differently and approach differently, but no, not, not so much frustrated with that. I can stomach and digest everything that I've done in my fighting career. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any, you know, of course I wish I would have fought smarter sometimes and done things a little bit differently, but like the past of the past, you know, I just, every time I get out of the octagon, I wish, I, I hope win, lose a draw that I'm just happy with my performance. If the guy's better than me, then he's better than me, but, but I just want to be happy with myself, you know? So yeah. I'm not frustrated with, with anything like that. I, I can, I can do anything I want. I can get back to the grindstone and work myself back up to any position I want to be in. You know, I just, I just want to be busy right now. Uh, have you allowed yourself to watch that fight against Oliveira again? Yeah. A lot? Once? Yeah. One night I watched it maybe five times in a row. One night I went deep deep on it. But since since the fight, it's only really been one night that I really dove into it. Why five times in a row? Because everybody was asleep. I was here in my office and I was quiet. And I just wanted to 
it wasn't that long of a fight, you know, right. so I wanted to but like, relive a couple of rounds. What are you looking at when you're watching it over and over again? Times I could have went in and, and um, done just all the things differently I could have done. Um, different stuff that he was doing in the clinch. I was watching, I was impressed with a lot of stuff that he did. That made me confident in, in his fight with Justin. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I was sure that if Justin tried to fight him at like a, a boxing, kickboxing range, uh, that Charles wasn't going to allow it. I knew he was going to step in, clinch, throw knees, and make it make it dirty in there, you know, not let him really throw punches from the outside. Uh, that's what I thought, but then Charles went out there and dropped him with a, with a two, you know, from 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 open. So, But it just gave me more confidence in Charles watching that fight over and over again. All this damage that he's taking is going to catch up to him, right? Yeah, it, but how much damage is he really taking? You know, I mean, he's, he's going down, but it's not like violently going down. He might just be getting hit and laying on his back. You know, it, it's not like he's getting dropped where his head's bouncing around and he's barely hanging on to life for the most part. You know, even when, when Chandler dropped him, he had the, uh, the whereabouts to kind of keep his head moving. So he would get hit with those big hooks when Chandler was on top of him. Right. You know, if you're really, really hurt and rattled, you don't have the senses to do that type of thing. You get finished mostly, most of the time, you know? Right. So I, I don't know. It's tough to say how, how damaged he's really getting. Uh, do you think he beats Islam? Man, I, I I think he beats Islam on the feet. I, I don't know about Islam's uh, jiu-jitsu. Right. That would be an interesting one. Well, you know, I have to say, it's great to talk to you. By the way, I did a cooking uh, segment with Alex Volkanovsky, and I put over the hot sauce in the segment. I told him about the KO edition and then he got, did you see that and send him the KO? Cause then I saw yeah, yeah. he had the KO. Yeah, yeah. You saw that? Yeah. We, yeah. I reposted it. We were talking the other day through uh, IG. He was telling me he actually enjoys it, but dude, that sounds hot, man. It's that one. Stuff right there. That one is intense and he was sweating. I saw his head. He was sweating and all that. How is it doing? Are, are, do we have any other plans to expand it? How, how's the business doing? We're doing great, man. Doing great. I think we're going to do one more, one more sauce. It's going to be a maple. Ooh. spicy maple sauce and that's it man you know a three pack keep it at three skews and 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 we'll see what happens in the Poirier line down the road but three hot sauces three different you know heat uh levels three different flavors i think it's perfect amount would this be a super spicy one a mild one where, where would you put it on the this will be somewhere in between the the the, the og and okay. the ko mm -hmm. it'll be sweet so that'll take off a little bit of the heat but on the yeah. scoville scale it might be a little bit hotter than the og but you won't you know it's not going to burn you up it'll be good Perfect for chicken and waffles or oh yeah, I like eggs it with and eggs, toast eggs, and biscuits yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. You were kind enough to send me some. I still uh, till this day use it. I tell you all the time. It's fantastic. Highly, 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 highly Let recommend. Let me know when you low. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So thank you for the time. Great to catch up with you. Congrats on the new house. It's great to see you thriving, happy. Uh, you and your family, and uh, I hope we get to see you in Dallas. Why not? Why the hell not? I, I still like for, this is one of the most confusing situations that we've ever seen. Two healthy stars want to fight each other, and they're not making the fight. This makes no sense to me. That's and, the one. That's what's going to happen. I'm putting it out there right now. Oh. Me and Nate Diaz are fighting in Dallas at 170. Boom, done. R Circle your calendars. Saturday, July 30th, Dallas, Texas. Frank, can we get some breaking news music? The Grassy Knoll. Grassy Knoll. That's the breaking news music. We just heard it. July nice. 30th. We're putting it into existence. We're putting it out there into the ether. Uh, good luck to you, Dustin. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Because it's going to be another six months of me bothering you uh, to come on. So this is my last chance. Uh, yeah, my hair is growing back. All That's the people good. who are worried about it. It is. It's growing back. Um, stay hydrated. Be good to yourself. Smile more. Have a great day. Amen. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it, my man. There he is, El right Diamante, up. the man. Get him a fight, July 30th. I have to say I was very surprised. I was extremely surprised when I saw that uh, he was down to fight Colby. I, I've asked him one time about Colby, <clears throat> and he got a little mad at me. And so you know what? I said, uh, I'm not going to ask him about Colby anymore. And even before our, our, you know, little chat here, and I've asked him to come on a bunch. I was like, all right, I'm not going to ask him about Colby. I mean, I thought the Colby thing was a little much. Uh, I've said that. And I, it, Colby's a fantastic fighter. Please don't get it twisted. He's a fantastic fighter. Incredible fighter. One of the best. Honestly, I would put him in my pound for pound. 
But I just, I don't love the family stuff. I don't love kids, wives. I don't, I don't love any of that stuff. Like, let me be clear. I don't like when people talk about, sometimes I just go, you know, shorthand here and then people cut it up. I don't like it. It's too personal. Just stay away from all of it. Um, and then he, now he said he's down. So golly, let's see how it all plays out. All right. A lot of you are very excited about our next guest. I'm very excited to talk about our next guest or talk to our next guest, I should say. Uh, he just fought a couple of weeks ago. He's one of the biggest stars in the UFC. It's been a while since we did one of these. It's been a while since we had the pleasure of doing a live interview with El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. Without further ado, let us go to Tony Ferguson, who's joining us via the phone. Old school, Tony. How are you, Tony? What's up, Greg? <laughs> Good to hear from you, my friend. You know what I love about you, Tony? You're the last guy left on the planet who won't do Zoom. You just won't do it. No, nah, man, it's the same thing with Joe Rogan interview. I just won't do it. Why not? That's because I know my value, bro. Somebody's going to have to pay me for that shit. Respect. Wait, that's about the Zoom or about the Joe Rogan interview? About any of my video for conferences or anything like that. I have to just know my value to earn that shit. So if I like somebody enough to be able to do that, I will. You know what I mean? So what I should do is just have you guys come over to the academy and then you guys can film me uh, working out. You know what I mean? And then we can ask some questions afterwards like a conference. Well, for now, we'll, we'll take this gladly. Thank you for doing it. I appreciate it. Uh, could I ask you off the bat, Tony? I'm just joking with, I'm just, I'm just joking with you, Ariel. I'm just messing with you, man. That's all, you know what I mean? Eventually, what we'll do is we'll do a FaceTime, bro. Don't even trip. Uh, it's all good. Listen, I'll take what I can get. I'm very happy to do it this way. Um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? It's been a little over a week physically. How are you feeling after that fight? It feels amazing, man. Um, you know, aside from uh, getting knocked out and adding that to the resume, I feel actually not too bad. I'm going to be real. I've done a couple of interviews. Uh, the headaches have gone away. Kind of starting to remember how the round went and then just kind of remembering what I was going for. And I went back and I watched film. And uh, I really have to give myself some props out from the first round. And then, you know, going back to the second round, I don't know what the fuck was going on. by my language. No, it's all right. I feel pretty good, man. I feel really good. I'm, I'm back to eating really, really good. Uh, you know, I had a, a T-bone steak and eggs this morning, and then I went for a run before, you know, for anything and brought my dog with me. And I feel really good, man. I'm still fast. I shadow box. It's still there. Uh, I'm not letting any of this go to waste, man. I, I have to do that because after hearing Dana in the first round saying how good I look, uh, it was actually a really good motivator to actually get back in there and then fight some more. So Yeah, you look great. Um, have you watched the fight? Yes. It took me some time to watch the fight, but I watched the highlights first. I uh, watched the highlight talks. I obviously post everybody posted that shit, even my sponsors, which are fucking crazy. You know, so fuck you guys. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to be real, man. I have no problem, you know, being real anymore. You know, the most realest thing was to be able to, you know, like I said, part of my language, I'm really trying to stop that. No, no, it's all good. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's different for, for everybody. The casuals that have never been in their north, you know, they don't know victory or defeat, and they don't know how to get the championship level or to bounce back from constellation rounds. Uh, you know, sticking with the point, uh, there's a lot of mistakes that I can fix. And uh, I said in my last interview, if, if I didn't feel that I had the energy or the will or the want to be able to do it, I would have retired the first round. But I felt really good. I felt really comfortable. My team was really good going up and leading up to the fight. We had a routine, which is really good. We had to fix some things in the back, obviously, that, uh, you know, you know, some words of, of wisdom that, you know, going out there, you know, some things could be omitted and some things could be said. But going into the fight, I was really confident. Um, I even found myself at a boxing gym, I think on a Wednesday, and uh, I hit every single bag in there. They had like almost 20, 20, 20 bags in there, I believe. It was crazy. But they've been there for like 55 years, and I can feel that aura. And it was just being around a gym and being around like that, that fighter-esque type of mentality. And I brought that in with me in the cage. And Chandler didn't have an answer too much for anything that I was throwing in that first round, man. So I'm going to be real with you. I'm, I'm hungry again. And I, I'm taking it slow. I got a 60-day Mando vacation, which is pretty cool. And uh, we're going to take it, take, it, take it from there, man. Not take it easy, that's for sure. Because I'm not going to let, like I said, you know, uh, I've got plenty to work on, which is right now I'm going to work on my physique. I'm going to work on my bodybuilding skills and I make sure that I feel good about how I look and then how I feel strong wise. Mentally, I'm there and physically, I'm there. But more than anything else, is putting everything together like a paper, right? Because if you have too many, too many main ideas, you're not going to know what your title is. And so that's where I'm at right now. And and so it, it sounds like you're in a good spot. It sounds like mentally you're, you're, you're feeling good about things. Uh, because you looked so good in the first round, 
And because it ended, you know, in the way in which it did, I would think that maybe you'd be a bitter pill to swallow. Like you're like, man, I had this guy. I was looking good. I was, I was, I was touching him up. Yet for me, my takeaway is correct me if I'm wrong. It's like, you don't have any sort of regrets about the fight. You don't feel a sort of negative way about the fight. Is that, is that accurate? Absolutely. I don't have any regret on the fight. I mean, the only thing that, you know, I would have done is a little bit more publicity in there, you know, be more, I mean, I couldn't have been the things that nobody sees is how I, how I act with my fans. You know what I mean? Like when we're outside the hotel and everybody's waiting for it to get, you know, for science stuff or to take pictures after every single meeting that I had, I, I let my crew know. I said, Hey, let's go for a walk. And what we would do is we would go around the stadium because we were fortunate that it was really close and I'm walking and I would see a lot of the homeless people and I would see a lot of like, you know, people that weren't homeless and I would see just people interacting, fans wanting to take pictures, shouting from the cars, Tony! And it was the coolest thing, man. You know, I'll go back to how Rock, the Rock, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson, how he posted some video where he would just randomly post up to a, to a, a van full of like fans and he was like, hey, do you know where this and this is at? And everybody would be like, oh shit, it's the Rock. Mm-hmm. And having people and having people like that, it was kind of really cool to be able to see that, like how people at such a high caliber level were still acting normal, still doing it for the fans. And I do that already. You know, I mean, there's something, you know, you're not supposed to tell everybody, you know, when you do a good deed. Um, but it was the night of the weigh-ins. Uh, and during the week, I saw this one guy, and he was just, I don't know, he was just looking for food. It was the craziest thing. And he just looked like he just needed some help. And here I am. You know, during fight week and, you know, and the night of the weigh-ins, you know, I had my team, which I ended up making 152.5, by the way, which was crazy. The night of, night before the weigh-ins. Wow. And I'm sitting, and I'm sitting there and actually it wasn't the night of the weigh-ins. It was on a Friday night. And, uh, I told my coach, I was like, Hey coach, I was like, you remember that guy? And he said, yeah. And I was like, I want to go bring this food to him. And so like I got, uh, the UFC made some, like a food bag for me, which was really cool. I ate a little bit of it, but I also, I also kind of made a grocery run and I had some extra. So I put a lot of that stuff together and I was like, I'm going to go find this guy. I was like, hopefully, you know, he's somewhere around here. So I went and my coach was cool because I wanted to walk off some of my food and we ended up going and we found this guy, which was really cool. And, and he, and I was like, Hey, him, hey dude, I didn't really say much. I didn't go through this stuff and show him what I had. I wasn't trying to make it public. But I, bu- I put in a bunch of waters in there. Uh, it's a flavor of waters from this, uh, what was the company called? But it was cool. They were just, uh, I liked them. I mean, and there's something that I liked, so I figured that he would like it. It was called H-Factor. And I, and I put him in there, and he was like, do you have any water? Do you have anything to drink? And I was like, yeah, bro. And I was going to tell him exactly what I have, but I didn't. I said, hey, you know what? This is for you. I even put a couple pieces of candy in there. And... I, you know, the one thing that I was always thinking, especially when I was eating my food, was there's a lot of people out there that don't really have what we have or that the the, the ways to, about, to go about it, you know, and, you know, people just, you know, are, are, it's just kind of a weird thing. And so, like, that week I, I went through a lot of different kinds of, not changes, but things that I've always done before, and I, and I carried it with me. And it was kind of enlightening to have that good stuff go throughout the week you know, signing the, signing the autographs for the fans and, and taking the pictures. And it reminded me why I do the things that I do. And it wasn't for everybody else to see that because everybody, they just hear the interviews and they just hear the UFC and what they promote. And they don't see the big picture. They don't see the little things that I do that make a big difference to myself or to the person that I do that. So I, I want to be real. Like, fight week was incredible. Uh, my team was really good. We had our routine. And going into the fight, like I said, I have no regrets. The only thing that I have regret is to not be able to spend a little bit more time with my family. For one, because obviously you have to be selfish in this. And two is the victory. You know, I tip my hat off to Michael Chandler on that one. Um, you know, but I have to give myself props. In the first round, he didn't have any answer for anything that I was doing. He even wanted to take down. I mean, he had like one or two shots get in there, but he didn't like the elbows. You know, I hit, I got headbutted a couple of times, which was cool because it's a fight. That's what you do. The rest of what you had to do and. You know, I was trying to kick off the cage and everything. So he was like, get your fingers out of the cage. It's, it was a great battle between two athletes that are at the top tier of the game. Uh, there's a lot, obviously, that I can go back and I can, I can try to fix. But like I said, it's cost of Michael Chandler for using my fucking move to knock me out. You know, that shit don't happen every day. Do you remember anything about the finishing sequence? I uh, just remember 
not putting pressure and me trying to figure that out. And I have to go back to my team and ask what, you know, I have to go back into the second round and listen to the, the commentary and the audio from the, from the corner. But my wrestling coach was saying pressure. I had to talk to him and he said something about pressure. And I didn't know it was completely different. It was, God told me I wasn't ready pretty much. You know what I mean? It's It was one of those things where I have to be able to open myself up and then accept that I have to, one, continue to be coachable. Two, I have to get some sparring. I haven't sparred in over three years, Ariel. Probably a little bit more than that. Like, I'm talking about good sparring, like good team sparring. These guys are out there with, they're finding like world-class sparring. They have a team. They have all this stuff. I don't really need to have that, but I want to have that. The want and the will is there to be able to go in and get hit again, to hit people, to not feel bad about hurting people again, because that's how it sucks, man. You could ask Rose Namajunas. I guarantee you she didn't, she doesn't like hurting people. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of cra- It's kind of crazy about that because we're in the hurt game. But when you get to this high level and then you, you know, you have a soft heart for a lot of people, like how we usually do, it's hard to go in there and to make this stuff happen. But the way that you do that is you have to, you know, I talked to my, my, my old boxing coach was shy and he was saying, this is a business. This is a hurt business. You have to remember that you can't be, you can't be friends with everybody when you're going to sparring. And I remember that. Like, and, and, it, and that's what, when I first started, I was hungry. I was hungry for that. And I got that same hunger back. There's no bullshit on that one. I got the same hunger back. I want to go, I want to spar. I want to do damage again, not to hurt people, but to better myself in my sport. It's like in football. If you're not, going out and making attempting, you know, to, to cause I'm a cornerback. If I don't have my, if I have my responsibilities, I'm going to listen to the plays and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, I'm going to react on those plays. We watched plenty of film in this fight. I knew exactly that Chandler had the flexibility to go for head kicks. Like I said, we, we worked on a lot of things and we, we chopped up his legs, checked up his kicks and guarantee you, he went to the corner, said my legs hurt because obviously from the Gaethje fight, I guarantee you he still wasn't healed. And the only part that wasn't probably hurting on his foot was the bottom of it. And he remembered that those kicks hurt when I was throwing them in the first round. So, I mean, like going back into the second round, that's it's something that I have to work on, which is obviously keep up. You know, I always, I try to keep my hands up most of the time, but when I was circling away, I didn't think that he had the ability to be that, to have that reach. You know, I was looking probably for an outside sweep single, you know, trying to bait him in. So that way I can do that. But usually I would hit an Imanari roll, but I was thinking maybe possibly I could do something different. So that way, you know, like obviously it was just I can demonstrate to myself the things that I've been demonstrating inside of the practice room. But that goes into sparring. That goes with having to do and surround yourself around people doing the exact same thing. So that way you get those reactions. So instead of trying them in the octagon like, oh, hey, this is the first time I'm trying this, it's you're actually going to do that. And in the practice room, you're going to get the natural reaction that you really need. So that way when you're in the cage, you can tell whether or not you're going to do that or not and not hesitate. Which team do you want to join? Right now I'm thinking about just being a free agent. I've got, I've, I've never, you know, one of my first trainers, my training buddies, uh, when we were first starting, we really didn't have too much fun going into it. So we spent a lot of time together, which is cool. My buddy Joe, he tells me, a closed mouth don't get fed, Tony. I started thinking about that. And I always carry that with me because, you know, obviously you carry good advice. And speaking up is one of the biggest things that anybody person can do. With that and confidence. You don't build that. Unless you take chances, and you know, in order to be successful, you have to be successful, and that means having the confidence in yourself to be able to do these things. So, you know, I've asked in the last couple of interviews, and I've had I've been blessed to be able to have some people reach out to me, and uh, you know, the pit, you know, with John Hackerman, you have Brandon Gibson from uh, from over there. You have obviously I have my jujitsu team, which I always love, and then I have you know wild card boxing for my boxing. You know, and my buddy Rashad and my, my Muay Thai. I have like guys. I have like set guys. But when it goes to a team, I'm kind of thinking just like a like a free agent right now. Like that's how I'm starting to think about it, and I'm kind of making my decisions depending on on where my heart goes. And right now, it's, it's, the options keep coming in, and I'm very fortunate to be able to have that that blessing and that courage to be able to speak up and to be able to say, "Hey, guys, you know, I need help in this department." Because I've been doing it for a long time, man. I'm doing it by myself, which is really cool. And bringing in solid individuals that have left my t- my my t- my how do I say my efforts with their time and you know and their effort. And we've been really successful, man. I, I went on the 12 fight win streak, and a lot of those dudes got bloodied up. And aside from that, when the pandemic hit, and when Khabib didn't show up, and McNuggets, you know, Connor didn't want to come through, it was really hard. 
because I was preparing for these last two individuals. That was, you know, that's how it was supposed to go. That's, you know, that was how the story was supposed to be. But I ended up taking chances because I knew that, that these guys holding onto the belt and stalling, it was stalling the division. It was, they weren't doing anything. They were just using that for just whatever it was. And me, I'm a competitor. I want to be able to go out there, demonstrate what I have to do. And, you know, the last four fights I lost, I, I, I got TKO'd, but I didn't go down on the knee. You know, there's a, um, gosh, man, there's, um, there was a saying my mom or my wife said, she was, uh, there's a popular guy in Mexico that, you know, he never, he's like, I'd rather die in a worse standing than rather taking a knee. And, and, uh, gosh, I forget what the saying was, but it stuck with me. And that was when a lot of people were going through like that, that the whole breathe thing when the, uh, you know, the man passed away, when the police were standing on his, on his neck. And then, you know, you had a lot of people taking knees during the national anthem. And, you know, and I felt that it hit hard. But when I was inside that cage, I, what stuck with me was when I was in high school, when I won state, this guy, I was taking a knee. I was trying to catch my breath because they had to bring in these, these, these alumni to come and train with me and to kick my ass, you know. And I was taking a knee. I remember catching my breath. And, and this guy, Wayne, he comes up to me and he says, hey, air is up. And I looked at him and I said, I didn't say anything. I just like, man, thank you. And I got my ass back up and it stuck with me since then. And I remember with the pandemic that everybody was feeling down and, you know, this is around the time where everybody's supposed to come together as brothers and to, to demonstrate how strong we are. And I remember to keep that faith. And so during that fight, that's all I could think about was what my wife had said, and, you know, um, and just, Emilio Zapata, that's who it was, for Mexico. And the idea was to not take a knee inside that octagon. And I remember just being strong as fuck, and at practice, I wouldn't take a knee. And when I would bring my students, and I would tell them the exact same thing, I, would, I wouldn't explain the whole story, but I would just say, hey, air is up. And I was passed down from my, my buddy Wayne, obviously from back home. And I brought that inside that cage with Gaethje. And even with the Olivera fight, when I lost that one, my arm got stretched out. Uh, everybody's like, you got dominated, you got dominated. No, I really didn't. You look at Dustin Poirier in that fight, he got dominated on that. That dude didn't do shit on his back. Me, I was making sweep attempts. I was going for submissions. He played heavy blanket on that one. But when he went for the arm bar, I knew that he was going to go for the arm bar. I knew he was going to go for the take on my back. And when I didn't give him the opportunity to take my back, I kept my back to the mat. That was the whole plan the whole time. I practiced zero jujitsu for that fight, Ariel. Zero jujitsu. When the pandemic thing, when we were over at the at the at the trampoline place, we got yelled at. Hey, you're gonna get, you're gonna get COVID and blah blah blah. You're gonna ruin this. Shelby would call that called us and yelled at my manager, my agent Lloyd, and they relayed the message to me. And so I told my team, I was like, hey, maybe we can get some jujitsu in. But then what they ended up because they were staring at a different hotel. They were staying at the hotel across from us. I said, yeah, we can meet up this week and we can have a cram session. But we never got to meet up and we really didn't practice jujitsu that week, which was really shitty. But I went in there with the confidence that all the stuff that we had done from the past previous camps, and I went in there with the confidence too, just knowing that I, I just had the confidence knowing that one, I was in shape, and two, I was taking a chance to help out the UFC because it was a short North fight, and three, giving another kid a chance because I did that with Gaethje. And something I remembered in the fight, I know I'm kind of long-winded right now, but my kid ended up hurting his arm. He fell and he had, he hyperextended his arm. But before he did that, he has this ability to just bend his arm, and it's kind of weird. It's I can't do it, but it looks like you know, I, like he's gonna hurt himself. But it's not his natural way of stretching his arm. And I said, "Hey, be careful, son. You're gonna hurt yourself." But I remember in the fight, I was like, "My kid's flexible like that." And I went for the for the arm bar. Any other person would attack. But I, and that, during that moment, I remember my son. And how flexible his arm was, and I remember, don't give up. I was like, I just just keep that, just keep this mentality. Like you're tough, you can do this. And so when I'm in that position, when he went for the arm bar, I knew he was gonna go for the arm bar. He went for S mount. He wasn't gonna take my back, so he was kind of quitting. And you have a high level black belt like myself, and you have a high level black belt like him. It's like a chess match. So when he went for the arm bar, I, I knew that he was gonna go, and I was gonna that was gonna be my my way to be able to you know. Uh, to break out, hitchhike a thumb out like how we do in Templanet and then get out. But he had it full. And I heard my corner say short time, you know, before that. And he heard that too. And when we do that, we obviously go for our finishing moves. 
And I heard the 10 second bell and I said, you know what? You're okay. Hold on. And I just started thinking about my kids. And I started thinking about just, just how that was. And I told, I let it go. I was like, you know what? I'm going to have faith. I'm just going to let it go. And he went, he tried to, you know, try to break it. It didn't work. He goes back to the second round and I was like, ah, right, here we go. You know, I stretched out my arm again and it, it didn't feel the greatest, but at least I didn't quit. I didn't quit like I did in the Gaethje fight. You know, and we were really close to beat him in that in that second round. You know, I threw a head kick, he caught it, I cut him, and we were on the ground. And I was I was about ready to go to work. And he didn't want to he didn't want to be there either. Not a lot of people want to be on the ground in the area. You know, I got a lot of training in from Tim Plan. I'm really blessed to be able to have really great training partners. And when I cut him, I didn't know he was on the ground. I did enough kick, and it just wasn't my time yet. God said, "Hey, it's not your time yet." Then it was an illegal kick, and then I ended up losing the fight. You know, we go to the Darius fight. The Gary Hughes fight, I brought in new corners. I brought in Freddie Roach and a couple guys from Wildcard. You know, me and Freddie got into a couple times, and I don't even understand why he, he was like that. But before the fight, they told me not to throw a jab. And I'm kind of like, okay, this is one of my most important ones. But it was up to me to be able to demonstrate that out there. And so when everybody's like, well, you didn't look like yourself, you were froze. Well, I'm trusting my corners to be able to tell me the right advice when I go out there. But like I said, it's always on me to be able to make sure I make those good adjustments. And during the Gary Hughes fight, and what, actually, Freddie gave me some really good advice. He said, don't run on the streets no more because I rolled my ankle that week before. You know, I'm not saying my foot was a balloon. My foot. No, I'm not saying any of that shit. I, I rolled my ankle because I wasn't paying attention. There was some stairs, and I was doing an a Instagram live. And we were there on the Sunday before fight week. And uh, I'm paying attention to, like, my fans, and I'm, not, and I'm saying something. I said, hey, we got here early. And I was like, you know, we don't have to rush. I said something like, not arrogant or cocky, but I was just confident, not overconfident, but I was paying attention to everybody else and not to myself and what I was doing. And here I go, and I crack. I roll my ankle, and I hear a huge pop. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I, st- I stopped the Instagram live, and I looked at my buddy Ben, and I looked at my buddy Tony, and I was like, fuck. And I'm like, you okay? And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so I said, I have to keep running. I was like, if I don't, if I stop right now, I was like, it's going to atrophy. I'm not going to be able to get back. I've been in shitty situations back at home where I've either ran out of gas or my tire fell off. And I had to figure out a solution to that, those problems right away. And I said, let's run back. And I ran back. And luckily for me, I heal really quick. And I know how to do that. I paid attention in school and I paid attention to a lot of my people that I really learned from. And a lot of my, my trainers and you know sports trainers that know how to heal my, heal myself and, I just trusted myself to be able to go through it. I used the Norma Tech boots. I used a, a red light therapy, a PVM that uh, my buddy Steve let me borrow for that week. I, I had to do Graston on myself. And throughout that whole week, it, we, we still didn't do jujitsu. We barely did any boxing. Uh, actually, you know what? We did a lot of boxing. That was one thing that we did. We did, we did a lot of pads, so I had to thank my team for being able to do that. But we really didn't do too much Muay Thai. And... You know, it was just, it's always been this like missing element. Like I had little bits here and there. And in the Darius fight, I remember when he grabbed my leg, she's like, I popped it, man. What's going on with you? And I was like, no, you really popped it back into place. Uh-huh. And I had to laugh about I had to laugh about it. But, you know, even going to the Chandler fight and then just, you know, all the fights and thinking about it, I really, you know, I really wasn't given 100%. You know, during the Chandler fight, I, I really was as best as I possibly could. That's one thing I really did. I did a lot of fight film watching. I, I, I was eating phenomenal, Ariel, just eating really good, just making sure that I was putting nutritious stuff in myself, making sure I was putting enough scoops of protein, making sure I was taking enough of that, making sure that I was eating my oatmeal, my yogurts, my fruits, and my vegetables, and putting it all together. And one of my trainers, he tells me when I was over at the UFC event in Anaheim, he says, you look good, kid. And I was on the teleprompter, and I took a screenshot of that, and I looked at that, and I was like, that's cool. It's like, instead of me worrying about like how I look, I was like, I just kind of stopped and I forgot about that. And I just worried about what I could control, which was my heart rate and my breathing. And that really helped me with my focus and everything, you know, paying attention to my diet and my, and my levels of structures of lifting and even just making sure that my warm up. because you heard Eddie Bravo one time, right? He said, you can, tra- I can train for six to eight hours nonstop, but not a lot of people can do that. So what I started doing is I started condensing, defragmenting my, my workouts and making sure that it was, it was really good, what, what was really important to, to bring into that fight. 
And, you know, I did my best, man. But like I said, God said I wasn't ready yet. But I got this hunger. And, you know, when I got knocked out, I had plenty of time to take a nap and think about what was really important to me. And I'm still smiling. I really am. I'm still smiling. I'm still happy that my fan base is hardcore. I, I really don't understand how they keep following me. I want to keep following me. Maybe it's because I don't quit. You know, maybe it's just because of my stubbornness in that one that they just find some kind of info in it. But whatever it is, you know, don't stop. You know, keep doing what you're doing. That's my, my thing to them is don't quit. You know, there's always, you can take one step in front of the other, and no matter what, you can always do better. And that's how I feel right now. I feel like going into my next fight confident. I'm not going to waste these next two months just sitting and moping. I'm not going to let any of these dudes, you know, drinking that poisonous hater rate have any effect on me. You can post a picture of as much as you fucking want. You can do retweets and you can do whatever the fuck you want. It ain't going to get me down. I promise you that. I've been to hell and back and I'm here right now and I'm walking. Can, can I ask you, Tony, and I appreciate the, uh, the thoughtful responses. Um, at the beginning of the week, you showed up at the, uh, the media day and you had a lot to say and it created a huge buzz and you're comparing promoters to drug dealers and you were talking about the Dana White privilege line. It didn't seem like you were in a mood to joke around. It seemed like you had a lot to get off your chest and a lot of important stuff, even at the Thursday press conference, talking about health insurance, you know, uh, people are talking about bonuses. You're like, no, it, it seemed like you were a mature, older man, a father, a husband who realized that like, hey, we need some things to be taken care of when the career is over. What prompted all of that? out of you on Wednesday and Thursday. And in particular, the Wednesday stuff. I mean, it takes a lot of guts. As I said on that show, as we were watching it almost live, people don't understand the balls that it takes to go to a UFC press conference and talk about the UFC like that. It ain't easy because when the cameras turn off, there's sometimes conversations and texts and things like that. And so can I ask you what prompted it and what was the response afterwards behind the scenes? Well, I'm going to be real. Um, Something that just kind of pissed me off was when the UFC, you know, I love my company, I'm going to be real, and Dana's all right, he's all right, you know. And Hunter Campbell, he's cool, and then Sean Shelby, they're all right. They got to look for the bottom line. But I had to look out for mine. And I hadn't did that for a long time. I don't know, Ryan's right there, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, during that fight week, when I first got there, I had a lot to say because during the last year and a half, the last year when I was off, um, I was down to take that Makachev fight. Mm. And... You know, the way that they had presented that was that I didn't want the fight or however they wanted to present it. But it got brought up in the meeting, too, that, hey, we'll look at, you know, we'll, we'll look into the insurance because I brought it up. I said, I would, you know, obviously I want insurance. You know, the numbers and everything made sense to me. And they said, OK, we'll get your premiums together and we'll see how much it costs and so on and so forth for the next you know couple of years. So I, I had, you know, previously said that to them and they had agreed that, you know, we'll look at it. And I said, okay, that's cool. Well, I go a couple months later, um, I was ready to fight Chandler. And, you know, however, I think it was January or February or something like that. And he wasn't ready. His legs still probably weren't healed. But when I got the contract for Chandler, uh, there came a side note which said that they were going to extend my contract. And I was like, for what? And they do a lot of these things. And so I, I questioned it. Or, you know, closed mouth don't get fed, Ariel. Mm hmm so when I when I questioned it, I questioned Hunter, and I quest, uh, and what he said was, "Oh shit, you know," he's like, "I don't remember signing that," and I was like, "Excuse me," I was like, "Yo, yo, 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 yo," I was like, "I've been ready to fight, I've been ready to do this," and they wanted to extend my contract, and we fought for it, and they ended up taking it away because they signed documents that they don't read, and that really pissed me off. I was like, "You're shitting me." I was like, you guys don't even remember like what signing a document to have me stripped when all I've been was for the company and you had Connor being inactive and he didn't, he was going to retire or whatever he was going to do. And you guys stripped me for this. And I'll go back into where like, you know, I, I was really mad. I don't want to, you know, we say too much. I try to keep everything really good. But when Dana said, you know, any man that wears, you know, sunglasses inside deserves to have that happen to them. And now you have holler head sunglasses because I'm looking at that logo and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Dana doesn't even wear sunglasses. And this is his company. So it was just a lot of like bad things that I've always felt that was kind of underlying. And I let it go. I let it out. I was pissed, you know, as I should be. I've always done things for the company. I've always showed up. You know, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but you know, some of the things that I said, people had to take me serious because I'm just a messenger, man. You know, at the beginning of the day, it's not the first thing that's on my mind, but 
when I have to look after my family and I have to look after my my well our well being, they're not one paying insurance. Uh, you know, that's a whole other story. And two, they're not paying my bills. You know, when I show up to fight and I do that, I'm a, we're self contractors out there, which is crazy. You know, I'm not trying to talk about unions and stuff. I don't understand it too much. But I know what I fight for, and I fight for myself. I wasn't talking for everybody in there. I was talking for my family, myself, because I have I have another kid. I have two kids. My wife wants to obviously have another one, which is cool. I, I love to. You know, perfect practice makes perfect. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> during that, during that yeah, right during that first week, it was just it was intense, and you know, and I talked to my wife, and she's like, you know what happened? You know, to use the smile a lot. And I start and I and I started thinking that I was like, you know what? You're right. I was like, you're absolutely right. So during the week when I when I said that I said my piece, you know, the Dana White privilege thing, you know, too, it wasn't funny because I had been through it. I've gone through it all. You know, it's not Mike's fault. But the company sometimes it's weird, man, and there's a lot of underlying things that a lot of people don't see. They just they take for they take for granted what the UFC presents. You know, if you look at the commentary, if you watch my Olivera fight without the commentary, you can actually see the fights better. I recommend anybody to do that. Because what ends up happening is the commentary gang up on people that they don't like. You know, like I said, I never did a Joe Rogan interview before. You know, I might, but because of that, obviously, he probably got bent out of shape on that one. You know, and obviously, when Cormier, you know, when Khabib, and, you know, I make my comments about Fathead and him not making weight, it must be a team thing, man. Look at that shit on the scales. I don't understand it. I, I saw you and Cormier it. going back on uh, Twitter there a couple of days ago. Yeah, that's for another day, another story. I'm going to be real on that one. I got nothing against the guy. I'm going to be real. He's good for the sport. You know, congrats to him on the Hall of Fame. You know, the one thing is about the Olympics. I always say that he's been to the Olympics. You know, Henry Cejudo has been to the Olympics. These guys, they know what it takes to be able to do what they they put in their time and energy. But when you surround yourself around people that have not done that, your head starts to inflate a lot, and you start to start to believe what everything that they fucking say. That you know, and so and my mom always said, surround yourself around good people, good strong-minded people. My pops would tell me too. And for a while there, like I said, I started believing in the hype, and I started getting mad about it because. I kept quiet for a year. And the way that UFC presented it was like, I took myself from the community and I did all this other stuff. I started to hype. I never did that. The only thing I ever did was I didn't promote it as much. I didn't post it out on, on Instagram or Twitter because I knew that it's for quick hits. I'm not about quick hits anymore. I'm about value. I'm about long term. I'm about making sure that I increase value with the people that are around me, helping them increase value. You know, the companies, the CEOs of these companies, and, you know, if they believe in that, that don't quit attitude because it, it's not easy starting a business and keeping it going. You know, same thing with the UFC. It, you got to rely on the fighters to be able to, one, show up, two, make weight, and three, go out there and present themselves in the best manner, and four, not talk too much shit. You know, because good or bad publicity, is good, you know, it's, it's publicity. That's what, they, what the idea is. But like I said, going into it, I, during the rest of the fight week, I... You know, I started to ask, you know, I started taking my wife's advice and I started smiling better. I started having a little bit more fun. I stopped letting people have an effect on me and I started to affect other people, which was cool because miserable people are going to be miserable, bro. I'm going to be real with you and I don't want to be like that. So I, I had to really reflect on what I was saying, what I was doing, and it came from the heart. You know, it was almost like God was talking for me and, and it was like a big blessing that I said what I had to say because a closed mouth don't get fed, Ariel. And... You know, like like I said, at, the, at least with the press conference, I had fun. I wasn't trying to talk too much shit against Mike. You know, there was absolutely no reason for it. But it's, it's different because a lot of people they expect. You know, they expect me to go in there and talk shit. But I, I saved that for Conor and I saved that for, for for Khabib, you know, because that was the fun part. That was like the saga, if you really wanted to, like Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. you know, these were the bad guys. And here I am, like Goku going in there and doing damage. And so that's how I kind of feel about it, man. Like, you know, I said what I had to say. But I don't have to reflect too much on it anymore because I'm, I'm a, it's not anything else, but just for me. I'm doing this all for me, not for anybody else. So I'm, I'm deciding to be happier. I'm deciding to smile more. I'm deciding to take care of myself more. I'm deciding to take care of my, my the people that represent me, you know, or that I represent more, like my sponsors or the people, you know, my management company. And, you know, obviously face family and friends first. But unless you feel good, how do you expect to take care of other people? You know, that shit happens, and a lot of those times those people don't make it. And I've seen enough times where I, don't, I just don't want to do that anymore. I want to be able to make sure that I take care of myself so I can take, other, take care of other people, you know? I was always wearing shoes all the time, but I got a pair of sandals pretty cool right now. You know, my mom sent me a pair of sandals. And so I'm deciding to wear those, you know, a little bit more, you know? I'm actually going to change my shoes right now and put them on.
can, can I ask you? You know, it's been over four years since that that moment that you just referenced with the 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 sunglasses and the Fox interview and everything like that. And you brought it up in that press conference as well. Are you worried that over time this will bother you more and more? I mean, I, I I've said it many a time. No one has gone screwed more than you. That that was horrific. What happened to you? You're doing PR. You trip over a cord. You lose the fight. You injure your knee. And nothing really happens as a result. But over time, do you yeah, think man, it will bother you even more? Check this out. You know, like injuries and stuff happen. You know what I mean during fight camps. You, you yeah, but that's a different one. That. You're, you're doing PR for them. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You, you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna be real. Even you know, like even during that camp too. You know, doing jujitsu and stuff like that. I had a little boo boo, but going into the fight, I was ready. I'm gonna be real. And when we were doing UFC PR, I wasn't wearing sunglasses. I was wearing prescription lenses, you know, and, and a lot of those cords that were over there, I, I've seen plenty of Fox, like Fox people, like even cameramen tripping over this shit. And the black stuff is like, I forget what it's called, but it's a different kind of black uh, material. You can't really see the shit. It's mm-hmm. really hard. And you see people tripping on that stuff a lot. But the thing I remembered was, because I would always see a lot of people like just faking and trying to get like workman's comp and stuff. And I, I wasn't for me. I never faked that shit. So when it happened, I was like, okay, cool. And I had to really, I had to really rely on like myself and be how tough I was. And then, you know, I asked my doctor and we, we really were trying to make this shit happen. I'm not, I'm not lying. Dude. I was really, really trying to make it happen, trying to see what we could do. And going into it, it was tore off the bone, man. Like it was really kind of shitty, like how it happened. But like I said, when I rolled my ankle with the Darius fight, I didn't quit. I knew that people had bought tickets they spent their money, that they were going up to see us compete. I knew that it was really hard to be able to, like, obviously get late replacement opponents. So I was trying to show up, and I did the exact same thing for that fight. I really tried. I really, really tried, man. And it just really wasn't It wasn't our time to fight. It wasn't for me or Khabib to fight. And unfortunately, I got stripped, which was some bullshit. But I don't know, man. It was kind of, I can't, every time I think and I dwell on it, it it's not a headache, but it's, it's a sad moment. But I have the belt, and I have to remember that I put in a lot of time and effort, and I put in a big long win streak on that one. So it's not, it's not about pride anymore. It's not about like, oh, I'm being pissed off at the world. Like, oh, I'm owed this and owed that. I'm not trying to be like Uncle Rico. Fuck that. There's plenty of those people out there that are like that. You know, oh, if Coach would have put me in, I would have won state. No, I got a state championship football ring on right now. I got a national championship ring for wrestling. I got a belt right here. I got, a, you know, I got a belt from Pure Combat. I got a belt from the 805 Pride, and I got a UFC belt. I have those on my shelves. I have another, you know, and I have a trophy from the fighters only. You know, for it's, it's like collecting accolades. Mm-hmm. If I don't, if I keep allowing myself to dwell on a lot of shit in the past, it's gonna make me miserable, bro. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. So when I when I said that I, what I had to say on that on that in that press conference when everybody was there, it was cool to see everybody. It was really cool to see everybody. We didn't see you there. I'm going to be real. I don't know why. But I was expecting to see you and, you know, I got to see John Morgan and everybody else, which was cool. And it was, it was, it was an instance. It felt really good to be there again, but carrying all that negative energy with me, it made me sound like just like being an asshole. And I'm not, not completely, you know, I have my moments, but obviously everybody, every man does. That's what, how it goes. You know, but it, I just don't want to carry that energy with anymore because I know that there's a lot of young UFC fighters that, that they look at this company and they're like, man, I want to go fight for the UFC. I want to go fight for the UFC. But they don't know the shit that comes with it. But it's not for me to tell them that and to piss on their dreams and their hopes because it's not. It's up, it's, it's up to me to be able to be like, you know what? You're going to be able to make it. You're going to do good. You're gonna, and then coach them to a certain level. I'm a good scout when it comes to that. To say, hey, you know what? You, you know, keep up with this. If you, if you decide to go professional, you know, I have my buddy that you know he was trying to one of my students. I call him a student, Kalen. You know, when he was trying to decide whether or not he wanted to go Olympics or pro for boxing, and we had a nice conversation. And I was like, if you go pro, I was like, don't mess around, kid. I was like, make sure that you're doing everything that you possibly can to go in there and, and give it your best and your all. And now the kid's three and zero, and the UFC's that they're you know they're helping him out at UFC Fight Pass, and they're making him a big name. But I'm trying to keep telling them, hey, stay humble, fight strong. And this is a message to all these other fighters out there because everybody wants to be in the spotlight. Like they want to have the millions of followers. They want to make the money. They want to do all this. That shit will come. 
Brock Lesnar told me, I talked to Brock again, and he tells me, and the first time he was like, you know, save your money, pay your taxes. But the reason why I had a relationship with Brock and I still continue to is because I don't quit, for one, and two, my work ethic. I always surround myself around strong-minded individuals, and, and that's how I see how it is for a lot of these young fighters. And they, they need me to be strong because I'm like a big uncle. I'm like a big brother when it comes to all this stuff. You know, even like Charles Bronx, when he was getting ready for the fight and he got stripped, he was signing some posters. He was signing some posters in the back at the weigh-in ceremony, and he was with his team. And so I go up to him, I put my hand on his shoulder, and he, he didn't know it was me at first, and he turns around, and he kind of had this pissed off look. And I look at him and say, hey, so I'm going to need you to focus, all right? And I want you to focus. And he looked at me, and he's like, okay, okay. And I get, you know, gave each other a hug, which was cool. And his coaches are right there. But a lot of people don't see this stuff. You know, the same thing with Carla Esparza. You know, I love Rose. But I know, you know, Carla was nervous. So when we were at the, you know, signing the posters, I had a couple of mints in my, I had a couple of lightsaber mints in my pocket. I just loved it. It was cool. And uh, I gave her one. You know, we were talking about tough. But pe we get nervous, man. Like, people don't really see that. It, there's a lot that goes into the media. There's a lot that goes into a fight week. And it's, it's fun. That's the fun part. Because everything that's hard is supposed to be during training. But when you get there, it's like everything becomes real, like more real, you know. And I'm sure that Carla, had, she just got married, so congratulations to her. And congratulations to Rose, too, for just being the champ for a long time, too. Takes a chance and no chance. And you know what I mean? It's really cool on that one. And so she sent me a message, too. But, you know, like even just being there for a lot of my fighters is something that I, I take a lot of love and a lot of pride in because they listen. They, they like to listen to me or they like to, I'm not going to say jock my swag, but they do. You know, even like below Muhammad, that dude would just clown all the time on some of the things that I would do with like my sunglasses or like some of the memes on my workouts. And now you have this dude just like jocking the shit out of my swag. I remember when we were over there, I ran into him before we were at the fight and he said, he was wearing his sunglasses, but they weren't on yet. They were on his shirt in front of him. And, uh, and he's at 170, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, man, that would be cool to go back up to 170. You guys have been slow and dumb. <laughs> so at 55, they're a little bit quicker. But he had his sunglasses, and I looked at him, and I, was like, I, and I said to him, I was like, ah, you used to clown for sunglasses, and now you're wearing them. He's like, I'm the sunglasses guy. And I looked at him, and I was like, you will never be the sunglasses guy. <laughs> and it was, a fun, it, was a, it was the funniest shit, bro. But since I started with Tough from wearing suits, and then seeing GSP start to wear the suits and everybody else, I, I got burned out. I stopped doing that because I, I used to wear a shirt and tie at every competition for in high school and in college. I would just do it because that was how my mom used to dress me. You know, it was just how I used to go. I was just, you know, my vest was the same thing. It was like one of my favorite things to wear. You know, and I put it together and there goes my three-piece, my three-piece suit. You know, and my sunglasses was always my thing with my buddy Matt back in the day. You know, we, we would call it go to Scampa for a hose. We would just we would just be in this broke ass down car until he got a, a new car, and we would just go and just have fun, listen to music, and just and just being how we were, you know, joking around and doing that kind of thing. But the sunglasses thing was my biggest thing. It was just like always, oh, like just having a pair of shades was just it, one made me feel good about myself, you know. So shout out to my you know my, my sponsor Dylan, my company I work with, my business partners, and. It's just like always been my thing. So when any time ever, you know, even my, my hair, when I was first seeing Kachanoi uh, Pacuno and it was all bleached out, and now you have Charles Oliveira who bleaches his hair. It's, I, I, I had gotten burned out of everybody doing what I had been doing. And I, 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 don't, I had never been that person. I, I was always kind of like doing my own thing. But I found that love and that passion for it again, for being able to like, like myself, because not because everybody else, but because for me. You know, not getting burned out with who wants to, you know, have my tattoos or who wants to fight like me or who wants to do what I do or say what I say because that's a lot of responsibility, Ariel. That is a very, that's a lot of responsibility. You better have some strong fucking shoulders to be able to carry that torch. And I still have enough strong shoulders to be able to carry it. And I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do that, man. Uh, just a couple more and I'll let you go again. I really appreciate it. Um, so at this point, do you know when you want to return? You have the the suspension, right? But in your mind, in a perfect right. world, do you know when you want to return? And is it possible, I mean, to even ask who you'd like to return against? Yeah. I'm going to be real. Like, it'd be a standard battle would be nice. I, you know, I yeah. ask, hey, yo, bro, you know, would you mind me doing a celebrity boxing match? You know, making a couple more bucks for my family. You know, something like that would interest me. It would bring some attention. I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be down for that, which would be kind of cool. 
Um, you think he'd be down for that? I say that, I, I say that confidently, right? Right. Kind of yeah. Funny how that works. But you know, don't call me an oracle. But I've always been pretty good with the way I say and see things. Um, just like I said, I'm just a messenger for people. So I mean, like we all got to get right. But you know, aside from boxing, because I just fucking love boxing. Because I've wrestled my whole life, man. People are like, how come you letting takedowns happen? Fuck, man. I just want to go there. I just want to stand a bag, man. Let me stand a bag, bro. Yes. You know, I just want to be in the. Po- I just want to be in the pocket. I just want to sit there and then give the fans something to do. And a lot of these fighters don't want to do that. They want to take you down and they don't respect because it's MMA. But that goes into me sparring and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, staying with the subject that you asked, um, these two months, I'm going to go and I'm going to really, within the next week or two, I'm going to try to narrow it down on a camp, mm. which would be excellent. I'm going to be looking for a new strength and conditioning coach so I don't have to have all that responsibility. So you guys send your resumes to me. You guys can, you know where to find me. Um, you know, obviously work for my, you know, work, work harder on my sponsors, make sure that the, the, the companies and equity that I have, as far as, you know, my businesses go, I'm going to make sure that, that those stay float. You know, I'm not going to quit on them. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask more questions. You know, I even, I even told my, told Lloyd, I was like, I want to go back to school. I want to get my degree. So I have a choice between Stanford and Harvard to get my business degree. And uh, we're going to make that happen too. So there's wow. a couple of things I want to do. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm going to really, go after it. I'm going to keep myself busy and, and, and not surround myself around people not doing what I do and, you know, and just find the right people to, to keep learning from, to ask good questions and, and get the coaching. You know, I have the coaching now. Trust me, it's, it's not bad. Well, what I want to do is I want to find an MMA team to be able to go and beat people up or get beat up because that's how we do it. You know, I don't see myself getting beat up anymore. That's, I've got that, that, that passion. I've got that hunger again. Uh, I just got tatted again, so I got you know that, that feeling of pain, which is cool. You know, I don't recommend it to everybody, but for me, it makes me feel good about myself. And I got it, and good. So I'm gonna do a tattoo really so you guys can see it. But these things that I'm doing, or these small goals, are gonna end up being bigger goals. And so, as far as an opponent, you know, I know you had Dustin Poirier on before here. It'd mm-hmm. be cool to fight him. You know, you know, I have nothing against Nate. I have nothing against going up a weight class. You know, for a long time there, Dana made me feel like shit for staying, at, you know, for going up that weight. But he made me feel like shit for a long time. And if you have people making you feel like shit like that, essentially you start to almost kind of believe it. You know, I'm not standing here giving them the finger, but I'm kind of sitting here kind of be like, you know, I'm going to do me for me now. You know, and you're going to watch me now. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be unhappy anymore because I just can't do that shit no more. I'm not going to let commentary or people have that salt and throw it in my shit because I used to do, I do it myself. I do enough salt for everybody, so... I'm not going to do that. So as far as return, um, he said, he's got, you know, I'm going to take some time. I'm not man. I'm gonna, I call the shots. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I say I want to, I, whenever I say I fight, they always give me a fight and that's how it goes. You know, I always talk to Hunter and Dana, same thing. And they know already, they know when I'm ready that I, when I say I'm ready, I'm going to be ready because it's not like I'm not, you know, I'm not going to put myself in there if I'm injured anymore. And on the last couple of fights, I did that. And it just it wasn't healthy for me, and it didn't really turn out too well. So I have two months. I'm gonna obviously recover from the fight. You know, I I'm not forgetting about the knockout, but I'm kind of like I'm glad it happened. You know, like it gave me a nap to really think about what I had to do. And you know, I don't remember being on the stool. I don't remember the decision. I don't remember walking out of the cage talking to Chuck. I don't even know what he said. I don't even know if I you know gave high fives to the fans on the way out. All I remember was my coach being at my side like I was in college wrestling and I'm walking out and I start to see the ambulance we're walking towards and I said fuck I said this in my last interview but I just it just it hit me that I lost and so I was just trying to think I was like you know what no big deal I was like you lost let's take it let's learn from it let's get better you know let's, let's, let's go see your family let's, let's make sure that everything is cool and let's go let's grow from here so I would like to see myself back in the picture. Obviously, I want to fight this year. Uh, my dad actually asked me right now, uh, you know, who, who's next? And obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to, you know, like want to step up, you know, look at me as like a stepping block. But that's a dangerous block to be stepping on. You know, when I have all my attention towards something, I have my full hunger. You saw it in the first round. Now, if I hadn't sparred for about three to five years, imagine what I can do if I do spar. 
if I still add those two make new tools in my box and I and I allow myself to have that, that's a dangerous individual. That's a very dangerous individual and I don't think I'm gonna be too easy for anybody to be able to finish for one or two be able to win anymore. You know, you gotta have that want and that will and that that passion to be able to want to win again wholeheartedly. Not just saying to do it, not lying to yourself. Yeah, 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 I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing, I really was try, thinking that I was, but I wasn't surrounding myself around the team. So literally I've been given probably like 75% in the effort compared to how I used to when I went on that 12 fight win streak. So that's an interesting fact, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. a numbers guy myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make sure that I do all the work and the effort that I have to and make sure that the, the outcome is much, much different. I don't mind dealing the pain towards anybody else anymore and not being so angry, that's for sure. Because it ain't good anymore. I, I want to be happy. I want to make sure I'm smiling. And I want to make sure that it gets presented out. And if you don't like me, then fuck you. But if you like it, then cool. You're cool with me. But like I said, you know what I mean? It's better to be on the crew that's smiling all the time. C- c- can I ask, and I don't mean to dampen the mood, but it does seem rather personal between you and Connor about some of the things that he tweets about um, in the aftermath and in the buildup. I know there was the management story and all that. Uh, if you could pick mm-hmm. one, would it, would it be the Connor fight? Like if at some point before the career is over, is that the one or is Habib the one? I don't know if he's allowed. I don't even know if he's allowed to fight me. Why not? And obviously he was part on Well, because he was part owner of paradigm and during, through the Miller Ayala act. If you're an acting owner of an agency, uh, you're not allowed to compete in the same company or in the same uh, sport as the athlete. So there, there was reason why I guarantee you that they didn't want to compete or they couldn't compete. And even Dana White said, those guys fucked you over. When it was in my meeting to go back and to kind of like make sure I was okay to go and fight, you know, in my contract leading up to that. He said that, and I remember saying him saying that because I'm like, Yo, so you knew, but you still let it happen. So it was an interesting fact. And uh, like I said, I would love to be able to compete against Conor, but the hardest part that, and here's a here's the biggest thing. Have you ever watched the movie Prestige? Have you ever watched that? No. So there was this guy, right? He did this magic trick. And these two dudes, they couldn't figure out how he did the magic trick for the longest time until, like, towards the end of the movie. And so what I had did for a long time is I built up a facade around people and, and things because I, wanted, I didn't really want people to see the real me or how I was really acting. So I would always do that. And I built that up for a long time. And they took the bait. And it was kind of interesting how that happens, how it works, because now I'm being real. I'm not dumb. You know, I'm not saying I'm like the smartest person in the world, but I'm very educated. I like to think so. I surround myself around good people and ask questions. But they took the bait. Anytime that they would come to my to my academy, they'd be taking pictures of my equipment, and you would see Connor with the equipment. Anytime that Audi would, you know, or people they would come into my to my spot, they would be burning out my personal information now, so everybody around the area could hear it. It was just like a crazy, crazy, crazy thing, man. You know, and I want to embellish too much on it, but I would love to be able to fight Connor because if he still has his academy by my spot, because that's what he ended up doing. He ended up opening up an academy right near me. My neighbors come up to me and they're like, hey, you know Connor's right next to you? And I cracked up because that's how he is. The dude's so unhappy that he has to copy everybody's stuff to find happiness. And maybe, maybe you don't do it on purpose. Maybe it's because, you know, he admires me and what I do, uh, regardless of what it is. I don't, you know, because he, he would even ride my bike trail. He would, you know, use the bike trail to use my run. You know, that management, they, they used to know a lot about me, you know, and it was just, it was because I trusted them for a while. But like I said, I built a facade, so it wasn't everything. I just knew I had to be kind of like full of shit with them on some of the stuff, but, you know, that was hiding my real need in the smile. So if it, if it is with Connor, I have no problem with it. You know, if he wants to get into the personal things and everything like that, it's okay. I don't mind it. You know, he can say what he wants to say. He's just really unhappy with himself. You know what I mean? Trying to be at that high level like that and trying to promote yourself and everything. And, then, you know, obviously, you know, I'll, you know, I'll say to him, you know, take care of your leg. You know, I hope you're, you're doing your best on that and listen to your doctors. And, and, and fighting with a fixator, it's not easy. You know, you got to look at Chris, Chris Weidman, but you know, I'll look at my father, you know, that, you know, he ended up breaking half his body back in the day. And so he has a fixator in his leg and, and he walks around and he says, I can feel these pins and I can, you know, and it was the same thing with me. I can, when I had the, the surgery in my left arm, I could feel the pins in the, in the, in the, in the plate. It was hard, man. You know, like 
but it's a crazy thing that we live in there in the world that what we do. But uh, reflecting back on that question, I wouldn't mind fighting him. But I don't think I don't know if he's allowed to or or what that is. And you know, they would lie to me saying that he wasn't an owner of the company while he was. And the sponsors that were brought in for me, they you know they didn't go towards me. They went to you know him or his guys. It was kind of like like I said, you know, when you get treated like shit for a long time, you almost you start essentially find a feeling like that. But it's a trickle effect, and I don't want to have that effect anybody anymore. And I'm not blaming anybody or anything. But um, if it's Connor, that's cool, man. I wouldn't mind it. You know what I mean? It would be a great fight. Um, you know, Dustin, same thing. You know, Nate. I, like I said, I really don't want to fight Nate, but you know, Nate's cool. Yeah, you know, that's Nate, been talked it'd be about. Cool. It'd be cool to train. You'd want yeah. to train with Nate? I don't. I wouldn't mind it, man. He's always out here, and uh, it was kind of funny. We were over at the at the pre- or at the UFC Anaheim event. And uh, him and his buddy were right there, and they were about to pull it past me a doobie. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 but not right here. You know, I was kind of like kind of joking. And I laughed about it. But then Nate kind of looked at me, and I looked at him, and we cried. We both cracked a smile at the same time, which was cool, and we kind of high-fived each other. We accidentally elbowed some chick on the head, which was kind of a shitty thing. But <laughs> it was it was funny how it happened, and we both kind of laughed about it. But... Like I said, I wouldn't mind training with him or Gilbert or Nick. You know what I mean? It's just I I, I got to admire my peers because they go through a lot of the shit too. So it's it's interesting how that works. But, um, you know, just I'm going to be real. Like you have top 10 fighters. I wouldn't mind fighting any of those. But I don't even know my fucking ranking anymore. I probably should. But I'm not really worried about it. So, you know, I've been to the, to the top. I've been to the bottom. And I know exactly what I have to do. So regardless of who they put in front of me, I'll be ready. Can I ask about Gregor Gillespie? He wrote a whole thing uh, yesterday and mentioned that you keep turning down fights against him. Is that true? I never heard about him getting offered a fight. I was never offered a fight by the UFC from him. I never heard anything. My lawyers, my agents never heard anything. I want to be real. That dude's some some kind of work, man. I just, I, I sent him a message as a, you know, and the, the story is he don't change his knee pads, I guess, or something like that. And he's a stinky guy. I don't want to fight a stinky guy. You know, clean up your act and go fight some people. You know, you can't talk your way into a title. You're not Connor. You know, Connor's got value. You know, he, he's got to bring something to the table. He brings, you know, he breaks records with the gate and everything. But so do I. You got to remember, a lot of people want to fight. You know, or come and see us fight. And you have to be able to go out there and do diligence to hold your ground, to be able to stand toe to toe, to be able to. I mean, look at the the Dana White contender series. How about that? I don't really watch it too much, but those fuckers are hungry mm. because they're coming from nothing. And if you fight like that, and you you fight like you're hungry, and you're going in there and you're finishing people, you're not just laying on people or expecting things. You know, a lot of people they expect shit and they don't put in the work. Nothing's gonna come to you if you don't do any work, man. If you're just sitting there bitching all the time and you're not doing any work or you're not there for the company, you you can't expect to talk your way into a title fight. I'm gonna be real. You gotta be one for the company. Two, show up, and three, like I said, due diligence and get that effort in. Because win or lose, if you're showing up and you're doing it and you're there for the company and you keep building your value, which is for us, obviously, a following. You know, unfortunately, on social media, that's the one thing that they look at, but it's not about that. It's how you present yourself. It's how you carry yourself. It's how you're doing things. So that's why, you know, like I said, it's like I recommend to him, it's like, get in there, fight some motherfuckers, get some highlight reels, build a record, you know, do what you have to do, but stop your whining. The people that are whining all the fucking time, nobody wants to hear that. I don't even want to be like that anymore. You know, I just kind of got to look in the mirror and kind of understand that, hey, you know, if you have growth going on, that's the one thing with me. I, I, I like avocados, you know, so, and, and, and I like plants. And when I'm in my garden, it, it, it makes me grounded, you know. One of my jiu-jitsu t- uh, old coaches would tell me, he's like, you know, you got to ground yourself sometimes. You know, go walk out on the grass without your shoes and your socks on. And I would start to do that and, you know, and obviously I like to grow things because taking care of animals is one thing, but if you can take care of a plant because you got to water your plants, it's a lot harder, man. And you start to kind of realize the, the, the basic essentials that just a plant needs. So that way that you can, you know, start to take care of yourself a little bit different. So, I mean, my best recommendation, recommendation to fighters out there, start taking care of yourself, start worrying about yourself, quit worrying about Twitter and Instagram and all that other bullshit. You know, my, my past manager from Brock, he would tell me that. He's like, you know what, Tony? He's like, just worry about fighting. That's how you're going to make your money. That's how you're going to make your name. And good advice is that right there. I'm going to be real. Mm. Stop worrying about every, all the bullshit and you get to fighting, man. Let your fighting do the work. Uh, two more if I can. 
And again, thank you for the time, Tony. If you can never get the Habib fight, would the Islam fight scratch the same itch for you? Or it's two different nah. human beings? It won't be the same? It's two different human beings. Obviously, yeah. I like fighting AKA. I'm going to be real. My record with AKA is still 1-0, you know, with Josh Thompson. And with Khabib running away and it's having, you know, I got to, you know, no, no disrespect, you know, his past passed away, so I can get that. But I believe that when his dad said that we were supposed to compete, I believe that. So regardless, like, I would love to be able to coach against him in the, in the ultimate fighter. How about that? For one, I've, you know, best man wins on the team. I guarantee you my coaching is a lot better than yours, Khabib. I, you know, not a lot of people understand that. I don't have to break anybody's rim for that shit. But I understand that my coach, my coaching goes a long way, and I can build my team. I, I built a team for a 12-fight win streak, and I can definitely build a team again to be able to go and beat that son of a bitch. You know, I have nothing personal against him besides him running away from when the pandemic and being a scared little dude. But I got to respect that, that, you know, family's first. And, uh, you know, you got to take care of your business. So it's regardless if it's a basketball game, I pick up basketball or wrestle ball. You want to call it wrestle ball? I don't mind that. You know, go out there on a wrestling match, jiu-jitsu, soccer. It doesn't matter what game we play. It would be cool to go out there, shake the dude's hand, kind of squash some beef, and then move on, man. It'd be kind of cool. So that way these younger fighters understand that it takes men to be able to represent this sport. You know, and it takes strong women, too. But when it goes for me and Khabib, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of thing, you know? Like... I can, you know, Tiramisu Tuesdays ain't going nowhere. You know, today's McNugget Monday. So that stuff just there. It's kind of like throwback Thursdays and Flashback Fridays. It's right. just part of the game now. So, you know, with Khabib, I would love to be able to compete against him. And I think people would tune in on watching The Ultimate Fighter. You know, it's just, it's one of those things I, I have appreciation for the fans. And uh, if the dude's got balls, maybe he'll sign on the dotted line someday. But I, take off, I, would mind, I wouldn't mind fighting him either. I'm going to be real. He, I got nothing against the kid. Obviously, I would bring it. And I love being able to beat AKA, that's for sure. But let me tell you a real quick story, though. Sure. I remember when Javier Mendez, Javier Mendez, he's Mexican too, fucking guy. I remember when we were walking out of the elevator. And it's funny how a lot of these, these trainers, get, these, these fighters, they rely on Mexican trainers. That's funny. So props on the Mexican trainers out there getting after it and doing that. You know, keep up with that shit. But I remember... um walking out of an elevator and uh, I was cutting weight and uh, there was Javier Mendez and I didn't really know him too. I knew he was a good coach, but I looked at him and he looked at me and went, that's him. That's it. And I was like, you son of a bitch. And it kind of, that didn't hurt my feelings and stuff like that. But at the time I was like, wow, I was like, I have respect for you. But then you kind of showed your ass. Like kind of like, what the fuck dude? I never did anything to you. But it was kind of like one of those things. So I have this chip on my shoulder against, you know, obviously AKA, and I'd love to beat that team. I'd love to be able to have that chance to do that again. So that opportunity comes up, I will take it. I do think it's very, uh, very heartwarming, promising. You say that you'd like to kind of squash the beef with Khabib. I think that's really cool. It's different. It's different. You know what I mean? It's like you can, you can hold on to grudges for a long time, but it takes a real man to be able to, I don't want to say move on, but to keep that, because obviously when somebody does you wrong, you remember that. But being a man is making sure you make the good adjustments and go out there and to do that. To hold on to those grudges and to do that kind of negative energy is like drinking that poison cider. You know, I, like I'll joke around. I'm going to continue to joke around because that's how I am with myself, you know, with Chimisu Tuesdays and things, because, you know, obviously he cheated on the scale too over there. You know, but it's one of those AKA things where they do that and they get away with it. But with Makachev, he's different. I'm going to be real, he's different. And I got respect for that. So out of everything and all due respect, you know, I'm still, you know, right now I'm still giving Khabib the finger, but, you know, until that day when we do shake hands like men, you know, maybe that'll happen. So, you know, props. Uh, final thing for you, Tony. I mean, uh, it's like I said, it's rare to talk to you. I think I think I ha I thought I had the wrong phone number because I went like 15 texts because you were tweet like, hey, interviews, this, that. I'm like, all right, I'll take the bait. I tried, right, but I wouldn't right, get right. a response. So, you know, I don't know when the next chat will be. Is there anything that we didn't talk about here today over the past hour that you want to get off your chest? I don't usually do this because it's kind of a lazy question, if I'm being honest. You're just kind of throwing it up there. But uh, yeah, I, I, good. I, I never, you know, it's it's rare. I never know when the next time we'll we'll talk. Uh, will come around. So is there anything else that you want to say that you want to get for your chest? I love what you said about health insurance. I love what you said about squashing the beef. I love 
I, I like this older Tony with more clarity and, and happiness and maybe trying to help out the younger guys. I think that's really important in this sport. Anything else that you want to cover? Yeah, man, just shout out to my family, you know, for just putting up with me and my son. Obviously, my wife, Christina, you know, my son, Angel Anthony and Armand Anthony, keep smiling, you know, keep watching Daddy do his thing. And shout out to my sponsors, uh, you know, Dylan Optics, Monster Energy, Bet Online, Off Axis Acrobatics. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, the shout outs and everything else that go into it. Hold on, real quick. It's funny how that works. But more than anything else, I'm going to say to like all the, uh, all the up and coming fighters, I'm going to be real, like, keep up with what you're doing, you know. And, and, and my company, uh, RDX Sports, they're really big on that. They're really big on inspiring a lot of the younger fighters and being there for, for a lot of the fighters. It's, it's a blessing to be able to have this platform to, you know, say what I have to say and do what I have to do. But, um, you know, when I want to disappear for a while, it's because I'm going out there, I'm enjoying life, and I'm doing my thing. And then when I come back, I always have something to say. So, you know, you know, thank you for having us, you know, having me on the interview. I'll say that for one. And, uh, I'm just going to keep doing this, what I got to do. And I'm looking forward to being on Twitch. I just talked to Vayner Gaming, actually. I'm going to be doing Twitch. I'm going to, I'm going to start putting myself out there more. I'm going to be doing interviews. And the next interview I do, I'm going to do a Zoom. Oh. I'm going to allow myself to be, you know, see. Yeah, I'm, I'm changing some stuff, man. I'm really putting I love myself this. out there. I got the courage. I got the courage to be able to do this stuff now, man. It's, uh, it takes a lot to be able to break open that show and that nut. So that way you can, you know, present it and then plant that seed. So. I'm doing that for myself and not just for myself and my family and then just, you know, for the companies I represent and uh, for the fans out there, you know, who pay the tickets or who actually pay the money to watch the pay-per-view. You know, I don't really put myself out there too much because I'm not for quick hits. But the way I've seen everybody handle themselves and how they've handled how I've taken this loss, it was, everybody's really sad, man. So what I want to say is um, I didn't mean to scare everybody. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm really doing really, really well. I went for a run this morning with my dog, and just with clarity, I'm, I'm feeling really, really well, man. So I want to say thank you again for having me on the show, Ariel. Oh, man. Tony, you know this, right? You don't need me to tell you this. People love you. Like, people genuinely love you. The fans love you. They have your back. When you speak, they listen. And maybe there's, there's, there's a, a certain, you know, method to the idea of not speaking for a year. And so then when you speak, you know, people will listen even more. I don't want to vouch for that because uh, I enjoy talking to you very much, but you know this, right? You know, people love you. They, they yeah. really do love you. And uh, the loyalty know, that your fan base has it. for you uh, is pretty incredible. Like, I mean, it's up there with all the big stars. So I hope you recognize that a lot of people have your back. A lot of people want to see you happy, want to see you succeed. It's crazy. And uh, want to support you. So I hope you know that. I do. I, I see it and I feel it, and I'm gonna be real. It's it's it's, it's a hard to understand, you know, because when you lose, you're supposed to, you know, obviously lose followers and everything. But somewhere along the lines, people just see how tough I am, and they and they kind of emulate that with whatever they got going on in their lives. And you know, it's a blessing to be able to do that. Thank God every day that I'm able to be here and to still, you know, to still have you know functionality in my, everything that I do. Because I mean, taking a kick like that, you know, not a lot of people can do that. Mm. You know what I mean? And then come back from it. So, like I said, I thank God every day, every day that I'm still here and be able to do what I do. And, and um, you know, to shout out to everybody else, I appreciate you. You know, thank you very much. It makes this game a lot more fun to be able to know that my fans have my back. You know, and I have your back, too. So, you know what I mean? Keep doing what you do, and I'm going to keep doing what I do, and I'm going to try to keep inspiring by being the best me that I possibly can be. So, I appreciate you guys. Much love, Tony. All the best to you. Thank you again for doing this, and, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Clutch. All right, there he is, Al Kakui, Tony Ferguson, the real deal, the genuine article. How about going from Poirier to Ferguson? I mean, two guys who uh, who are just themselves, for better or worse. Loyal fan bases have seen a lot of crap, have had you know tough roads, ups and downs, continue to persevere. Dustin mentioned something about, you know, having a lot of hate. I, I can't imagine why you would hate Desert Boy. I mean, I guess if he beat your favorite fighter along the way, but how do you not want to root for that guy? And uh, the same with Tony. Keeps it real, has had his ups and downs, uh, but is still here after all the crap. And yeah, I mean, Dustin, you could say, is enjoying a little more success these days. He just fought for the belt. Um, but that first round, if you're a Tony Ferguson fan, that should give you hope. That should give you hope that, 
If you consider Michael Chandler the upper echelon of the 155-pound division, he can hang with the 155-pound division. Now, uh, you have to win the fights, obviously, but you're telling me that you know he can't beat a top 20 guy or a top 25 guy based on what you saw in that first round with a bit of time off. Now, again, it would be good to have some time off after that uh, knockout, but I've had a lot of opportunities over the years. I mean, it's been quite the, uh, the career. I've had a lot of opportunities to talk to Tony Ferguson. I found in that conversation that he had a lot of clarity, um, wanted to be happier, wasn't mad. This wasn't the Tony Ferguson that we saw before the fight just a couple of weeks ago on that media day, almost two weeks ago. This was a content Tony, uh, a happy Tony, a melancholy Kali Tony, melancholy Tony. And, and what I thought was really interesting was a Tony who didn't want to necessarily talk smack about people, had some shots here and there, but want to maybe squash some beefs, you know, the Habib one in particular. Like, this wasn't the Tony that we saw just two weeks ago. And it's crazy because you would think maybe after a knockout that he would be a little bit, you know, all over the place, scattered, upset, frustrated, losing streak, all no, bitter, none of that. I mean, if anyone should be bitter, it's him. And it doesn't seem, at least right now, that he's bitter. And so... That's pretty damn impressive and commendable. These are the people why we love the sport. These are the people why we tune in each and every week because we become emotionally invested in them and their journeys. These are the people that make me want to do this show. People like Daly and MVP and Poirier and Tony. I mean, just a fun show, a fun day. And uh, these are the shows where I leave and I'm like, wow, I am so grateful to have this opportunity to do a show live, to be able to bring you these personalities um, so we can learn more about them, see how they're feeling, give you the rawness, cut out the BS, cut out the stuff that they want you to hear, the stuff that's edited, just it's live. And maybe the next one we'll do is a little Zoom action. That would be big. That would be big. All right. Thank you so much to Tony Ferguson. Thank you so much to Dustin Poirier. Thank you to Paul Daly and thank you to MVP. Uh, I think we're out of time, Frank. What do you say? No, we can keep going. It's very short on words today. You know, I'm trying, I keep trying to draw you in, draw you in, draw you in. Uh, I did see some breaking news, by the way, during the interview. Thank you. Kind of weird to do it in between. I mean, we're, no, it's just sort of like a. Thing. You have me triggered every well, time I hear that. Just now. the word, it's like a Pavlov thing. A little bit. <laughs> No, I just saw that Killashaw put out his uh, his yearly Did award. Did I really just stop the outro music for Killashaw? Yeah, no, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I guess I should know better than to say breaking news. Anyway, he put out uh, his awards. We don't have time, obviously, to get to the awards. Uh, but I do suggest you check out his uh, Substack page and you can see his awards. I don't know if you have to be a uh, paid subscriber for that, but I, I did see that. So maybe on Wednesday on the nose we can... Uh, discuss not only some of the comments made on today's program from Dustin Poirier and Tony Ferguson, but uh, the Killashaw Awards. Yes, that is true. I am ending today's program uh, that was headlined by the likes of Poirier and Tony Ferguson on the great Killashaw. That's the way we've decided to end this program. Uh, thank you to everyone in the back. Great day. Another great day in the books. Thanks to everyone who tuned in live. Appreciate you very much. Or if you're watching this after the fact, thank you. Hope you're enjoying your dinner or your run or your drive. Thanks to our guests, MVP, 4847, Paul Daly. What a career. Dustin Poirier, the man, Tony Ferguson. Incredible, incredible career. And it ain't over. It ain't over for Tony Ferguson. Maybe a bit of a break, maybe some time off, but it ain't over. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next. Imagine Tony Ferguson training with the Diaz brothers. Holy smokes. What a scene that would be. Now, I've always kind of wanted to see that fight, uh, Nathan versus Tony. They tried to do it, I think, back in 2017, and it didn't come to fruition, but uh, that would be quite the scene. I like the idea of him going to a team. I like the idea of having a a Brandon Gibson by his side. That would be tremendous. So the future is bright, illuminating stuff, interesting stuff. I enjoyed it. I appreciate him and his agent, Lloyd, for setting that up. means a lot, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Back! on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace.